Recall but this back. Raymond Daniels versus Rafael Agai. Meet in the pit for the interim welterweight championship. Goat versus goat, hero versus hero, legend versus legend. Can only be one goat. This is one of those fights where everyone goes, wow. The bantamweight title is on the line. Owen Chelmia against Jesus Lopez. Tommy Azuz versus Gabriel Varga. Icy cold, explosive Gabriel Varga, he's back. Instagram star Tarek Khalifi versus Instagram star Samuel Harrison. Which Instagram star is going to rise? Hello and welcome to the KC37 preview show. My name is Leila Machado Gary and I'm joined by League Senseis, Georges St. Pierre, and Baz Bruton, as well as League President Adam Kovac. Oops. We're doing this purely because of the level of excitement ahead of this show. So we have a huge main card tonight. We have Samuel Eriksson versus Tariq Khalifi. That's the one that's had a bit of a grudge match vibe to it. Gabriel Varga is going to be taking on Tommy Azuz and then in the co-main event our champion Owen Chalnia will take on Jesus Lopez and the one that everyone's been waiting for on the welterweight division Rafael Agayev takes on Raymond Daniels. This is and I'll go to Adam first the best main card we've had full stop right? Yeah but probably the best card ever we yeah. put together. I always say this but first of all we're a new league so we try to up ourselves, level up, level up. But this is, you know, 2022. We're ending this year with a crazy card, the biggest one we've ever put together. We're going to break down the main card shortly, but here's a teaser for you first. Raymond Daniels versus Rafael Agai. One from American Karate, one from Sports Karate. Raymond Daniels is an all-around martial artist and elite striker. Rafael Agaev, a five-time world karate champion, 11-time European champion, and an Olympic silver medalist. Two lifelong karate cuts, the greatest in their prospective disciplines, meet in the pit for the interim welterweight championship. I'm definitely going to put every lesson you've ever learned your entire life and make you rethink some things. As a man so positive, I'm the top of the food chain. There can only be one goat. This fight isn't necessarily for another win. It's for legacy. Let's go straight into that main event because everyone's talking about it. Agaev versus Daniels. Adam, I'm going to come to you first. How did that matchup come about? So we had last year we had a hit list of three guys who we wanted to sign yes he was rafael agaev he just came off his olympic silver medal uh, raymond daniels who just became free agent basically and gabriel varga same situation both of them were bellator kickboxing champions in glory so like it's it's if you are a fight fan you know these guys and this is the top of the top so we wanted to sign them and, and you we, got all three. we got lucky <laughs> and uh, we could sign them. And then obviously we said like, how crazy it would be if we could have Raymond and Rafael fight together because Raymond, when he came in, he fought middleweight, but he said he want to go down to welterweight. And then we said, you know, Rafael is 3-0 over here. And then Raymond is 1-0. He had his debut and uh, why not have this fight as soon as possible? They wanted a little more time a little more pit time because one interesting thing uh, and I'd like to pick your brains about that as well the pit is so different yes. that even if you have like 20 plus years experience right. in full contact if you jump into this pit oh, it's, it's completely different you're outside of, outside of your comfort zone it yeah. feels yes. like, he, like he says he's in a fight club Let's talk about Rafael Agaev, the single most decorated karateka out there. Just an incredible reputation. Everyone, when we get here, everyone is constantly asking for photos and time, and, and that's including his opponents and everyone here. So it's, it's quite a special man. He possesses a very special confidence. He walks around like he's the king. Yes. 
George, it, it, tell me it, about your thoughts on him. It's truly like a modern day samurai. You yes. know, he, li he lived by a, a, a code of karate. Um, he's very dynamic, very explosive. Um, he covers distance very, very well. Very dangerous uh, rear hand. Um, and he, he's got very good throws, you know, like so. Uh, it's really a clash of style, you know. And you have one guy on one side, Raymond Daniel, is very long, you know, and it, you know it's it's two style that. What makes it so interesting is nobody can really predict what's gonna happen, you know. We, we, we can definitely by looking at their past fight to see how they can be successful, but <clears throat> that these two like clashing together is is just so un unpredictable. You've mentioned a guy of, can cover distance really well, and Baz, that's really what he's got to do in this fight because he's fighting someone with a very different, massive height difference. Yeah. Well, but striking, it's always very simple. The longer a strike travels, the more power it has. Yeah. Right? So the, the most powerful at the end. So if you have a short guy, he will be more powerful, very short on. But also a guy like uh, Raymond is, like, if you give him space, he will stay outside the distance, and then you give him time to think. And once he starts zoning in on the target, I mean, he makes a left front kick, and while he's doing that, he jumps in the air with the other leg, and then he kicks you in the face. And so things are very difficult to defend if you never experienced them. But if Agaev comes forward and he keeps on pushing and be in his face the whole time, that's the key to victory for him. The problem with that is you're going to need both loads of stamina, you know. And, and Raymond, and again, this pit, you, you can't put somebody in the corner. They can literally up, run up the walls and go around. And we saw Raymond Daniels do that last time. He dropped somebody and then he used the wall to go behind him and then he started raiding ground and power. We'd never seen that before. Yeah. And that was the very first time he was in the pit. I mean, you can only imagine what he can do now. I mean, he was just adapting. Was, so, yeah, it's an, a very interesting match. Key factor here for Agaev is push, push, push, push, push. And oh, Raymond needs to keep him outside. Yeah, the, one, the one thing I would add to this one, which I think it's uh, some behind the scene from the karate rules that what Agaev is coming from, that you've got team tournaments there. And in team tournaments, because it's a point fighting system, you don't have weight category. So Rafael Agaev, everybody saw the weigh-ins here and they said, like, this guy has no chance because he's so small compared to Raymond. But this guy fought for 20 years in team competitions and he was always the one pulling the team out of the worst situations and he was fighting even bigger guys and stronger guys Mike Tyson. than Raymond. Yeah, and there's an yeah. advantage to, to that type of physique too because he's so compact, he's like a pit bull. It's very hard because it, it's so unique. So you can't really prepare for a guy like this because it's hard to find a training partner that exactly. res like, look like him. And most of the time, these guys are often the most dangerous because they can explode so much. You know, they they they they they they're like a like, like a ball that can like travel so fast. You know what I mean? And they, they when they hit you, they bring with them so much kinetic energy. So it's it's it makes it makes them even more dangerous. I'm actually thinking now suddenly because there's knees allowed now. Yeah. So if he pushes, Raymond might throw a knee, and they're also allowed to the face. So, see, so now I'm thinking, character. is pushing really the best game plan? It should be, but he has really has to watch out because Raymond makes flying knees. He, he will jump in the air and make a spinning knee, something that we've never yeah. seen before. Raymond is very good. Counter puncher, counter kicker as well. So I think he, he needs to fake it. I mean, it, it's, it's not a, a simple uh, puzzle to solve. And, and for Raymond, he, yeah. the same thing. Awesome. You know, Agaev is built like a tank. You know what I mean? So. How is he going to be able to penetrate that armor? So it, it's, they both have a very hard uh, problem to solve tonight. How does a fighter like Agaev prepare for someone like Daniels, who you, you just don't know what's coming at you? Well, they, they, can, they can prepare the best they can, but they cannot replicate because these two athletes are so unique. Mm -hmm. They can't replicate 100% each other. You know what I mean? It's impossible. They can bring in some training partners, and, and drill maybe some situation that they think they might occur, that will occur in a fight, but it's, all, it's almost impossible to, to, to prepare 100%. And, and, and like, I don't know, Bass, for, for me, every fight, when I get in there in a fight, I remember I was always think, telling myself, I'm like, the guy is never as good as I think he, he, he was, but he's never as bad either. He's always different. So mm. th that's how a fight is. You know, you, you, you prepare for something, but you need to be open mind because if you only think about that specific thing, you might be surprised by something that you haven't think of. Yeah.
George, talk to me about the importance of a good opponent, because one thing that Daniel says, and um, I think he's, it's on your socials as well, he's saying thank you to Agaev, because he said, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be the best me I've ever been. And it's his respect for his opponent that's made him work extra hard to be the best he's ever been. Well, Have you... You, you, to build a legacy, you need you need the worthy opponent. You know what I mean? When you think about uh, any athlete in combat sport, you, you think of who he was matched against you know what i mean yeah. so that that's why you know like uh, raymond is a very proud athlete you know he wants to be the best and to be the best you need to face the best so he he's got a great mindset he welcomed the challenge you know it takes a lot of courage but he's willing to step outside the comfort zone you know what i mean and and and challenge the best guy in the in the sport and that's what this is this is a legacy fight really isn't it yeah, no, I, I, I go back to a question that you asked him. You remember we were talking about the 720 degrees punch. That <coughs> the famous said, one in Bellator that he did, yes. decided at, at that moment, and he goes, that's actually a funny story. So this punch is heard around the world. He jumps up in a 720 spin, and then he knocks somebody out with a punch. As soon as he jumped up, he said, I'm going to fast my opponent. I'm going to be too close for the kick. So in the air, and probably he was thinking, did I leave the stove on? Did I leave the front door? Yeah. I mean, imagine <laughs> that. He goes, in the air, he's thinking, oh, no, I got to change it. And then he decided to change it in the punch and he knocks the guy out. Somebody was that in control. Buzz. Blew me away. Who is your pick for this fight? Yeah, this, <sighs> you see, it's a very hard one. And the, and the reason is, because of what we're, all what we're talking about. Like, a guy, if is, he is so fast in blitzing coming in. And once he has luck, he's got the belt, and you're going to be thrown, and then it's going to be ground and powder. And he can hit. We know he can hit. So Raymond has to stop that. So the first one's going to be a feeling up process. You would normally believe that if Raymond can keep his distance, Raymond's going to win the fight. But if a guy can fight in close, he's going to take the fight. And then it's all about who has the stamina, because that's, it's five rounds. We can push, push, push, and if it's going to be an extra round, like we saw it last time, we had a, a, a title fight going to a sixth round. You know, that's like that's a lot of fighting right there. So, hard one. That would be so a dream if it did. Adam, I'm not going to ask you your pick, Thank you very but I will <laughs> ask George his pick. Well, I, I'm, Raymond Daniel is a good friend of mine, so I, I'm biased, you know, and and and my heart is with him, but. Uh, they both has uh, the skill to be the winner. You know what I mean? It could be a very fast knockout ending or it could be a very long, grueling yeah. war, you know, all out war. I'm kind so. of hoping the latter. <laughs> yeah. I'd love six rounds of this. So. I think it's just like who can, and that's the, the difficult part, who can figure out the other one. We could talk about this forever. It yeah. is a brilliant fight, but there are some other fights. And another one that's going to be exciting to talk about next is our co-main event. What a title fight this will be. Bantamweight title on the line. Owen Chalmia versus Jesus Lopez. Oh! He's a super dominant champion. So I'm here to take the victory, no matter who's in front of me. La bestia va por él. Oh, oh, tough yeah. challenger. Oh. It's a little bit crazy. Yeah, I will did that. Great technique, great power. This guy has it all. I'm gonna go in there and just beat him on every sense of that. More power, more cardio, more machismo. He's a non-stop pressure. I've never seen anything like it. Uno ha tenido duros oponentes como los que yo he tenido, y esta creo que va a ser su primera prueba. I'm prepared to drag him into a dogfight. Either he's gone to sleep or me. No vamos a parar hasta lograr el cinturón Golden Bell. He's gonna find out how hard it is to get it. Jolie drops him, and that is over. In our co-main event, our champion, Owen Chalmier, defends his belt against Jesus Lopez. Now, we have two incredibly different characters here. Jesus with a backstory that is just insane, and Owen, who's really quite confident and firm with his style. George, what are your thoughts on this match? Well, Chalmier is, uh, is one of my favorite fighters to watch. Yes. He, he goes forward. He's, you know, a do or die uh, sort of style, you know what I mean? So, uh, and, and Lopez is, you know what I mean? He, he's gonna need to be very opportunist uh, mm -hmm. for, this, mm -hmm. for this fight if he wants to be successful, you know? So it's, it's gonna be very interesting. Adam, how did this pairing come about? Obviously, Owen being our champion, quite a few people would have wanted him. Yeah, I mean, going back to Owen a little bit, um, he was a qualifier with us before season three. Season three was, uh, the season when we introduced the bantamweight division through a tournament mm -hmm. when eight of these guys started the season and we crowned the champion at the end of the season and he sent us his video yeah. and he said 
Amo, Wunchomia, Ireland, and um, 10 times world champion, blah, blah, blah. And we were sitting there with my friend and matchmaker, Andres, and said, like, <laughs> yeah. we, we heard this enough. You know, in karate, sometimes you hear 10 times world champion of this, this uh, town. And we said, let's see. Let's see if he, you know, if he can back it up. And then he came in for the tournament, and he knocked Tommy, uh, Kevin Azus out in the first round or the second round. And we said, like, okay, maybe he can back it up, and maybe he can become the champion. And he became the champion winning against Marty, and then he defended the title against Marty again. Um, and, you know, he's, he, he was the Sean first Fee. ever bantamweight champion in, in karate combat and is exactly the champion you're looking for. You know, how, the way he handles himself, the way he fights, as George said, he, he's never backing down. Baz, he's a very different character in the pit than outside the pit, isn't he? Yeah, he's very timid, right, when you talk to him. And he, he has the same, uh, we said that during the interviews, he has the same, what I used to have when I started fighting, you're more nervous for the interviews than yeah. you are for fighting. Yeah. It was like, well, man, it's like I'd rather fight, you know, and, but he, you know, he overcomes it. He's one of those guys, his mother, does everything. She's in the corner with him. He says Trainer, it's great because coach, everything. Yeah, she does yeah. everything. She says I only have to. My mom says go there, do this, do that. This is the food you eat. He says it's freaking perfect. And uh, the style, like George says, you know, it's a, it's a. We love this style. Edgar Scrivers, our former champion, we had. It's a style like that, yeah. coming and not stopping. But Jesus Lopez. I mean, every time when this guy is on, he's on, and he's got a lot of heart. And I worked with both these guys actually before this fight. And Lopez, I had to ask afterwards, I go, you have my, done my material before, right? He goes, of course. I go, oh, man. I go, like, dude, he is picking up so freaking fast, you know, the things that I say, because I work kind of different. But listening to instructions, he does really well. He's very powerful. He's got a lot of heart, you know, even when he prepared one time for two weeks or so. This is his last fight. Yeah. He still won, you know. So it's a guy who's never out of the fight, and he can hit. He's got a lot of power. So tell me, are coming in. The problem with that is you can set yourself up for a swinging punch that Lopez has, and his punching power, it's it's big. And we saw we saw sorry we saw something similar when he fought Kamaradin, um, and he blew his nose up because mm. the guy was going forward all the time, and his counter punches are so vicious that he that's how he finished the fight. It's a perfect matchup, really. Mm -hmm. yep. sort of counter now there's there's training, there's style, but then there's also desire. Yeah. Um, Jesus' story is so powerful. He um, sadly saw his brother being shot and murdered in front of him. And he's decided to set that aside and focus on impressing his brother rather than trying to avenge his murder. And he's bringing that energy into yeah. the pit every time, wanting to make his brother proud, his brother who's inspired him into martial arts in the first place. When you have a desire like that, a power like that, or something, how powerful does that make you? Well, sometimes when the fight gets to a certain level after spending a lot of time after a few rounds you get so tired that the f the physique doesn't want to follow mm -hmm. it's only up here it's mm -hmm. only the brain and it comes down to not about skill sometimes when you're in this situation it comes down to who wants it more who has the more the more the more the biggest drive and his, uh, Jesus Lopez has a, a crazy drive. This, this, is, this is something we know for sure. This makes him dangerous as well, doesn't it? You mentioned family. Mm -hmm. so normally, he brings his father as the corner, and now his mother is here for the title fight. So I don't know what, you know, obviously this means. Oof. Means, yeah, Ooh. no Ooh. pressure. <laughs> I, I don't it's think, mama versus I don't mama think here, the, though, with the yeah. two mamas as yeah. well. Yeah. Good oh. point. I don't think mama is going to be in the corner, uh -huh. but, uh, but she's here with him to support, but uh, it, it means a lot for Jesus. An unbelievable co-main event. We can't wait. So next up, we have Gabriel Varga versus Tommy Azuz. This is going to be an interesting fight. In our interviews, we saw, again, very different characters. Varga seems to be quite withheld, doesn't he? Varga is the precision guy. He's like the surgeon, I call him. Calculated. Like, and everything is perfect. You know, like if you see him fight, he will always have his defense up. And I asked him about that. He says, well, I don't have a lot of great head movement. I don't like to get hit in the head. So I figured the smartest thing is to just keep my head yeah. there. So simple. Makes total so simple. sense. Makes total sense. And he just dissects your opponent. Look for him. First round is going to be fielding off round. That's why he puts all the, the movement in his computer. And the second round, most of the time, he starts fighting. So for his opponent, it will be great to immediately start fighting. Adam, bringing Gabriel Varga to Karate Combat, how big a win was that? Huge. Yeah. It is huge. 
I think uh, some people don't realize, even this, if you look at this card, having these names on. But if, if we only had Gabriel Varga, that should be enough. Yes. He's, he's, Yo, he's amazing. Hero champion, Golden Glory champion, uh, Bellator champion, and then we WKA. I mean, he's got a lot of freaking championship oh, yeah. belts. And he walks very, around. Very accomplished athlete. Yeah. yeah, and he walks around with that feeling. You get that sense that he knows he's confident. Yep. But he talks about his opponent. He says, no matter who it is, he always fears and respects his opponent because anyone could have that lucky shot. A hundred percent. And he's right, especially with those small gloves. You know what I mean? That's what makes it so interesting, you know, in, in karate combat. You know, the, those gloves are, you, you, you can't guard the same way in, in, a, in a boxing or, or a kickboxing fight than you do in karate. You have to use uh, more movement, you have to be more dynamic. But Varga, everything he does, he does it like per technically perfectly. He's yep. very by the book. Azuz will need to do something to take him outside of his comfort zone, you know, to, to, cre to create a dilemma. To, to, to change the rhythm of the fight. Mm -hmm. Respect to both, both of these guys, but especially for Tommy, because the little story about this fight is that Tommy is, I think, the 10th opponent of Gabriel Varga for this card. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because it was like COVID, two weeks notice visa situation, somebody we offered a fight, didn't want to fight Varga. Uh, there were so many things happening with this fight that two weeks ago, we were not ready to put Gabriel on the card, although he's in training camp for two months. And then Tommy Azuz was fighting with us at the last event. And there was a split decision. Some people thought he won. Some people thought uh, Mitchell won. But he said when he came off the, the pit, he said, whenever I can get back into this pit, I want to be here. And so we called him up. We said, uh, now there is the opportunity. All right, who is, who is the opponent? Actually, it's uh, Gabriel Varga. Yeah, you know, you would think like, uh, okay, maybe not. And he said, okay, I'm in. Exciting, exciting prospect. Yeah, he's in because he's, his movement is completely different than Vargas has ever seen. His speed on his kicks is just insane. And he left and right, it all, it's all, it doesn't matter for him, you know? And if you're not prepared for, if you don't have a guy like that to train with, it's going to be a problem. I'm especially excited about this because it's a little bit of a last minute matchup. Yeah. Because Vargas says he loves to watch tape. Yep. Like we say, he's calculated. He loves to watch tape. He loves to an analyze. And he was a little bit lost in his fight camp because he didn't know who his opponent was for yep. quite a while. He knew the date that he wanted, didn't know the opponent. They only had three weeks, but they both equally only had those three weeks. Yep. Yeah, the one, the one thing I would add in this one as well, like I did with the main event, Tommy Azuz is coming from an amateur karate background and he just transitioned to full contact here in karate combat. And for whichever tournament you go to, you never know who your opponent's gonna be because you just see the draw on that day. So he's really used to finding out the opponent last minute. On the other, other, other uh, hand, Gabriel Varga, he likes to know two months mm -hmm. before who he's gonna prepare for. Very, so. very meticulous in, in his preparation. You know, he's very technical. So it could be a, a good thing sometime, but when you have a situation like this, it could, it could, it could throw you. As, yes, exactly. It might be all in the mind. And then we have Samuel Erickson versus Tariq Khalifi. Now this is gonna be very interesting. I find Samuel a very interesting character. Um, firstly, there's a lot of pressure on Samuel because he's so huge on social media, right? Yep. He does a lot on Instagram, very good at it, a lot on YouTube. And a lot of the rumors and the stories are that he's, you know, he's an edited piece, but not in the real Speaks life. Speaks it up, right? Right, yes. Yep. We saw him fight here in Karate Combat already, and it was an emotional fight. It was an yep. emotional time for him. This is a, probably the first fight where he's had a proper training camp. How much, do, a, how much of a difference does it make when you get the training camp that you wanted? Well, th there's bad blood between, th between these two, you know what I yep. mean? So <clears throat> when you fight on emotion, sometimes it could be a good thing or a bad thing. You know, if you don't, you need to know how to control it. Yeah. You fight, you, you, Kasumoto used to say, if, Fire could be a good thing, could help you cook your food. You compare fire to emotion, but it, could, you can, also, it can also burn in you. Yeah. And the same thing in this, in this fight. These two guys, you know, there is bad blood. So they might go in there and feeling like, oh, I have so much to lose and, and be more reluctant to throw an attack. Or they can go there and be more emotional and just open themselves, you know. So it, it depends how they're going to they're gonna take that fight, you know. And there's definitely a lot of pressure in this fight. Who do you think the pressure is going to weigh on more? Um, the pressure is probably on Samuel. Yeah. Uh, I would say because Tarek is this is going to be his debut, and what's what's interesting about this fight is, out of nowhere, 
Tarek came out with a video calling out Samuel. So nobody was expecting, even Samuel slides into my DMs and started like, and because I shared the story and said, like, what are you trying to message that yeah. you're sharing this? I said, nothing, but this guy want to fight you. Do you want to fight him? something, yes. right? And, uh, and Tarek is also, you know, he's got a karate background. He, he, he was with the French national team. French karate is one of the best one. So I think it's a super interesting fight. For Samuel, he wants to prove a point. He wants to prove that the first fight, which was a split decision, he won it, but he want to come back, and I think he wants to make a statement. Mm. Baz, your thoughts on Tarek? Um, well, if you have to listen to him, it's going to be a great fight. He says, I'm going to show the people stuff that they've never seen before. He's great, but listen, he never fought full contact. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing here. Yeah. Now, they know this four months in advance that they were going to fight. It just didn't happen a few times, but if he, from day one, started kickboxing right away, every day, then he's becoming a very dangerous opponent. But if he do, does the point karate, well, we saw here in the beginning when the fighters came here, they, they hit, connect, they stop. Oh, they, they realize they have to keep on going. So, so everybody went through that evolution to start making longer combination and ending it up with a kick. So that's the only question. But his leg speed is everything. And it's like he said, I would have been on the French team again, he said. It's just because I'm from Algeria. But he says, everybody, I'll destroy everybody. I'll take everybody. And this is going to be exciting. People are going to remember who I am after I fought. That's a big statement. He has a, he has a lot of pressure. He put a lot of pressure on himself. It yeah. could be a good thing. Some people fight better when they feel like they are on the edge. But <clears throat> we will see if its uh, performance will be at the height of his uh, word. We could talk about the main card for hours and hours and hours, but we do have some awesome prelims as well, don't we? Adam, for people who've never watched Karate Combat before, which one fight on the prelims should they tune into to warm them up for the main event? Don't do this to me. <laughs> Um, just tune in and watch, watch them all because the once beginning. you tune in, you can't go anywhere else. Yeah, but also, and Kylie and Diaz, these are guys since last minute they came together. That's the very first fight, but whoever wins is going to get a contract. Yeah. So I expect fireworks in, the, in a fight like that. I mean, this is your livelihood. You want to be here. With Gabo, so I never received so many messages, people wanting him to fight here. Good. It's like... 10 people messaging me all the time. So like, I almost got tired of it. So I said, let's give this kid an option to fight in the pit as a qualifier and let's see how good he is because everybody's saying he is good. He's ready to fight here. So we're going to figure it out right now. There is no tune up fight. The, the older fight are, we start the, the night really, really strong. We start the night in force. <laughs> well, George St. Pierre, Adam Kovac, Buzz Rutten, I'll see you all shortly because KC37 is coming your way. Don't go anywhere. Us.
Twas the week before Christmas, when all through the town, only Santa was stirring at least eight eggnogs down. The pit was prepared by elves with great care in hopes that karate combat soon would be there. Dreams filled with knockouts kept fans glued to their screams when what to my wondering eyes should appear but a man loudly stumbling after losing his reindeer. This jolly old fat man, so lively and quick, was surrounded by women. They believed in St. Nick. I heard him exclaim as they all left his sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all, a good fight. George, how are you doing, my friend? Us! Us! I'm very happy and thrilled to be here. You know why, Bass? Because for us at Karate Combat, Christmas arrived earlier. Because what a car do we have tonight? What an unbelievable fight indeed. And just for the people at home, George is going to George, George Palmer and myself in the commentating booth to break down the action tonight. And whoa, whoa, wait a minute. That's a really nice sweater you got there. Yeah, it's a dinosaur, of course. Of course it's a dinosaur. You know, I actually used to do that one time. I rode a dinosaur. It's a long time ago. Uh, it might have been a dream. Anyway, let's go to the action. All right. In the main event, we have an interim welterweight championship match. And that match was very hard to put together because, let's face it, both these guys are legends. But you know what they always say, when there's a will, there is a fight. That's right. We got Rafael Agaev, who is considered by many the GOAT of karate, the greatest of all time. Five world titles, 11. European titles and he won silver at the last Olympics, but his opponent is Raymond Daniels. He's considered the greatest American karate car of all time. He also has a really great kickboxing record. So tonight we're going to find out who truly is the GOAT in full contact karate. But wait, there's more. We have another title match. In the co-main event we have a bantamweight title match. Owen Chelmy, the undefeated champion, will face the challenger, Jesus Lopez. That's going to be a barn burner. And for the rest, we have a plethora of great full contact karate action coming to you. But now, we just want to start because it's time and I want to see that you want to see the action. Godspeed Karate 37 is on its way! Ho, ho, ho! Whoosh! <laughs> yeah. Karate combat is back. Raymond Daniels versus Rafael Agai meet in the pit for the interim welterweight championship. Goat versus goat, hero versus hero, legend versus legend. Can only be one goat. This is one of those fights where everyone goes, wow. The bantamweight title is on the line. Owen Chelmia against Jesus Lopez. Tommy Azuz versus Gabriel Varga. Icy cold, explosive Gabriel Varga, he's back. Instagram star Tarek Khalifi versus Instagram star Samuel Harrison. Which Instagram star is going to rise? Yeah. 
Yes, hello and welcome to Karate Combat 37, the Christmas edition. My name's Josh Palmer, joined by Bass Rutten at George St. Pierre pit side. We've got Alex Wending, Leila Annalee, and of course, Mr. Robin Black. Uh, Bass, George, quite an atmosphere we've got here to round out the year at Karate Combat. That's looking great. I mean, look at Santa there. That's, those, those are no reindeers, I can tell you that. And it's very <laughs> well surrounded. It certainly is. <laughs> uh, Bass, you guys set us up well there. We've got two fantastic bouts at the top of tonight's card. Uh, let's talk about that main event very quickly. Quickly, George, I'll start with you. Uh, Raymond, the real deal, Daniels, are taking on uh, the Panther, Rafael Agayev. Both these guys, in, in their own rights, uh, absolute goats of the sport. A hundred percent. On one side, we have a guy, and Raymond Daniel is uh, is an incredible athlete. You know, he's very long, very dynamic. And on the other side, we have a, a guy that in uh, Agayev was built literally like a tank. And it was very, very explosive with a lot of power. Yeah, and of course, Bass, we, we've got to point out, this is for uh, the interim uh, belt. Of course, our champion, Josh Quayhagen, picking up an injury. He's going to sit aside for a bit. So one of these guys is going to get some gold strapped around their waist. That's always fun, but I think in this particular case, <laughs> these guys are not even thinking about that. They just want to win this fight. Yeah, reputation on the line. Uh, not the only gold that is on the line tonight, of course. Bantamweight belt, Owen Chelmia. Uh, this kid has had a, a fantastic uh, career with Karate Combat so far. Undefeated, 4-0, just keeps getting better. He's a Terminator. Walking forward, that's his game plan. Punching, kicking, whatever he does us to terminate his opponent. Very uh, exciting fighter to watch. Absolutely. It's a do or die for him, you know. There is, I can't think of a, a fighter who's more exciting than, than him. Absolutely. This guy is, is one to watch for sure. Tough test in Jesus Lopez. Uh, that is not by the long and short of it, all you've got to look forward to tonight. There's eight fouts on tonight's card. Let's go ahead and take a look at tonight's full fight card. Main event tonight and the final fight of Karate Combat for 2022 is, of course, our GOAT versus GOAT matchup as two of the greatest strikers to ever enter the pit face off, Raymond Daniels and Rafael Agayev. Co-main event this evening, the Karate Combat Bantamweight belt is on the line as champion Owen Chelmia puts his undefeated record to the test against Peru's national champion, Jesus Lopez. Before that, we have an intriguing lightweight bout as veteran Canadian striker Gabriel Varga looks to build on his impressive first appearance against up-and-coming Frenchman Tommy Azuz. Staying in the lightweight division, a great clash of styles as Algerian Tarek Khalifi makes his karate combat debut against the incredibly dynamic Samuel Eriksson. A lot of tension in the build-up and back and forth on that one. Firecracker of a middleweight bout rounds out the four preliminary fights this evening as promotional debutant Sasha Politnikov goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rob Buckshot Buxton, who's seeking to make his mark after an impressive qualification win last time out. After a tough first fight under the Karate Combat banner, there's no rest for Poland's Masek Tursek as he faces the returning Olympian from Venezuela, Andres Madera. And there will be an undeniably partisan crowd in our second bout this evening when local bantamweight Maximo Apex Nunez makes his second appearance in the pit against aggressive Brazilian Gabriel Stankunas. And we open tonight's card in the lightweight division with two newcomers, the Spanish national champion Sahami Encajali takes on multi-sport black belt Venezuelan Gabo Diaz. Uh, guys, let's touch on that first fight we're going to see shortly. Uh, George Gambo Diaz, this guy's trained Wushu, he's trained Sander, he's trained karate, kickboxing, uh, multi-sport athlete. Very oh, yeah. much so. And, and as a matter of fact, two months ago, he just he won a title in kickboxing. He knows that he's going to fight a point karate fighter, so his strategy will put, you need to put pressure if you want to be successful. He's very good also in Sander, so he's very familiar with the throws, with the takedown. And his favorite kick is the Oshiro Mawashigiri. So be, be careful with this one. Yes. Oh, yeah, lots of spinning. Of course, Bass, uh, he's got another newcomer tonight in Sahami uh, Enkhali, uh, a much more traditional karateka. Yes, there. this uh, chess playing karateka, he's going to use his length, he said, and his distance. And he knows that people expect him to be aggressive, but he's not going to be aggressive. He says he's not a counterfighter at all. He just likes to attack and go in for the kill. Fantastic. That is our first bout up this evening. Before we get to that, let's go ahead and remind ourselves of the rules of the pit. So our scoring system is uniquely based on the principles of karate, which are effective striking, effective takedowns, aggressiveness and defense. Meaning that if a fight is close, then it's up to the judges to decide. The fighter who drove the action wins. Fighters are also encouraged to use our specially designed 45 degree angled pit walls to their advantage. Fighters cannot use knees or elbows. Only five seconds of ground and pound is allowed. All bouts tonight are taking place over three three minute rounds, unless they need to go into an overtime round is necessary. Of course, the two title fights tonight, five three minute rounds. Don't forget, knees to the body and head are now allowed. 
Saludos, mi nombre es Gabriel Díaz, soy peleador venezolano, tengo 25 años, ya que le dedico toda mi vida a las artes marciales. Estoy cumpliendo mi sueño ahora mismo, llegando aquí al Karate Combat. Hello, my name is Samuel Haile and I come from Spain. This is a very important fight because this is the first one I do in Karate Combat and I think it's the one that's going to open me the doors. Es que conozco del que es un peleador de karate a puntos. Yo soy un peleador de kickboxing. De full contact. I don't think he will expect the next techniques I'm going to show. This victory is going to show to the world how I can translate my fighting style into karate combat. Él está entrando a chocarse con eso. Yo tengo la ventaja, seguro que puedo traer la victoria. Fighting out of the blue corner, representing Venezuela. Please welcome Gabo Diaz! So the first fighter entering the pit this evening in the blue corner, Gabo Diaz. He is hailing from Venezuela, 25 years old, uh, as we mentioned, multi-sport athlete, black belt in taekwondo, black belt in karate, state champion in sanda. Uh, this guy's really got a huge skill set that he can draw on tonight. He's very, very fast. He said his training camp has been really good, even though he had a couple of fights fall through. Uh, he was thinking of stopping training, and then he got the, the call that he was going to be up against Sami and Kali, and he jumped straight on it. Really looking forward to his debut here tonight. Oh yeah, he knows, he knows he's going up against a, a point car ready fighter, so he's gonna have to close the distance. That's I it. <laughs> and his opponent, fighting tonight out of the red corner, representing Spain. Welcome, Sami and Kili. So another debut taunt here tonight. Always fun, these debut fighters, really trying to vie for their karate combat contracts. This is Sami Enkali. Took, actually took the fight on fairly short notice, but uh, what's going to be really interesting is, you know, he is a traditional point-fighting karateka, but he's been putting a bit more work in uh, the full contact realm lately. Hasn't had that much experience competing under that rule set yet. So really interesting to see what the 13-time uh, Spanish national champion can do here tonight. Tell the tape for the blue corner, 25 years old, Gabo Diaz, as you can see, weighed in at 148 pounds for this one. 67 inch reach in the arms. And there you see Sami Enkali is gonna be substantially advantaged in the height, the arm reach and the leg reach. 24 year old Spaniard, they're gonna put on a show tonight. Fighters, it is now time to enter the pit. Okay. We can feel the energy. Yes, sir. Gentlemen. Yeah, we've got a packed crowd here at the back lot of Universal Studios, Orlando, Florida. This is our final event of 2022 on the Karate Combat calendar. Lots to look forward to, of course. Karate Combat 37 is powered oh, by oh, Hedera oh. and a huge spinning kick. Opens up for uh, Diaz. And Cali, who have put on the back foot very quickly <laughs> indeed. <laughs> he threw a, a, a hand to check and then he made a spinning back kick. Right, your referee for this one, Sam Amidi. We got three threes on the clock. Let's see if they need them with that kind of start. Yeah, that, that, that's why personally I never, never, never like oh, to yeah. touch gloves, you know, because he, he could be used as a distraction. Only when he looks at you and he says he's okay with it. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. First opportunity for some ground and pound here, going to the Spaniard, tied up though and slowed down. A lot of pressure quickly from Diaz, Bas. Yes, well, 
he, he needed that, you know, and he said that before he's going to crush him, he's going to move forward because he's not used to full contact. Now you got to be watching where those low kicks go. Of course, reminder under karate combat rules, you can't kick between the hip and the knee. You've got to be down at the calf. That's a nice body kick, though, right up the open side. Man, that opening Ushiro Moashi to the head. That was yes. so, <laughs> That could have been a knockout. They're back in cl close stance. Oh, nice one, two, there by one, uh, and Kali. And you can see straight away, George, that you mentioned that the, the classic Karateka straight line blitz style of Nkali there, that big right hand just coming right down the middle. Yes, he's got an edge on uh, in terms of speed, you know, like you can see right away, I think he's, he's, he's faster than his opponent, you know, like in terms of movement in and out. Yeah, he, he connected with that right, but he didn't push it through. You see, it's at the point karate. He's not used to really pushing it through yet. Or yes. following up with the next strike afterwards. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's a nice combination from Diaz pushing forward, Ch changing the tempo there as yeah. well. D Diaz can't stay immobile in front of, in, in front of, of his opponent like this. You know, he needs to push forward. He needs to move. You know, a, a fighter that that moves is a fighter that does not get hit. You know, and you don't want to stay immobile in front of your opponent. Yeah, let's see if he can get a little lateral movement in, trying to avoid that straight line blitz. That's a good kick from uh, Enchali into the final minute of this opening round. And Kali tried to, to score with his uh, rear cross. But then he moves out again, you know? It doesn't make it a combo yet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right, Bas. He, he, he has great opportunity, but he, he, he just hit and, and moves oh. away. Oh. Nice Haragoshi. Very slow standing Haragoshi from uh, Diaz, but it was effective nonetheless. Final 15 seconds here. Oh, nice. Nice Yokogiri. Yeah, yeah first left hook and then the Yoko. I never saw that. He disguised it very nicely behind yeah. those hands. Oh, end of the first round here, getting yes. stuck into the very <laughs> last second. Uh, gentlemen, very quickly, what are you thinking for uh, scoring in an opening round? Quite even. Yeah, that's quite even. It's a very hard one to get. You know. very, very hard, I, I agree 100%. And Carly connected a few times with those strikes there, you know, and also at a, as an offense, he did it as well. He said he was not a counter fighter, but that was a nice little counter he did there. Yeah, some of the replays there from that first round. Some good kicks from Diaz. He was trying to employ a lot of those spinning kicks. Of course, he's got that black belt uh, in Taekwondo as well, so putting that to use. Uh, and Kali, very much uh, kind of one one strike. One strike, one, two, one, two, coming yeah. forward. But he's got these great kicks, and he's got great reflexes. If he follows up his punches with some other punches, it's going to be great. And uh, Kali, and Kali, very linear. Very good in, in, in terms of, but very linear. You know what I mean? Uh, on the other side, He's got the, the edge on the angle, you know, the has use uh, a kick that comes from the side, come from the outside of uh, his opponent's fields of vision, you know. As we look to get the second round underway here, Bas and Kali smiling and, and having a laugh in the corner. He seems pretty relaxed. Super relaxed. I was just going to say the same thing. And not tired at all, both of them actually. We're breathing very nice and relaxed. Nice body kick there by Kali. That was with right, the shin right. too. Oh, just a little bit late on that outside trip. You can you can throw a, a trip or a strike in the clinch. You've just got to uh, activate it immediately. Just a, too long a pause there for the referee's liking. Oh, nice. that's a nice yes, one. Again. Up. And Kelly score a lot with that rear cross. Yeah, he's very accurate with it. Yeah, but he said he was not a counter fight. Look at this, he's countering really well. Oh, I think he got stunned now. Yeah. Yeah, Diaz having to take a few heavy breaths. He's getting backed up here. The, the back fist from Diaz in round one connected. He should throw it out one time. Just to stop his attack, because otherwise if you give him free game, it's not a good thing. A snapping uh, front kick there. Oh, there, there you go, go I think he heard you. <laughs> yeah. Right. Work to throw. Uh, this is a great start to the second round for uh, Sahami and Kahali. Oh, Diaz looking like he's going into counter-strike mode here. This is a mistake for both of the guys. You, they, you can't stay him about in front of your opponent like this. You need to fake, you need to, to, to, to create something. You can't stay him about. Oh! And what's, uh, what's Diaz got to do here to avoid this this this right hand? Because he's, he's eating it over and over right now. Well, it's the speed. Simply, he's not used to the speed, so he can't. You know, Or it's either attacking 
and keep your hands up. Damn. Oh, and that's lovely again from the Spaniard. Really nice body kick. He's getting five seconds of ground and pound here. Most of Diaz's attack comes from uh, an angle, but the fastest point, be the fastest way to go between two points is a straight line. That's why, that's why Encali is beating him with the straight line. Oh yeah, he finds every time that hand. If there's going to be oh. a knockout, bit of gamesmanship that's here. It. That's oh, it. Beats the spinning back fist low. Oh, he's oh, done. He's dizzy. He's done. Yes. Oh, he finds the mark again, though, ties up. That's going to give him a couple of moments of respite. Where's the throw, James? Let's go. Oh, he, he got hurt on the, by, by the spinning back fist. Yeah, he needs to attack now, Gabo Diaz. I will go for the body now, because he, he believes he's going to go for the head. Go for the body, and then wrap it up in a headshot. Oh, Diaz trying to keep that fight inside the pocket with some big strikes when he does, but... Again, he's just got to avoid that, uh, that stun as he comes in. One second, one second. Last few Will seconds of round number two here, okay. getting a quick warning okay. from okay. Sam Amidi. Okay. Just got to keep those kicks to the correct target areas. Now they're in uh, open stance. Yeah, this is hard to do when you're in uh, open stance. Well, good end to the second round there. And guys, I think uh, fair to say, that one is going to Sam, Ami, uh, Sam and Carly. Yeah, 100%. You know, if he can wrap up round number three like that, and it looks like, it just almost looks like uh, Diaz is a little bit tired here. And he, look at the precision he has on those punches constantly, right? Connecting the whole time. And again, I, I, poof. Whew. I agree, this round goes to Encali, but there is a moment in the round that we need to remember that. that the backfist. Uh, Diaz, there you yes, go. that one. That could have been, uh, th that this moment was very dangerous it's, for Ian Kelly. Yeah, damage, it was damage. So the, the judges are going to see that as well. Yeah, absolutely. The question is, does that override the accumulative work from Ian Kelly? Perhaps not, but it did give him uh, pause for thought. Well, I don't speak Spanish, but there were some very strong words in Diaz's corner uh, <laughs> just in front of us. So remember, when you kick, we got a very, ready? very ready? good fight Rapper, right off the ready? bat. You ready? Right. Let's go. Seven more to come your way after this. Whoa! Oh. Oh, a lot of aggression here from... Yeah, but Diaz shouldn't open with a hook because, uh, like George said, you know, the straight is faster and every time he's going to get clipped. Yes, he, can, he can't be first. Uh, he cannot be... He cannot hope to be first if he's trying to go with a hook, you know, because the straight line will beat him every time. All the time. So what he, I think he needs to do is to try to commit, to make, and Kali throw his, his, his, his straight, then the duck or, or, or use I mean, the hook as a counter, not, I mean, not as, a first, uh, as a first strike. I mean, what, what are you going to do? Do you, do you parry? Do you slip? You know, what's the best I'll way to parry. get out of them? You know, you fake one, he goes with the cross, parry, and come, come back with the cross. Yes, both would work, actually, yes. Counter to counter. Oh, yes. and now you're getting stuck well, in the pocket. You go, you go, what we call that going third. You want to go third. You right, fake, right, you make him right, throw, then you go right, right. third. Oh, oh. He's his shoulder is out. Oh, his shoulder is dislocated. Just pull the arm. No, no, no. Oh, he's going to try and put his shoulder back in quickly. Are you good? Is your shoulder good to continue? Yeah, pull the arm. Oh, no, no, no, no, no, no. Oh, no. Well, this is very unfortunate. Your shoulder's done. It appears as though Sahami Kali has dislocated his shoulder. And he was asking to have it pop back in, but of course you can't administer yes okay, where'd you go oh <laughs> it's a very well, unfortunate guys for him. let's let's take a look back at the replay see if we can okay. spot this one he's probably going to fall on it yeah oh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. there you go just stuck it out to break the fall and uh we know how that one goes if it's not the wrist it could be the elbow if it's not the elbow it could be the shoulder yeah uh mauricio shogun against coleman right he posted backwards he snapped his arm in half same deal Wow, they're trying to reset it. Oh, that's mid -side. a shame, I mean, because he was doing so well. He really was. He had yeah. the upper hand there. This win is going to go to Garbo Diaz. I think TKO by injury. Yeah, it was. It, the injury happened during a legal takedown, so... It's from the takedown, so he tried a technique and it popped out. 
my arm. Yeah, but please help. Take my arm. And that is going to be the official uh, official decision here. Consolations to Sami Enkahali. Well, I tried to give him a few seconds to see if he could roll it back in, but he couldn't get in. This TKO. Ladies and gentlemen, our winner out of the blue corner, Gabo Diaz! Gabo Diaz victorious in his karate combat debut. He's been uh, making his home actually here in Orlando, Florida for the last seven months. So a really good start to his American adventures as he makes his way backstage. Let's go ahead and head down uh, pit side and get some reflection from our analyst, Mr. Robin Black. Thanks guys. Yeah, you know, injuries are a part of the game and every movement in fighting is a combative movement. So an injury is still a win. We often look at it and go, oh, you didn't want to win that way. It's still a win you created from the throw. But I want to add for all of our armchair doctors at home, when we see that, we think we're in a movie and all we got to do is Mel Gibson slam it back in. But yes, sometimes it is a dislocated shoulder. Other times it is a separated shoulder and other times it is a broken collarbone. Under no circumstances should somebody ever Mel Gibson that thing back in, because sometimes you can hurt yourself real freaking bad. But I want to congratulate Gabo Diaz. That is still a clean win, and let's thank both those gentlemen for a wonderful fight. Okay. You. Take some. you. you. Oh. Boom, look at that. Guys, let's uh, take a look back at some of the replays here. This was the, the fight ender. It was the Haragoshi attempt, and he just uh, didn't quite frame out correctly. Yeah, that's a shame. Perhaps, uh, you know, as you said, a shame. Very unfortunate indeed. He was uh, really starting to get the momentum going his way, and that right hand was pretty vicious. You know, it, it, it, this was about a contract. I'm pretty sure Karate Combat's going to give him a contract anyway, because yeah. he was doing really well. He could have went, maybe won the fight yeah. at the very end. And with that classical karate, George, that linear straight line hit. Yes, that was beautiful. Uh, beautiful technique. Uh, he was first. He was, uh, was counter-punching his, his opponent on the way, when he was coming on the way in. Uh, what a great display of skill and, and timing. Yeah, what a fantastic first fight here at Karate Combat 37. Seven more coming your way. Join us again in just a moment. Now, we, in our co-main event this evening, Jesus Lopez will take on our current bantamweight champion, Owen Chelmia. Now, when we film fighter backstories, we often see an element of overcoming adversity, but never have we seen a story quite like that of Jesus Lopez. Jesus has decided to set aside his desire to avenge his brother's murder, and here's why. Cuando era niño, mi hermano John regresaba de su trabajo y me enseñaba karate en el patio de la casa. Él usaba diferentes cosas para poder exigirme y practicar muy duro y así aprender a defenderme. John me enseñó más que karate. Él me enseñó cómo sobrevivir en un mundo brutal. En el barrio donde yo vivía, habían pandillas, drogas y él me enseñó a usar los principios del karate para siempre guiarme por el buen camino. A él le gustaba ayudar a las demás personas y eso era lo que me motivaba mucho a seguir sus pasos. Cuando yo tenía 12 años, a mi hermano lo asesinaron a balazos en la calle. Durante años pensaba en venganza. Regresé a practicar karate para vengar a mi hermano. Mi sensei me dijo que ese no era el camino. Ahora honro a mi hermano. Siento que mi hermano está conmigo dándome su energía. Cada combate se lo dedico a él. Y nunca lo dejaré de hacer. 
cuando no estoy entrenando, me gusta mezclar música como un DJ. La música me hace sentir vivo, me da mucha energía. Pero ahora peleo. Yo siempre estoy activo, siempre estoy entrenando, me mantengo enfocado para cualquier oportunidad de Karate Combat. Todos mis combates he ido a hacer daño, a destruir al oponente. Eso es lo que me caracteriza. Yo siempre voy a cada combate a morir. Hey, Bas, I love these gloves. Aren't they nice? I mean, they're so beautifully designed. Look at this. It's just enough padding to protect the hand. Bas, what are you doing? An ad read or what? Oh, I don't. Yes, welcome back to the booth here at Karate Combat. Uh, Bass, that co-main event, Owen Chalmier, Jesus Lopez. Uh, Lopez, a very, very tough character indeed, as we saw there in, in that profile. You know, listen, once you start fighting and you dedicate everything to your brother who passed away, I mean, you had a lot of fire behind you. He's got a lot of heart, a lot of power. Every time when you see him, he's increasing and he's getting better. I was able to work with him a little bit, and boy, does he pick up fast. So do not blink, because if he can act, the fight could be over. Yeah, very fun, uh, fun match uh, there in our co-main event. Of course, second fight this evening, Maximo Apex Nunez taking on Gabriel Stankunas. Uh, George, Maximo Nunez, you know, he said last time out he was a little bit conservative, took the fight on short notice, wanted to make sure he, he started well. He's ready to, to take the brakes off this time. Ah, but he said that he's going to be like water. Today. That's what he says. <laughs> and he said his opponent is crafty, but not crafty enough. And he hopes to finish the fight before the end of the the end of the third round and he believes that his speed will give him a big advantage. Now of course Bas Gabriel Stankunas uh, we just mentioned Jesus Lopez who's challenging for the title tonight. Uh, Gabriel Stankunas fought him last time out and had a, had a real war. Yeah, he said he had a really hard training camp this time and he said he's not impressed with his opponent. He says he throws many low kicks but he found a way to counter those kicks. So last time he worked very hard on his power. He says this time I actually worked really hard on fighting, which is a smart thing to do if you go to fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great bout coming up very shortly. Uh, Let's go down. Alex Wendling is floating around somewhere here, pit side with some of the celebrities in the house. Let's see who she's managed to find. Yes, I am pit side with Hinato Moicano. Thank you for making the drive from Boca. You've been having some big fights yourself. So what made you want to visit Karate Combat tonight? I mean, uh, this is awesome. Karate is a very nice martial art. And the way that you guys are putting together is just beautiful to watch. And I know you're a big fan of steak and cerveza, some beer. So can you tell the audience, you know, how that Joe Rogan interview went with you? You know, you scream for your love for steak and beer. Yeah, I mean, if I'm not training, I'm not fighting, I am drinking beer and eating steaks, you know, and we are here in Florida, so you have to enjoy ourselves a little bit. Let's go, today is, is the night, karate, let's go. Very good fights. Yes, and obviously in karate, we don't have that much grappling. I know you've been calling someone named uh, Patty Pimblett out a lot. How do you think you would do inside the pit with a guy like that? He's so jujitsu based. I feel like you would, you would probably beat that ass. Patty Pimblett is easy money, everybody knows. He's, the guy goes to UFC, fights nobody, and right now it's time to get a, a real fighter in the UFC, a top 15, and if he wants and UFC wants, I can break his face anytime. Anytime, anywhere, maybe in the pit. We'll send it back to you guys. Woo! Thank, thank you so, you so much. much. Alex, thank you, Renato. Uh, right, let's go ahead, get the second fight underway. This is uh, Maximo Nunez and Gabriel Stankunas. My name is Maximo Nunez. What's in the line is simple. A lot of people thought I was lucky with T. I want to show that I was made for this and I want to teach him myself. I was not lucky. My name is Gabriel Stankunas. This fight is important for me because I want to show my value. Not for the people, but for me. He fought in the same event as me and it impressed me. My kid, Victor, is mixing it up. With his legs, his body, his face. One of them is going to break and I hope it's his job. Ele tem que se preocupar com tudo, porque eu vou derrubar ele. For sure, he's not gonna make it to the third round. Uh, 
we'll find out in a second, yeah. Through the, through the lights Ladies on. and gentlemen, fighting out of the blue corner, representing Brazil, Gabriel the Blessed Stankuna! Welcome back to the pit, Gabriel Stankunas, hailing from Sao Paulo, Brazil. The 24-year-old has fought a couple of times here on Karate Combat before. He's got a one-on-one -on -one record. Uh, of course, last time out, had that decision loss in an absolute barn burner with our uh, championship challenger tonight, Jesus Lopez. Uh, we did see him earlier this year as well in a decision win in his debut over Damian Villa. Getting fired up here. Extremely aggressive fighter. Super intelligent as well, though. Hopefully, we're going to see some takedowns. As said, the ground and pound will be a factor tonight. Stocky opponent in uh, Maximo Nunez, though. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner from the Dominican Republic, Maximo Apex Well, we mentioned in the fight card rundown it would be a pretty partisan crowd here tonight. That's because yeah. uh, Maximo Nunez, although originally from the Dominican Republic, trains right here in Orlando, Florida, an American top team. Longwood had a lot of support last time out. He said he's bringing even bigger crowd here tonight. Yeah. So uh, hopefully that's going to push him forward and fire him up. Yeah, he's the favorite, favorite of the crowd, that's <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And he's pointing at the pit, he's looking at Stankunas and he goes, we'll see you there, I'll see you there. Yeah, he, uh, he said, no doubt I'm going to stop him before the third round. But you see, mind games already from Stankunas, the blessed. Standing 5 foot 5, 66 and 37 is his reach. Apex Nunez, a little bit shorter, but uh, makes up for it with a lot of speed. Thinks he's going to have the speed advantage tonight, as you see originally there from the Dominican Republic. A fair bit older, though, at 37. Yeah. 13 years the senior tonight. Fighters, and it's now time to enter the pit. Fighters, it is now time to enter the pit. Yeah, Nunes also said there's three bars watching. Well, the biggest giveaway in sports history just got two times bigger. For a limited time only, received two times the standard karate token allocation after the initial DAO launch. Go to karate.com forward slash airdrop. We'll scan the QR code coming up on your screen right now to receive twice the standard token allocation. Offer ends 11.59 p.m. Eastern tomorrow night, December 18th. Don't miss out. Sign up now. No purchase required. If Wayne Spinola is your referee for this one. Three threes on the clock. Sorry, Bas, go ahead. No, if he did it on purpose, like when he checked the logic, but he used it to a kick, that, that would be very impressive, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> no, that, that's what that. I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, go, wow. That had to be luck. Oh, oh nice counter right there from, by uh, Nunes. Yeah, Nunez said he thought he would have the speed advantage, and that was a, a short little right hand, found the mark. Filling out process. You know, we wondered if Stankunas would be affected by the, the support here for Nunez tonight. And he, he said oh, to us, another right click. big swings. He said, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if he's got crowd support. Uh, it's really just him in the pit. So, that's, that's a correct. fair comment. <laughs> yeah. So a lot more movement here from Stan Kunas. And less movement for Maximo since last time. He's, he's smart enough because I think he got tired in the last fight. Sure. He's playing a really smart game right now. Great reflexes. He connected already twice with that cross. Yeah, very heavily muscled uh, muscled man. Yeah, good, good, leg kick, good leg kicks and good, uh, good uh, right cross from Maximo. Well, Maximo is very slowly stalking him around the pit here. Fainting, backing him into the corner. Oh, through that rear uppercut. Yeah. 
And a hook. Oh, oh that, that mix. should have been two inches lower. Yeah, question mark kick over the head. It was a really nice counter to the calf by Nunez. Oh. A couple of hooks there. Trying to go for the throw. Yeah, he's showing it again. Uh, Stan Kunes trying, uh, might try to go for that kick again. Well, very predictable there from Nunez. Didn't set that up. Easily avoided by Stan Kunas. And he's throwing very short shots on the inside. Body lock again. Oh, nice little trick. Yeah, that was nice. I would like to see more feints from both these guys. I agree. Sometimes we talk about cardio and, and you know what people don't understand sometimes is the fact that if you if you're able to fake your fake your opponent and make him rehack, he's gonna empty his gas tank much faster than if you just stay standing uh, without any movement you know what i mean so it's very important to face your, your opponent yeah, yeah because you're interrupting the breathing pattern absolutely i will get people tired like that mark kerr i will get him tired of fainting <laughs> and he goes what are you doing i said i'm no. just interrupting your breathing pattern dude yes and, and by faking him do you uh you load up his nervous system so first round in the books there uh still a little bit cagey a lot more work perhaps being done by by Stan Kunas in that opening three minutes. I think so too, but then again, Nunes landed a, coo a few good punches. Two times he landed with that cross. Yeah, we just but, saw there in the start of the replays. But Stan Kunas also landed a big punch. Yeah, he had uh, one great at attack that he, he, he, he threw a few punches that, that, that connect. He missed with that, uh, that Mawashigiri. That was very nice too. He faked it low, then he went high. Yeah, just over the top. Look in the corners there, both men. Staying calm, cool, and collected. You know, very often we, we, we're, we're tempted to think that high kick are, more, are always more efficient, but that's not always the case. Low kick can be very, very uh, efficient as well, you know, because it's, it might not be as much uh, flamboyant, but it, it can cause a lot of damage to the legs or to the body as well. Yeah, if you can't walk, you can't fight. So three on the clock, second round underway. Oh, that's a big right hand from Stan Kunis. Oh, oh again, go. Nunez is rocked. Stan Kunis swarming him here, the right again. Throws the left, oh. and he's firing back as well. What a war now. Wow, yeah, feeling our process is over. Yeah. Oh, Stan Kunis just pushed him away. And that was great work from Nunez to come back into it after what was a, a, a really worrying few seconds for him. It would have been a standing eight count in uh, some rule sets. Again, Nunez pressing forward here, undeterred. Yes, Stan Kunes uh, slow down a little bit. Yeah, I would, I would start attacking the body. That's what I always do. If you hurt the head, start hitting the body. You no know, forces, defense down, and then go back on top. You have time. You have like 30, 45 seconds to do that. Yeah, they, they sometimes they make the mistake. The, the younger fighter that are that, that are not maybe not as experienced. They they, they always had hunters. Yep. They don't go for the body or the legs. Well, we've still got over half of this uh, second round to go. <laughs> Nunez, I think, very much uh, back okay. into his pattern here. Tancuna said he would counter those low kicks. We didn't see that yet. Nunez said he was going to move like water. Do you think he's just a little bit tight right now? Yeah. I think that uh, he got hit hard, you know, and that shakes people up. They goes like, okay, that was hard. I cannot get another shot like that. Oh, that was a nice counter. That was a nice counter. Yeah. He blitzed him as, the, as uh, Nunez threw the, threw the low kick. And that's what he said. You know, he's going to try again. the low kick. Oh, again, yeah. yeah, one, two to the head. That's why I always you say no single kicks. Yeah. Set him up. You, you can't trade a, a low kick to a cross to the head. Well, that was lovely work from Stan Kunis. He took the lead leg away and then went up top. Nice movement there by Stan Kunis. Just moving to the side. Thirty seconds left. Yeah, you can hear the crowd trying to pick Nunez up here and turn it up. They're suspecting he's probably behind. It'll be interesting to see what he does in the third round if he, he can't land anything significant in the last 20 seconds here. 
They both load a lot on their uh, rear cross punches, you know, when they get close of each other, they both very often throw that the same punch at the same time and both miss. Well, that was yep. telegraph. That was a good, uh, oh, that's the end of the round. It was a, <laughs> a good takedown from Nunez, a little bit of a legal ground and pound there quickly. They're not allowed to have a fist, they're not allowed to strike the back of the head. So <laughs> getting some licks in to even it up. Um, but guys, good round for, for Stan Kunis. Yes, I think he, uh, this round is definitely going to go to him. It's all about the third now. Yes, I agree. I, I, I believe that the, the, the, the oh. next round will be decisive to determine the winner. And that was lovely work from Stan Kunis and some killer instinct to try and follow up there. Just not quite able to put it away. This was the, but it was this smart was the uh, take down at the end of the round here. It, it was smart from Nunes that he started attacking right away because otherwise the referee, like you said, could have been in an eight count. Well, like you said, Bas, uh, Stan Kunis made a mistake, I think a crucial mistake. When he rocked his opponent, he, he rocked Nunes, he should have gone to the body or to the leg, then going back to the head. You know, he transformed into a, a headhunter anyway. Yeah, just when he started missing the target, he wasted a lot of energy. Just got fixated, uh, trying to get that finish there. A lot of people do that with a body shot. You drop it with a body shot, and they're going to hit the body. They go, hit the head. <laughs> Bring the hands back up, then go to the body. Right, third and final round underway here. Perhaps a bit more work needed by Maximo Nunez to get himself back into this one, but he's pressing forward once more. Of course, aggression is extremely heavily rewarded here at Karate Combat, so fighters coming forward, uh, always starting oh, off on the right foot. That but kick was a good kick. Yeah, it and another one. Right, right to the liver. Liver kick and an inside low kick. Calf kick. Clean, back up. Thank you. Look at me. Fight. Stan Kunes used a lot of movement. He rather be uh, be at the, at distance of his opponent. You know. Nunes tried to close the distance, but he's unable to do it. Yeah, Nunez is, is not uh, perhaps coming in as fast as he could do. He thought speed was going to be his advantage, but you can see uh, San Kunas able to dance around the outside again. San Kunas is just low, looking for an opening because he knows that if he can land another big shot like he did in round number two, and actually in round number one, he dazed them also. Mm -hmm. Stan Kunas seems to me like he, he, he fight by burst, by burst of energy. You know, like he, he's gonna unleash, then he's gonna take, a, take it, take it, take it slow for a few, uh, for a few seconds, then he's gonna go back again. You know. Yeah, Nunez, really good pressure here. Whoa, that was a big punch from Kunis Nunez. Off balance, goes to the body. Back up, back up, back up, behind the ear, which is a really great spot to hit somebody. <laughs> Final minute here, Nunez oh, turning it up, and this is good work from the Dominican. Yep, he needs to continue now. Yes, yeah, Stan Kunes need to, to fight in and out. He can't stay in the in the boxing range because Nunez has better boxing than, than him. He has better hands. He needs to use his, his movement if you wanna, no you wanna no keep knee, the edge. No well, you can throw a knee, but it can't be from a clinch position where you pull your opponent onto it. It's got to be thrown as though it's a, a strike in its own right. Oh, that was a good one. Yep. Well, they're turning it into a, a bit of a brawl here. And this is great. Nunez is just cutting everything off quickly. Stankunas is having to move non-stop, and he's running out of space. 20 seconds. Well, it could come down in the first round at this rate. Boom. Good takedown from Nunez, immediately pops up, trying to get some ground and pound off. Oh, and that's good work again. Five seconds left here. One last opening. Hell for leather slung in the middle of the pit, and both these guys think they've done it. Great fight. That's a hard one to judge. Hard, hard, well. Especially the, the third round. The first, the second, yes, we know who, who probably won the, the, that, those rounds. But the third one is very, very tough call. Well, of course, we do have the option of an overtime uh, round. If it's too close, our judges can say, you know what, we need a fourth. I think right now, perhaps they should be prepared for that. But talk us through these replays. Yeah, he was connected good here. Uh, Nunes was in the, in the in the final minute. He started really upping his game and doing a great job.
Yeah, he got that pressure working, got his got his timing down a bit more, started to really uh, take the space away from Stan Kunis. This was the last oh, no, 10 no, seconds. No. Yeah, Stan Kunis was controlling the distance, but for most of that time, but he was unable to find opening to get in. Yeah. We'll see what the judges are think, think of the fight. Yeah, yeah well, we have got an official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for both of these warriors tonight. Our winner coming out of the blue corner, Gabriel the Bless Stankunas. So Gabriel Stankunas hands Maximo Nunez his first loss in the pit. He improves his record to two and one. Nunez just saying thank you to the crowd who's made the trip to see him. And Stankunas giving his corner a very big hug in the background as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, anxious moments for him in the third. We'll probably talk a bit more about that uh, shortly when we get some fight stats coming up for you in a moment. But Gabriel Stankunas right now is going to head up pit side. And hopefully, if we can grab him. <laughs> Let's see, he's going to get a few words with our broadcast colleague, who it's great to have back on the show, Leila Anneli. Tá bom, parabéns. Primeira coisa, congratulations, well done. You frustrated your opponent dancing around him there. He struggled to find rage towards the end. Was that always the game plan? Você infuriou ele, você dançou muito, usou uma pressão bem inteligente. Isso foi a estratégia? This is karate. This is karate. The really karate is this. The really show is this. Karate combat! <laughs> what is up, Orlando? Another question I wanted to ask you was something beautiful that you opened up about ahead of this fight. You were very honest about anxiety and about the fact that you knew that your opponent would have fans out in force, Team ATT here. And it was a focus of yours not to let it bother you. I want to know how you did that. Você foi muito aberto sobre sua ansiedade e sabendo que aqui o seu oponente ia ter muita fãs dele, o time dele. Como que você não deixou isso te irritar? For much respect for ATT, uh, American Top Team is the grand, time, grand team for Orlando and the American, I much respect. É, eu Pode falar em português. Eu tô com com meu pai aqui. É, ele grande responsável por pela minha carreira e fez parte de tudo isso. É, conseguiu ajudou muito na minha ansiedade. Eu joguei limpo. Sou um cara ansioso. Ele sabe disso. Bastante. Mas a gente conversou bastante. É, meu técnico Mano Santana, acho que o cara mais sábio que existe aqui em Orlando e no Brasil no mundo todo, é, também durante essa semana me, me ajudou muito, me fez crescer e me controlou a minha ansiedade, eu sabia que ia ser difícil, eu sabia que a torcida ia estar do lado dele, mas eu trabalhei muito, eu trabalhei duro para isso, e eu sabia que eu focado ele não ganharia de mim. He uh, says big respect to Team ATT and to the fans of his opponent. He has massive respect for all of them and thanks them all for coming here. But he also says in terms of anxiety, he credits his father who's here with him and who talked to him a lot ahead of this fight and his incredible team and his focus. Parabéns, well done, congratulations. Thank you. Pode, pode descer. I want you here, okay? Here. Who did he call out? I think uh, Abdelassi Mamagnassi, maybe. Oh, yeah. Mamagnassi, the super fast kicker. Now, let's see. Well, let's head down pit side. Thanks, Layla. Robin Black, what are your thoughts? Uh... Guys, it is such a gift to be able to describe martial artists, but it's a really difficult process because we can only say who they were, not who they are. When we talk about a kid like Gabriel Stankunas, where he's so aggressive, he's so powerful, he's all these things, but that's who he was on his past work. Uh, fighting and martial arts is a lifelong process of change, and this kid has changed going into this fight, and he changed even within the fight from round one to round two. He looked like a different fighter. When we look at the statistics, they were close, 
but it was his movement, his ability to land clean, and his changing identity within the fight. He was fluid and moving and liquid in round one, and then aggressive and intense and combative in round two. He was a smart fighter. He's an ever-changing fighter, and he's an ever-growing fighter, and he's a kid that we should really keep an eye on. Guys, wonderful fight. Let's take a look at these stats. So close and really in total stats. You can see Nunes landed a lot, but it's when you land, it's where you land, it's why you land, and it's how you land that's mad that matters. And Gabriel Stankunis won that fight and he won it clean. It was a wonderful fight for both young gentlemen. Yes, thank you, Robin. Uh, guys, last reflections on that one. Stankunis, uh, look, we know he's tough. We know he can get stuck in a war. Had to dig deep a little bit in the end there. Yes, he had to dig deep, yeah, because Nunes came back and because he knew he was behind and he was landing some big shots, but still the bigger shots were landed by Stan Kunas. I think he dazed him a few times and the first round actually landed also a really big one. Yeah, yeah that, that he, second he, round, George, was the turning point. Yeah, he had opportunities that in, in, in this fight that he was closer than his opponent has ever been to finish the fight. And I think that's why he was awarded the, the, the victory. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Of course, we aggression and, and shots that land, kicks that land, punches that land are the things they're going to score for you here at Karate Combat. Very decisively, that went the way of Gabriel Stankunas. He moves to two and one. Uh, of course, we've got lots more fights coming up for you. Andreas, Andreas Madera and Masik Tershek is coming up next. Uh, we're going to be back just shortly. Go ahead and take a quick break with us. Oh, okay, guys, okay, okay, there we go. Oh, you serious, dude? Yeah. All right, everybody, can have your attention. Listen up, Karate Combat is the new striking league taking over combat sports. Real fights, real stories, real knockouts. And boy, this upcoming January, Karate Combat is giving the whole league to its fans. Karate Combat is issuing a token that will govern the league. Yes, I know, of course, you've seen these tokens, but trust me, this is completely different. Because Karate Combat will have no owners, no hidden strings, nothing. Just the Karate Token. Oh, come on, man, not you again. Go here. Push! Push! Ooh, get that head on. Stay down. People. But wait, there's more. Check out our new app. Pick a fighter, and if that fighter wins, you win more tokens. Meaning, more of the league goes to you. Well? What do you all think? All right. Let it ride. The app is launching in January. So go to karate.com slash airdrop and sign up now. Whoosh. Okay, so all the karate combat fighters that you're going to see tonight have a background in karate. What you might not know is that all these guys have different styles. Gojo Ryu, Shito Ryu, Kyokushin, Kampo Karate, Shotokan Karate. Today, we are going to focus on Shotokan and on Kyokushin. Shotokan. All long stances, wide stances, all the kicks are above the waist and their blocks and counters are not circular movements like you see a lot. It's very more precise. If he gives me a right straight, boom, boom, and there's the counter right away. Kyokushin focus on powerful blows in order to inflict as much damage as possible. They are allowed to kick the legs, no punch to the face, and they are specialists in close range combat. Yes, I always call it fighting in a phone booth because this, what you see in a, in a, a Kyokushin match, that's it. They will never see a moment if he gives me a kick that I'm moving out of the way. They like to take it and immediately counter. Big difference in styles. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what style of karate do you practice, because a punch is a punch, a kick is a kick. So, may the best man win. Okay, I'm going first now. Yes, welcome back to Pitside here at Karate Combat 37. Moving right on, a lightweight bout coming up now. Andreas uh, Madera taking on Masik Tursak. Uh, Bas Masik Tursak, he had a really good bout last time out, despite not getting uh, that win against Bruno Souza. So, a uh, tough opponent there. Yeah, and he also said he had only five weeks. This time, he had a lot of preparation. He likes to have like 12 or 14 weeks, which he has now, so he's really confident. He says he's going to put pressure on his opponent, he's going to use strong punches, and he's going to fire low kicks. And once he sees his opponent slowing down, 
that's when he's going to go in for the kill. Yeah, and of course, a uh, K K K Shinkai specialist as well. Oh, there we go. Yes, this is a K K Shinkai. We saw him with a really beautiful head kick knockout in a kickboxing match, actually. There's a really nice little uh, video coming from him around the internet. He has an undefeated Venezuelan standing in his way tonight. That's Andres uh, Madera. George, uh, this guy's fought all over the place, titles everywhere. Most significantly, he is also an Olympian. Yes, he believes that the speed will give him an edge, and he will try to go for those knockout blows, like the head kick and the knockout punches. So we have to pay attention to, to, to this. Yeah, a man used to uh, the biggest of stages. Going to be a very interesting bout in the lightweight division here. Time for you to go ahead and meet Andres Madera and Mashek Tursek. My name is Maciej Tersiak. I'm from Poland. I want to be uh, one of the best in, in this organization. Soy Andres Madera y vengo de Venezuela. Mira, demostrar la karate compa que me estoy preparando cada día mejor para, para esta liga. I need to win this fight to show everybody what can I do. Mira, va a ser un show interesante. Creo que, que mi velocidad va a ser un espectáculo para el público. I have better boxing. I have uh, stronger kicks. Creo que va a haber muchas acciones. Our next bout, fighting out of the blue corner, representing Poland, Maciek, the Karate Kid, Turchak! So we welcome back to the pit, Maciek Turchak. He's looking to make amends for that debut last time out at Karate Combat 35, dropped that unanimous decision loss to Bruno Souza, no shame in that. Bruno Souza, uh, really top tier in this lightweight division. A lot of uh, European experience, a lot of kickboxing experience, some K1 experience as well. But he is a Kyrkoshin specialist at heart, trying to get the crowd going here to get behind him. Really fun guy to, to, to talk to, wasn't he, Bass? Uh, yes. Looks like he's having a lot, of, a lot of fun with fighting. Yeah, I said he's actually, he landed the first ever knee in karate combat history, and he said this time he's hoping he can get the first ever knee knockout. Uh, uh, something we still haven't seen that much of yet. No, no, no, no, let's hope he's right, you know? I would love to see a good knockout, whether it's to the body or to the head. I'm, I'm good with anything. Yes. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, representing Venezuela. Welcome, Andres Martina! So his opponent tonight, Andres Madero, looking to stay undefeated in the pit. Last time out, he picked up a good unanimous decision win earlier this year against Dastenbeck uh, Otobalayev. Of course, we mentioned he is an Olympian, competed at the Tokyo Olympics in uh, 2021. Going to look to use a lot of misdirection, a lot of tempo changes. Actually splitting his time between uh, the US and Venezuela. Making his home uh, for this camp for the last six weeks in Dallas, Texas at Dojo Zero. Tell the tape for this one, standing five foot six tall is the 28-year-old Pole, Masik Tursek. Actually came out wearing George's favorite headband for the weigh-in. <laughs> Got that same style. And there is Andres Madera, slightly his senior at 34 years old. Look at that 70 inch reach for him. Let's see if he can put that to use. Fighters, it is now time to enter the pit. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Well, referee Sam Amidi for this one, sending them back to get this bout underway. 
Karate Combat 37 is sponsored by no Gameful. Doing. Pro level expertise isn't just for the pros. Gameful is personalized supplements and expert advice for active people. Supplements like Gameful's personalized uh, protein, hydration, and pre workout deliver results to you. Sign up now, get 40% off at gameful.com forward slash KC37 or use the code KC37 at checkout. Madeira really use, is striking like a point fighter. You see that really nice right hand flying. He did say that he worked hard on combinations though. Ooh, those are some great strikes he's throwing. Yeah, he, he has a, a good strategy and he said that he want to use his speed advantage. He believes that he's the fast, faster fighter uh, in and out movement and that's what he's doing right now. Oof, close to the jaw. Kyokushin Karate is a, it's a sport that does not allow the punches to the face. So a lot of the fighters sometimes that comes from Kyokushin Karate have the tendency to be a little bit too straight up with no head movement. But now we can see that uh, Turjak has, has changed that. You see his head movement going side to side, and I think he does it on purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. his background in Kyokushin Karate, but he's got kickboxing experience, he's got K1 experience. He said he thinks actually his punches are going to be uh, a lot stronger, but he's going to look to hammer the legs first. But yeah, well, what a great way to to kill your opponent's uh, mobility <laughs> is to to target the leg. You know, it's the best way to do it. When you know that that you have an opponent that that use a lot of movement, you want to neutralize that by hitting the leg. You see Madras with that uh, wider stance, that lead hand forward and low. He's got very powerful kicks, Madeira has. And that was good work from him. Good shots in the pocket, moving out of the way. He said he's really changed his training up. Wow. For the last uh, six weeks or so while he's been in here in the US in Dallas. He's doing a really great job staying outside the range. Third Jack has a lot of head, move, head movement, you know, on purpose. He knows his opponent would probably try to blitz in in a straight line, so he wanna, he don't want, he wanna always keep his head outside of the center line, which is a good thing to do, I believe. Oh, and that was a good knee from Terzak. Madera is very fast. He comes in and out very, very fast. Yeah, I mean, he was very confident when we spoke to him, and he did openly say he thinks his speed is going to be the key to, to getting this one done tonight. Final 15 seconds of the opening round. Let's go. Nice, nice. Good kick. Yeah, he just. Uh, good timing right at the end there. And those leg kick will, will very often the damage will appear <laughs> a little bit later in the fight because it will swell and, and it will it will uh, it, the damage will, will will come a little bit later. Let's take a look at some of the replays from that opening round. Just in the legal zone, top of the calf there behind the knee. And really getting the full meat of the shin there, but these were good shots from Nadaris. Yeah, and he gets out also fast, you see, he's getting out there. <coughs> but he landed some really crazy body kicks as well. Powerful, Madeira did. Getting a quick look in the corner of Tershak there. Any thoughts on the scoring for the first round, gents? Oh, yeah, I, I would go to Madeira, I think, yes. yeah, because he was the aggressor. He, he, he punched more, he kicked more, and he connected more. Yeah. Let's go, Jets. Let's go. But a lot of guys, they just guys, need the first go. round to download all the information, and that's when they start fighting. And, and also some some of the leg Up kick that that go he got back, hit go with back, go the damage might might happen. Uh, you ready? You ready? Be, might, might happen now. You know, like it might it might it might, uh, you might feel it now. You know, in the later <laughs> later round, like yeah, and especially after you sit down. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Tershank, no stranger to... Uh, Oof, that was a big inside low kick. Some low kicks. Actually had a tie, oh, tie yeah, fight no. in uh, Lupini Stadium as Tershak. Oh. oh, that's good work from that Manera. great. Good combination. But you see, Tershak is turning it up now. There we go. Madera firing these shots from a very low position, leaving the head open a little bit, much more higher. Traditional kind of Western boxing guard for Tershak. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, that was that short-range kick up to the head from the Gyukshin background, but he's having to try and find some sort of guard play to slow down the ground and pound here. Nice timing. You can see that Madeira has, has the speed advantage, you know, like he's very fast, come in and out very fast. And um, when his opponent threw a circular kick, he tried to blitz in and c cut him off balance. Oh, no, missed. What's yeah, he didn't commit head? to it. He's well, pointing, but he pulled himself back, it looked like. Yeah, got one for a shot to the back of the head there, but you can only strike uh, the target as presented, so... Pressing forward still is Tershak. Yeah, I think Tershak needs to put the pressure because he's losing the fight right now. Yep. Looks like that. Exactly. Like he did in the beginning of the round. He yes. was doing great. A little bit slow on the uh, the closing of the distance there, kind of plodding forward a little bit. Yeah, if he if he if he keep the, the fight at the same pace, he's gonna lose it. Final minute of the second round. Watch the kick. Yeah, and uh, Tershak getting warned again. It's almost like he done. He just sets the kicks up with punches, but he doesn't try to land the punches. It looks like, right? <laughs> right. He's not committing to that first, uh, first yeah, strike. It's in the air. Is there is there a point on the calf that's more or less uh, you know damaging to hit higher up, lower down, or is it all, all kind of the same? I would just hit the middle, the biggest <laughs> part. The yeah. parental nerves, the bone muscle. Yes, the you hit the nerves. Sometimes it numbs the legs, and the guy can no longer fight. He, he doesn't. He lost the the the feel, the feel of his leg. But with the inside, with an open stance like they have, one is the southpaw, the other one is the. the, the Oh, Orthodox that's fighter, that's a dangerous kick to throw because we saw already break, somebody break his shin bone. Yes, we did. With that stance. Oh, yeah. Because the shin is a really hard boom. Well, Madeira switching stance there at the end of that round. Yeah, maybe an, uh, maybe an indication that he, one of his legs is hurt. You know what I mean? He took a lot of uh, leg kicks. Let's take a look at some of the replays from that second round. That was a good shot from uh, Madeira. That's the open stance, right? Then it's a full on with the power leg. And that's what Marcek Czechek said that he was going to do. He's going to attack the legs, you know, slow him down, and then he's going to go in for the kill. So he's got one round to do it. Let's see what he does. Well, let's see if we can listen into the corners here. We're going to start with Madeira. <laughs> Translate. After you, my friend. <laughs> and this is the corner of Masek Tersek. So the game, the coach just said, hit him hard. I go, okay. <laughs> yeah, getting that. Uh, getting I'm getting trying us. to do the whole time, actually. <laughs> yeah, a lot of medals and uh, a lot of competition experience for Madeira. World medalist, Pan American champion. We mentioned a couple of times already fought in the Olympics. Touch of gloves underway here. Third and final three minute round. This your third bout of the evening from Karate Combat 37 live from the back lot of Universal Studios Orlando. Good feint from Madeira. Yeah, Tur Turchak is, is throwing punches sometimes, but his punches that he throw are, are more there to, as a distraction to, to land his kicks. Yep. He really wants to create the damage with his kicks. But now we're in the third round, you know, so he needs to to, to go and put, the, put more pressure. Because now he's losing the fight. Madaraz is controlling the, the, the pace right now. We'll get involved on uh, social media. You can see a lot of tweets coming in. Nathan Levy says, can't wait to watch Politnikov MMA put on a show. That, of course, is Sasha Politnikov taking on Rob Buxton coming up next. Wow. But Madeira's wow. opening up here against Tershak, pushing him back. And he's doing great. He was throwing hooks and suddenly right a cross in between. That was nice. Yeah, just standing in the pocket, throwing oh, yeah. everything here. Big wide shots. Tershak eating all of the damage, though. Oh, yeah. We know how tough he is. Madeira, though, he's got the reach advantage. Big left. And now, now that's what that's what we talked about before in the other fight. He needs to go to the to, to the body, to the leg, then go right. back to the head. Exactly. He's head hunting here. And Sam Amini is warning oh, Tershak, and this over. fight is stopped. Standing TKO wow. for Andres Madeira. 
Well, well he I, said I, it. I was wrong. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> His speed m did make a difference. Yes. And he was throwing hooks, hooks, hooks, and suddenly he connected, boom, across him there. Yeah, and then he just went started. with the wide shots, and Tershak, you know, he kept his guard up, but not able to dodge. And but that, that's the problem, uh, gentlemen. We're, we're not in boxing, we're not in kickboxing, we're in full contact karate. You can't guard the same way you guard in kickboxing. You need oh, to, oh, to use your mobility to step in and out or, or, or duck. You can't keep your head in the center line. Yeah, we said all the time that concussive force comes through, and you're going to see it here in the replays. This is the finish. Talk us through, boss. Yeah, he's just start wailing and aiming for the head, hand hunting, as we we're calling it the whole time. And boom, that starts connecting. And with that kind of power, that's a close line right there. I mean, there. Even, even those forearms, you <laughs> yeah. know, they're just doing damage the whole time. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's as clean as you like it. Boom. Yeah, and that that that close line, I'm talking always, I'm talking about it. That's a punch more people should throw because it kind of hits the back of the head, but it's still a legal shot because it's outside the Mohawk. Oh, you can see Madero very happy indeed. Can you come Let's in? bring these guys back to the middle here, get our official decision on this one. Beautiful performance. All right, Karate Combat fans, our winner by TKO, out of the red corner, Andres Martina! <laughs> so, commiserations to Masik Tursek. Andres Madero moves to 2 0 in the lightweight division here. Heading up pit side, let's get a few words between Andres Madero and our colleague, Leila Machado Gary. Andres, congratulations. Absolutely fantastic fight. Now, your opponent focused incredibly on those kicks. We saw you change stance, we saw you change. Did those kicks Great surprise you at all? And did they inspire that war of a third round? You good? Even. You what definitely truly inspired him was all his friends and family from Venezuela that were, are here supporting him. So that definitely was supporting him to win this match. And what does this win mean? ¿Qué significa esta victoria para ti? El comienzo, el comienzo de, de una nueva carrera en Karate Comba. Thank you, Karate Comba. Thank you, President Ada, Andre, my friend. Thank you for support. I'm ready for next try. I'm ready, guys. Thank you. He's ready. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, baby, this has been such a fascinating night of martial artistry already. You know, martial arts is filled with doctrines and dogma and mythology. And one of the greatest myths of all time is always keep your hands up. That is patently untrue. It is not true at all, or at best, it is a novice truth. What you saw, Madeira fought with his hands down while his opponent had his hands up. Why was hands down better? In the hierarchy of defense, Block is far beneath evade. When your hands are down, you're mo mo more mobile and you can evade. It also allows you to move more fluidly so you can strike. It was his hands down game, him disbelieving the myth of always keeping your hands up that created the scenario that allowed him to win. That was a wonderful display of modern karate. Yes, thank you, Robin Black, for your thoughts on that bow. Andres Madeira victorious there. I believe we've got some stats to look at for this one. Guys, tell us what you think of uh, shots landed in that bow. Masik Tursek. Yeah. Well, look at that. Look at the punches landed. Three to 65. Yeah, quite a difference there. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the, but the kicks, you know, like, like you, you could see that Madeira had the, the speed advantage. Yeah, it was much better with his punches. Uh, Tur Tur Turchak had uh, only one way, it was with his leg kick, you know, and it didn't work for him. Yeah, what's Turchak got to do, uh, you know, in his next bout here to try and turn this around? Because he's 0-2 now. 
Yeah, well, what he needs to do is setting up those kicks with punches that connect, because that's the best way. If you connect with the punches, you put them in defense, that's when they let, the kicks are going to land. And right now, he didn't do that. He threw it in the air, and then he set it up, and I think that was a mistake. Okay, well, uh, good division here in the lightweight division for Andres Madera. Let's see how he does. Let's head over to Leila Anali, who's got a, a quick preview of our co-main event tonight. Yes, yes. In our co-main event this evening, we will see our current bantamweight champion, Owen Chalmia, look to defend his title against Jesus Lopez. Now, he's a PhD student by day, champion by night, and he credits his colorful career to one very influential female, his mother. My name is Owen Chalmier, and I'm the reigning bantamweight karate combat world champion. When I was about four, my mother enrolled me into karate classes. I immediately fell in love with the art. Within weeks, I began competing and haven't looked back since. My mother is my coach, my manager, and my trainer. I've worked with many coaches over the years, but I actually prefer working with my mum because I just know that she has my best interests. If she doesn't want me to win, then who is? Thanks to her, I have a wealth of combat experience under my belt. And combining that with my natural hunger to fight makes me probably the most high-risk fight in this division. Without the belt, a lot of people won't take that fight. It's my ticket to fight everyone. And that's exactly what I want. Everyone in this weight division. There's no secrets to my training. I train every single day. I don't believe in off days or rest days. My work ethic is to train hard, maintain focus, and stay disciplined. And I believe that makes champions. I think all the fighters in the Bantamweight division in Freddy Combat are good. Each one presents a different challenge, but I think they're all beatable. Including myself, no one's invincible. I just prepare as hard as I can to make sure I'm the one getting my hand raised every time. So I just strive to push myself in everything I do, just more running, more cardio, more sparring. I just up at every camp and it hasn't failed me so far. Show me a connect, drops him, keeps going. Got it. That is over. The belt beyond the line doesn't change my mindset. I'm in there to finish fights, and I'm not there to win on decision. I'm there to knock them out. Yes. Yes, that is a look at our bantamweight champion, Owen Chelmia. Uh, guy's good. He came, kind of came out of nowhere and just suddenly, whoop, there he is, champion. Very worthy champion indeed. And the style, you know, we're talking about the whole time. I mean, this guy, he's always exciting. You know, if, if you want to see an exciting fight, just put him in there oh, yeah. and it will be exciting. Coming forward and just blaster his opponents. Yeah, make sure you don't you don't miss any second of that fight because uh, it's going to be action action packed for sure. Yeah, that's our co-main main event tonight. We've got uh, plenty more fights coming your way very shortly. Rob Buxton and Sasha Politnikov are going to go to war, but join us again after this commercial break. When I think about karate, I really think about the 1980s because I believe that's when karate had a big boom in Hollywood. You know, when I think about blood sport, Jean Claude Van Damme, Chuck Norris, it really inspired me. How was it for you? For me, it was uh, a little bit early, the 70s, it was Bruce Lee. You know, I was the sick kid with a horrible skin disease. I got bullied a lot, then I saw Enter the Dragon from Bruce Lee. And that was it. I realized if that guy can do it, well, I'm bigger already than him, maybe I can do it as well. Started training, knocked out my first bully, and bada bing, bada boom, I'm talking to you right now, buddy. And I'm talking to Bas Rutin. <laughs> hey, everyone, Bas Rutin here. Coming this January, Karate Combat will launch the Up Only Gaming app. Now, in the new app, you'll be able to collect free karate combat tokens and then vote on your favorite fighters with those tokens. Simple, right? Now, if your fighter wins, you earn more tokens. And if they lose, not a problem at all. You lose no tokens and just try again at the next event. You can also support your favorite karate combat fighters by boosting their potential fight prize pools. So your favorite fighter can take home more rewards when they win. Now, more tokens means more influence over future fighter prize prize pools and other league's decisions. You got it all. And for a limited time only, receive two times the standard karate bonus sign-up tokens after the initial launch when you sign up right now. So go to karate.com slash airdrop or scan the QR code on your screen right now to receive twice the standard token allocation. So don't miss out. Sign up right now. There's no purchase required. 
Yes, very exciting times ahead with the launch of the Karate Combat DAO. Of course, go to karate.com uh, forward slash airdrop. Get your tokens squared away there. Uh, guys, moving on, Sasha Politnikov, Rob Buxton. Very, very interesting fight here. Politnikov, uh, Bas, he's a debutant here tonight. But this guy has had a lot, a lot of uh, big fight experience. Yeah, he's uh, he just loves being here, man. He says meeting people, having fun. This guy looks like he's having fun the whole time. He's going to look for a big right punch and a big right kick. His opponent is going to look for that, that's what he said, and he's going to counter those strikes. Yeah, really, really intriguing uh, guy to make his debut tonight. Returning uh, George, fellow Canadian, Rob Buxton. Yeah, uh, he is know, up on tonight. He knows that he's not the, favor the favorite in this fight because his opponent has more fighting experience. But you know what he thinks? And he, w he believes he wants to be the first one to win a fight with a knockout knee. So we'll see. Yeah, I would love that. Of course, Rob Buxton secured his karate combat contract last time out, looking to really put it to use in the first fight here. Let's go ahead and meet these two fighters. This is Rob Buxton and Sasha Politnikov. My name is Sasha Politnikov. I'm making my debut with karate combat, so I got to go in and uh, make a big impact. My name's Rob Buxton. I'm excited to get out there and uh, test myself against some stiff competition, and uh, I'm ready to go. There's not enough time for him to be ready. That's the problem for him. Biggest problem that I do carry is I do carry a lot of power. I consider him to be pretty green into the professional side, but I'm expecting a tough opponent. Coming in against a UFC vet, it's a high reward fight for me. If I can take this through, I believe I can. I'm confident in myself. I think he's going to have a big wake-up call. As long as I go in there and, and play my game, it's going to be a quick night. Okay, Kar okay, Karate Combat fans, fighting tonight out of the blue corner, representing Hong Kong, Sasha Palatnikov! Welcome to Karate Combat, Sasha Guaylo Politnikov. Extremely interesting character, this guy representing Hong Kong and Las Vegas as part of his camp has been at Syndicate, Syndicate MMA over in Vegas. Uh, past this guy, uh, he's boxed. Uh, he was in the UFC for a while as well. He even played professional rugby in Russia. <laughs> professional <laughs> rugby, how cool is that? And he likes a kick that you like a lot. I saw you doing it on the back. A lot of times, the question mark kick, and he's going to look to see if he can land it. And he's really good with it. So uh, if he's as good as you, and I got to <laughs> tell you, no, for real. I, we, and, and even uh, Stephen Waterboy Thompson said the same thing. He saw it. That was, that was really nice, uh, Josh. Oh, I'm just going to go uh, pass out from the compliments now. <laughs> and his opponent. Fighting out of the red corner, representing Canada. Welcome, Rob Buckshot Buxton. So we welcome back to a Karate Combat, Rob Buckshot Buxton. He's one and zero. Oh, picked up a really good TKO victory over Adrian Galvan uh, back in June of this year. Originally from Tang Sudo, big middleweight at six foot three. He says that he's going to be the first the first fighter to, to win a fight with an, a, a knee. So I can't wait. I, I, I apparently been working a lot on this uh, on, on, on this weapon. So we'll see how it's going to turn out. Certainly hope so. Tell the tape here. Sasha Politnikov Guaylo is his nickname. If you're wondering, that means white devil. Uh, it's something that uh, native folks in Hong Kong call the foreigners who live there. It's <laughs> the nicest way I can describe it. Uh, Rob Buckshot Buxton, 28 years old. There you go, standing a little bit taller, a little bit lankier. But the Canadian is a Tang Soo Do proponent, looking to build his record to 2-0. Fighters, it is now time to enter the pit. Of course, the biggest giveaway in sports history just got two times bigger for a limited time only. Received two times the standard karate token allocation after our initial DAO launch. Go to karate.com forward slash airdrop or scan the QR code on your screen right now to receive twice the standard token allocation. Offer ends 11.59 p.m. tomorrow night, December 18th. Don't miss out and sign up now. Oh, Politnikov going to work quickly, but Buxton firing straight back. 
It was nice already how we avoided the front kick, just moving out of the way and right away coming back. That was really nice done there by Poletnikov. Yeah, both these guys very tall, but you can see Buxton's got that little bit of edge there. Yeah, he wants to try to use that reach to his, adva his advantage. Mm -hmm. oh, close too fast. Oh, I love the head movement from Politnikov. Oh, body head, love it. Oof. Yeah, it's a big, big step up for Buxton. Uh, he's fighting a guy with a, that has a lot of, of experience in, in combat, you know? Yeah, Talk he, about a, a guy that, that fought in, in multi, multi different uh, combat sports. So uh, it's interesting. Yeah, he yeah. called it a high reward fight. So if he wins, he says, it's going to be a high reward for me. See both these guys very technically sound, keeping their composure even with some of these huge uh, flurry exchanges. That's a single kick again. You got to watch out to get countered. Again, look at the head movement from Politnikov, finding those angles, get behind the tricep. Yeah. Buxton misses a lot, you know. That, that's going to play a role in, in terms of stamina, you know, over time. You know, if he keep missing his punches, it's going to be hard. You know, he's going to empty his gas tank. You can see some of that, some of that boxing experience of uh, Sasha Politnikov, was the Asian cadet champion uh, in Macau. Granted, that was uh, a time ago. We didn't see too, too many uh, leg kicks so far. It's kind of surprising. A lot of the, the especially Buxton is uh, trying to, to attack the head. An eye poke, I believe. Well, that's unfortunate. Doesn't happen very often, but uh, guys, thoughts on that first two minutes. Politnikov looking very fluid in there. Very nice, very calm and relaxed. Even after big strikes, you know, the way he lets him miss. Very much in control. Oh, and he was framing off in the clinch there, and accidental, I think. You can see immediately he stops and acknowledges it. What do you think? You want to see the doctor for a second? You want to take a look? Okay, let me, let me get the doctor. Doc. Oh, doctor is stepping in. Eye pokes always uh, very unfortunate. Uh, Bassett, George, you suffered a, a couple of nasty ones over yeah, the years. Yeah, yeah, so you never know. Sometimes you, could, you have to be very careful with this because that's a good thing that the, the doctor is stepping in to make sure that the, for the fighter's safety because, you know, you could have, like, a retina detachment sometime, you know, depending on what's going on, you know. So it's important that the doctor t take a good look at it and uh, f safety first, right? Uh, what of course. Karate he, combat is about. Yeah, from Politnikov's perspective, you know, he's got to be very careful not to, to infer that he can't see at any point because then he'll he'll get no chance and the, the doctor will stop that. As you can see, we're all looking very festive this evening, decked out for the Karate Combat Christmas show. I've got to say, I'm loving the bell, waiting to ring it. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Hey, camera. Hi. <laughs> we even have uh, Santa Claus here. We do, yes. we do indeed. Is We're it take his it daughters? And what's Mrs. Santa Claus going to say? <laughs> well, he does have up to five minutes to recover. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because if you actually take the full... I've never really seen anyone take the full five minutes because it's a huge chunk of time in reality. Yes. Now you think about it, it's like it's either the pelotas or the pelotas in your head <laughs> that you get five minutes for, right? Oh. <laughs> never thought of that. Yeah, so, you know it doesn't look good because I, I remember when I one of my fight I uh, when I got an an eye gouge, an accidental eye gouge. Uh, I I when you rub your eyes, sometimes it, get, it makes it worse. You know, so hope hope is gonna be for the best. But yeah, it looks it looks like it was the the little finger of Rob Buxton. Uh, yeah. When you see a fighter keep rubbing, rubbing his eyes, it, it might be irritated and he, he might irritate it well, even more. So. I mean, look, let's talk about what happens if he can't continue. It's a no contest because we're still in the first round, so we're not rendering a judge's decision. It, it literally will just become a no contest through an accidental eye poke. Uh, it would be extremely unfortunate because it was really shaping up to be a good oh, battle. I think we are going to continue. Nice. 
me know when you're ready. We're good to go? I mean, psychologically, guys, the ready? fighters got to feel a lot of pressure to, you know, get this one back underway. That, that's the thing, you know, you, you don't want to turn the crowd down. Oof. And they're back at it like uh, like nothing happened. Right. Oh, oh Polinikov, oh. big right hand, drops Buxton to the canvas. He's opening up here from a standing position, and that is a TKO yes, for wow. Sasha Polinikov. Wow. What a comeback. Wow. <laughs> yeah, he, he made it fast work. Wow. He said, I can't see, might as well finish it. Yeah. Wow. Hit the one in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say, Rocky. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, we knew this guy was going to be a force in the middleweight division. Wow, immediately connected with that big shot. Boom. That, that was, was it. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, I can't wait to see the flurry there. What was great was, you know, that standing position, just rapid fire. You're not downed if you're against the wall, right? That was still, you know. You know, that's also his MMA experience, right? I mean, ground and pound. Right, good base, standing up tall, yep. throw the strike. Using the reach, here we go, watch like this. Yeah, look at the replay. Boom. Oh, no. wow. That was clean. On the button, right on the jaw. And again, yeah, no, no. a cool one, cool one. Really yeah, and that wall, just keeping that head propped up nicely for him. Now he's pushing himself away, and now the barrage is coming. There we go. Uh, yeah, good, good call. I would call. say, who cross? <laughs> yeah. Good call. Yeah. Boom. Oh. Spun him like a top. Ay, ay, ay. I mean, Buxton, uh, he hung in there, tried to get some sort of guard back, but... Sasha Politnikov, vicious. What, what a comeback, you know, because if you got... Let's say... He, Let's say he would have come, he come back, but his eye is not 100%. Like your, your depth perception is, is affected because if you can't see well from one of your eyes, it's, it's terrible. It's a terrible way to fight. So, wow, it's even... Well, official decision coming your way now. Karate Combat fans, our winner tonight, coming out of the blue corner by TKO, Sasha Palotnikov! Well, your winner by TKO, Sasha Palotnikov, he is up pit side with Leila Machado Garrett. Sasha, fantastic speech to you. Now, nothing more frustrating than an eye poke, but some of us have a little theory back here. That fantastic flurry came straight away as you came back in. We did see you nod at the medic to say you could see, but could you see? And was that flurry because you knew that you were hindered in your eyesight there? Well, I don't know what it is, but almost every one of my fights, I get poked in the eye or kicked in the nuts, so... If there's a way to put me out, they think that's the way. But tonight, I was blurry. As soon as I, I, I got hit in the eye, I couldn't really see. But uh, I'm the Cyclops. But uh, the, the referee and the medics, they gave me enough time to recover, which I really appreciate. I fought in South Carolina, and I had the crowd booing me, and they were rushing me to get back in there. So it was good to give me the time to recover. Amazing promotion, Karate Combat, Florida Athletic Commission, taking care of everything so profe professionally. I'm just happy to compete. I know what an amazing crowd this guy is. This place is the atmosphere. Oh my God. Y'all make this everything for us. Without the fans, this is nothing. But yeah, I, I hope you guys like that performance. I think it's definitely bonus worthy. It's Christmas time. We need that money, baby. Let's go. You were definitely calm and composed under elements of pressure to go back in. You must have felt, should I, shouldn't I? But when you went back in, that power, that flurry, what drove you? Well, I mean, all credit to my opponent. You know, Buxton was, you know, he had me on the ropes a couple times. He hit me with some good shots. But like I said, I have experience. I, my boy Strickland's fighting tonight. That boy smacked me a bunch. So that's why I wasn't put out in that first round. But I just knew I was a bit pissed off that I got poked in the eye. So I just wanted to come out and just put it on him, and that's exactly what I did. Frustrating you seems like not the right thing to do. It's not. What does the future hold for you now? Well, I thought tonight was my job resume with Karate Combat. What you guys think? You think I did a good job? <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm hoping that uh, I get myself into some contender shots. I'd love to fight some of these other middleweights. Who knows, move, maybe even move down to welterweight. 
I just want to be competing as much as possible. Whenever the next card is on, I want my name on there first. February, March, whenever that is. So I'm back in the gym Monday. I got no injuries. Let's go. Thank you very much. Congrats. All right. Wow, that was a really fascinating one. This has been a killer undercard. You know, Layla and I were talking during that, and we saw Sasha there throughout that fight. He, to fight the way he does in the fire requires a serenity, a calmness under pressure. The world we live in is incredibly distracting, and one of the things that's so appealing to a martial artist like Sasha is within that fight, there's no bills, there's no neighbors, there's no trouble, there's nothing. There is only the fight. When his eye was injured, both Layla and I were saying, I don't know if he can see. Suddenly he comes out and he finishes that fight. Highly intelligent, stayed relaxed long enough to find the moment to finish it just in case the eye was damaged. Which leads me to a story. When I was traveling with the great sensei George St. Pierre over there, when he was fighting Michael Bisping, in round three of the fight, George comes up from the fight and he can feel that his head is cut open. Then he attacks mercilessly and finishes George. Now, or finishes Bisping. George, I would like to ask you, did you know you were cut in that moment and realize you had to finish it in case the doctor stopped it? I, I don't know how bad it was until I saw it on TV, but I, I felt the blood coming down, so I knew I was in a hurt, but I don't know the gravity of it. No, I didn't. I just fought uh, the best I could, and it turns out to be, to, to be my way. That, that's the beautiful thing for a martial artist, that feeling your way through the fight. George did it on that night under whatever circumstances or whatever level of awareness he had to that injury, and Sasha did it here tonight. Martial artistry, combat, is so much more than punches and kicks. It's a living in the moment and letting the fight unfold and then figuring out just the moments to be water, just the moments to flow, and just the moments to crash. That was a wonderful performance, Sasha. It's one we'll remember. Us. Yes, thank you, Robin Black. Of course, Santa is in the house. He has got a lot of presents next to him. If you want some presents under your tree, of course, the Karate Combat Store is available. Want to wear the same gear? Our world-class Karateka rock inside the pit. Buy it now at store.karate.com. Bass, what do you want to go steal from the store? You're pretty good with uh, plugging those gloves there. Yeah, you know, I have all that stuff. <laughs> I, that's, that's what happens when you work for the company, you know? Yeah. You, you got all the gear. Uh, let's have a quick chat about that fight we've just seen. Maybe we'll get some replays uh, of the fight rolled in again. Um, let's t talk first about uh, Rob Buxton. Look, he was, he was pretty composed, but as you mentioned, George, he was swinging and missing, and that, that head movement from Politnikov causing him some trouble. Yeah, well, well, you, you, it's, it's always better to not touching the punch instead of blocking it, to not just simply being there. You know, and, and I feel like Buxton was guarding a little bit too much of it, like a boxing style. Uh, and, and with those small gloves, you know, it's hard. Especially when you're in close range and you're in a punch punching exchange, you don't want to stay there too long because the longer you're there, the more you heighten the odds uh, in the favor of getting punched. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's, a, it's a risk. It's a risk to play, you know? Yeah, Bass, uh, Sasha Politnikov, you know, we mentioned he'd had some, some big fight experience before. He, he kind of done a lot of professional sports all over the world. And we knew he was going to be a formidable character, but that was impressive. Very impressive. The way he was moving out of the way, it was not like he was standing and moving. Like He was just going nice and relaxed. It was not even up to speed, so to say, because he knew he was outside the range. And that talks about the... the, the, the the focus that he has in there, the, the, the ringmanship, the pitmanship, whatever you want to call it, he just knows exactly where he is and what space and what distance. Yeah, and of course, uh, this is a really interesting middleweight division. Our champion might have been watching that pretty eagerly. Ooh, that would be a big one. That will be a big fight between those two guys. Oosh. Not, to, uh, not to, to, you know, put too many thoughts in the company's head, but I'll take it if you can do it. <laughs> yeah. uh, we've been teasing, of course, our co-main event is coming up a little bit later. Owen Chelmia uh, taking on Jesus Lopez. I believe we've got some footage for you guys of those two gentlemen arriving here to the backstage area at Universal Studios Orlando, Florida. That's going to be thrilling. Hopefully, well... Let's see the, the, <laughs> the walk. I want to see the walk, you know, the, the, right. the confidence walk. Yes. Well, that's well both these guys the hero been, shot. Yeah, both these guys have been looking tremendously confident uh, coming into this one. Jesus Lopez, you know, he wants that belt. He, but, but, and he can get it. 
this guy is sometimes, you know, he fought. Okay, he's three and three, and people go three and three. Yeah, but this is the thing with him, you know. If he's on his own, and the, the the amount of opponents that he fought, he fought really great opponents, and that's what he said actually uh, in the interviews as well. He said, "Yeah, he's good, but I fought way better opponents than he fought." So he comes in with a with whole Venezuela behind or Peru behind him, you know. Everybody's supporting this guy. There's bars full just right. watching this fight. I think he's going to do really well. And you never fight the same fighter twice. You know, every fight changes you for the best or sometimes for the worst. Some experience uh, allowed you to, to improve, you know? So he's not the same guy that he used to be, you know? And he's, he believes that he, he's at his, the best of his, uh, the be at his best, he's in his prime, and uh, he needs to, to be, <laughs> uh, because he's got a worthy opponent, you know? Yeah, we'll talk about it a bit later, because confidence playing a, a massive part in this one. Of course, uh, main event, we have well, we've all been looking forward to it for quite some time, but uh, Rafael Gaev is taking on Raymond the Real Deal Daniels. I believe we do have some footage of these guys arriving soon. There we go. Yeah, there we go. There is Rafael Agaev arriving here to the backstage area at Universal Studios Orlando, Florida. That is Raymond the Real Deal Daniels. Uh, and Bass, uh, he's such a unique character to talk to. Look how chilled he is here. That's what he's like the whole time. It's it's really kind of weird. I've never seen anybody that confident. The way he talks, he says, I'm not fighting an opponent. Then below me. I'm just way, the way better fighter. He says, today, he's going to show us tonight a new bicycle kick he was talking about. <laughs> and he said, what is that? He says, I'm jumping up and he's going, ta, ta, ta, ta, ta, ta. I go, he says, I don't know if I'm going to do it with the sound effects or without the sound effects. And, but that's, you know, he decides that at that moment and from him, you know, I was already talking about with the 300 or 720 punch. He would jump up in the air to make a 720 turn to kick his opponent, but he realized his opponent was closer by. So in the air, he decided to make it into a punch instead of a kick. That is freaking crazy. Yeah, I, I, I had the opportunity to work in his corner for uh, for a kickboxing fight, and he, that's how he is, you know, naturally. He's very, very relaxed. He loves to to listen to music before, and and he's, you know, that's that's how he is. That that that's when he's fighting at his best, you know. But when he's relaxed, and he's he's just an incredible sense of creativity as a fighter. So he can come out tonight with things that we haven't seen before. Yeah, you're gonna see him dance his way down to the ring. The guy is a literal video game character. Uh, that is coming up later, along with the rest of our main card. Four more bouts coming your way this evening at Karate Combat 37. Join us very shortly when we're gonna be back here at Universal Studios Orlando, Florida. Most. Ben Ağayev Rafael Mahroğlu, ben Azerbaycanlıyım. Karatenin sevgim benim 6-7 yaşlarında hayatta yani yüksede. Ve Burusli'nin filmlerine bakarmışam. Bakmayarak ki Burusli konfi ile məşğul olub. Bakı şehrinde məşlerime başladım. Sonundan yığma komandayla karateni sevdim. Karate benim hem işim hem hayatımdır. Demiyorlar ki, ben her gün ve bir neyse defa məşler edirəm. Eğer zalda məşk edemirəmsə, mən adətən Bakıda dağ üstü park sayılan bir yer var, orada məşklərimi eləyirəm. Sözümün yaxşı mənasında Bakı şəhəri hündürdən izləyirsəm, ayağın altında şəhər görsənir. Ona görə hər zaman orada olanda özümü çempionluğa doğru hiss edirəm. In 2018, when we introduced the league to the public, Rafael Agaev was one of the first guy who ever fought in the karate combat pit. He was there to fight Dionisio Gustavo. Dionisio Gustavo and I, we were in the beginning of our hearts, but we were in a lot of dialogue, and I have a lot of respect for him. A guy who could be the best karate guy ever. That's a lot of pressure to carry to that pit. We know that Idman is a friend of us, and we are in the middle of our hearts. We are in the middle of our hearts. The way he moves himself, it is the blend of artistry with athleticism, high athletic platform, and an incredible artistic expression. Agaev fought full contact with us in 2018. Then he started focusing on the Olympics. He won world championships and then went to the Olympics and he came back with a beautiful silver medal.
bir mart ayında benim 37 yaşım olacak. Demek olar ki, evvelki karate növündə bütün medalları elde eləmişim. Mən düşünürüm ki, indi daha ağırlayam, neyi necə eləməyimi, gücü harada istifadə eləməyimi bilirəm. Kim olursa karşımda, kim olursa. Rəqib olarak mən onu sayıram və yuxarıdan aşağı baxmıram. İdmandır, idmanda hər bir şey ola bilər. Mən karate kombata kaydımağımın məqsədi o idi ki, evvelki karate de zərbini vurub çekirdin. İndi isə burada kontakt karate sayılır, yəni burada əsil mən istediğim işdir. This is fighting. This is hand-to-hand -hand combat. Put it all on the table, express yourself freely, naked from the chest up against another man in front of millions of people to see this. Ama ehtiyatlı olmaq lazımdır, tam özümə inanıram. Hemen ona e, cəzmək için gedmirəm, ben ona qalib olmaq için gedirəm. Can the Olympian Agaev deal with the pressure? All eyes are on him. He just mixes up his striking so well. Yeah, and he has to watch out because Gustavo, wow, nice there. Beautifully moved to the side mount, and now he will rain down some punches. Yeah, like, whoa, nice. Very Inside nice leg throw. trip there. Nice, yeah, but his opponent saw it coming, lifted the leg. And he's good with this, with takedowns. He, he's, he really takes advantage of using his opponent's body weight and just slamming him down to the mat throw. Very nice, that's why he's doing it. Multiple time world and European champion Rafael Agayev. Training and preparation to stay consistently at that high level. He, he says that's what he appreciates the most about his career. You know, he's been in karate for 30 years and. <laughs> parried left hand right up into the eyes. But, uh, you know, accidents do happen occasionally. Ooh. That's a good catch to the kick, and again, capitalizing on it is Agaev. He's got to watch out for the up kicks. That was nice. His body shots, everything was just a break. Huge shots from Agaev here. He's got to keep himself alive. Oh, sprawling. This needs to get broken here. Rafael Agaev comes forward, throws everything Ooh. in these shots. He's trying to take his head off now. Oh, Ooh. huge high ride. The shot lands, a guy follows up, but that's gonna do it. So Rafael Agayev gets the job done on his return to Karate Combat. Uh, he said, you know what I mean, right? He said, yeah, <laughs> he's so calling, you know what I mean. They're calling across, they're just saying, let's go, you go down. A trilogy, 10 years in the making. This is the second of those rounds. There's oh, the good duck under from Agayev and immediately trying to pop up and earn himself some ground and pound time. Oh, Ooh, that was nice. nice. Fake to the head kick from Agaev. Good blitz from Agaev. Almost eats the up kick. Trying to again earn himself some ground and pound time. And look at this shot from the oh, Azerbaijani. Davy Don is covering. Oh, good nice. shot from Agaev oh, yeah. again. Donner eats a big left. Closing bell here. Rafael, the Panther, Agayev! My name is Raymond Daniels. In fact, my middle name is Lee, named after the great Bruce Lee. I'm a seventh degree black belt in martial arts. I've been training martial arts since I can remember. Second generation martial artist through my father, Frank Daniels. He was uh, my first instructor. He started as a karate cat. Then there was almost nothing to win anymore. So he started going Thai box, kickbox, and let's do mixed martial arts. And now he goes full circle back to full contact karate this time. My choice for karate combat was basically like a no brainer for the simple fact of at my heart's core, I am a martial artist. Keyword, an artist. I love karate. And now I'm gonna be able to show the full array of techniques that I'm capable of. You guys are gonna see that he's, he's light years ahead of, of anybody in the striking world. When you speak to Raymond Daniels, he has giant confidence. My goal is to be the GOAT, the greatest of all time. He always likes to test the limits and push to see how far he can go. It's so amazing to have a life partner, a wife, 
uh, that is supportive of what I do. Every aspect of my life, things are already taken care of before I even have to ask. I'm really excited about having the opportunity to fight in the pit. First uh, fight was just me getting my feet wet, understanding my canvas and what I was fighting. Yeah, it was a lot of energy spent, especially in the first round. Our winner and a unanimous decision in the blue corner. This was his debut at Karate Combat. Everybody seemed to be pretty entertained by my last fight. He made highlights, but he couldn't finish his fight. My neck still yells at me from time to time from trying to challenge the pit head on. He was jumping and he hit his head on the ground. We were worried he's going to knock himself out. I wasn't happy with my performance. I know what I'm capable of. And I'm capable of a lot more than that. The things he does in the ring are things you only see in, in action movies or video games. There's no other professional fighter out there doing the stuff he's doing. I'm looking forward to showing everybody what I look like in my true form. I mean, I've got, to th I've got to try and put some words to what's happening here, but I'm mesmerized already. His footwork is something else. Yes, he's got an incredible timing. He's, bl he's blitzing. Blitzing forward, It's incredible. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, beautiful good kick. Knee up. It's so, it's so unchoreographed. Oh, you just don't know what's coming. And he's doing a lot of spinning, a lot of, a lot of very powerful uh, motion, you know? Haddad goes to work oh, here, and that's a huge left kick to the liver. That was a good one. That was a good one. Oh, and, and he is hurt. Big flurry. Oh, he's gonna I think, try that, I think that was a, maybe a mistake from Raymond. He should have kept punching Minas. He, he might have been able to stop the fight. I'm sure he does also want the knockout bonus rather than just the TKO stoppage, oh, though. Oh, look at that. And that's so smart after a body kick going to the head because the opponent is attacking, uh, defending the body now. Daniel has got incredible kicks. You know, his kicks is his bread and butter. Another call. That's a nice punch there. Three. Boom! Look at that. When you see Raymond Daniel fighting, fights, things can, things are are going so quick. It's it's just incredible. So we have got a unanimous decision has been rendered by the judges. A lot of work done by Raymond Daniels. Hello and welcome to Karate Combat. This is KC37 and today's main card is packed full of gifts for you on this Christmas special. In our co-main event, our current bantamweight world champion, Owen Shalnia, will be looking to defend his title against a purposeful Jesus Lopez. And in our main event, the one everyone is talking about, Rafael Agaev is looking to fight Raymond Daniels. That is for the interim title, but really, it's all about legacy. Raymond Daniels versus Rafael Agaev. One from American karate, one from sports karate. Raymond Daniels is an all-around martial artist and elite striker. Rafael Agaev, a five-time world karate champion, 11-time European champion, and an Olympic silver medalist. Two lifelong karate cuts, the greatest in their prospective disciplines, meet in the pit for the interim welterweight championship. I'm definitely gonna put every lesson you've ever learned your entire life and make you rethink some things. Özüm nam çok azdı. I'm the top of the food chain. Nam çok danışanları sustradılar bir adam. There can only be one goat. This fight isn't necessarily for another win. It's for legacy.
Welcome back to Universal Studios Orlando, Florida. This is Karate Combat 37, the Christmas show. Josh Palmer alongside Bass Rutan and, of course, George St. Pierre bringing you, yeah, bringing you all the action tonight. Welcome back. We've got four fights left on our main card this evening. Uh, guys, we've had a great uh, event so far. We've had some fantastic preliminary bouts. Fantastic indeed. I mean, two finishes. That was great. I mean, we saw some great head movement. We saw some great kicking. We saw pretty much we saw everything that we yeah. love about Karate Combat. I want to see the knee knockout and I want to see a ground and pound knockout. So let's pray. Yeah, of course, we've got uh, four fights coming your way. Main event tonight is Raymond The Real Deal. Daniels taking on Rafael Agaev. Of course, bantamweight belt on the line. Owen Chelmier taking on Jesus The Beast Lopez. Gabriel Varga, very tough Canadian, taking on Frenchman Tommy Azuz. We're going to open up, uh, which we'll talk about in a few moments, with Samuel Erickson uh, taking on uh, Tarek Khalifi. Guys, uh, we always like to bring in our pit side analyst, Mr. Robin Black, to give a little bit of flavor, but we do like to challenge him because he can be very verbose sometimes. So, Bass, we, we gave him a minute last time. You think that's fair again? <laughs> yeah, that's fair because this guy keeps on talking. You know, decorum. He needs to focus on his decorum. That's bodily expressions. Robin Black, you out there, sir? <laughs> I am here, guys. Wait a second. I think I've got the challenge. Literally getting people excited about the beauty of martial arts in a single minute, that is what I do. You want me to do four fights in one minute? Challenge accepted. Get that clock ready and get that video ready and hit me with it. All right, four fights in one minute. Samuel Erickson against Tarek Khalifi. Samuel is creative. He will color outside the lines. Tarek Khalifi wants to come in and make it about confidence, make it about pressure. Tommy Azuz is a pure karateka, linear strikes, moving and coming in and out, but he is facing Samuel Vargas, a cerebral martial artist. Somebody's Wait able to innovate in real time. That co-main event, Owen Chelmia against Jesus Lopez. Chelmia is a brilliant champion, always changing, and Jesus Lopez is aggressive, intense. He is a visceral martial artist. Our main event, of course, is one of the great fights of all time in all combat sports. The greatest of all time, Rafael Agaev will use his in and out striking. <laughs> he will use his timing to try to stop this man. The real deal, Raymond Daniels, who manipulates space and time with his fluid martial artistry. Four breakdowns in one minute Enjoy the hostilities, my friends. Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa. excuse me. Two You're a little bit over, over there, sir. Two seconds Wait over. a second. Somebody's messing. Somebody's sleeping on the truck with that <laughs> clock. I think I nailed it. Four breakdowns in one minute. Oh. Uh, what, that C minus, Bass. C minus? Oh, yeah, yeah, I think. C. Well, okay, a B minus minus. <laughs> <laughs> he started a little bit late, so I give it, I give it, I think he did it. I think he did it, yes. Oh. George St. Pierre, the Canadian homer. <laughs> Appreciate you, Sensei uh, George. Just bailing you oh, out there. Uh, of course, there's lots of celebrities in the house here tonight. Let's go ahead and find Alex Wendling, who is somewhere down pit side, with Mike Perry. Yes, I am with Mike Perry, and I just saw you a few seconds ago doing a little dance, getting down with the crowd. Tell me about the energy here tonight. Hey, Karate Combat is pretty lit, bro. I love the setup, I love the crowd, the energy, and uh, I love the fights. Speaking of those fights, do you have one that you're particularly excited about tonight? Oh man, Erickson Samuel and the main event with Raymond Daniels, they both look like they're in for really tough fights. I'm looking forward to seeing how these uh, attributes stack up against each other and we get to see that in competition tonight. You know, it makes me wonder how I would fare against these karate kickers with my boxing style. 100%. We have a lot of action coming tonight. And we do have a little background of you and Samuel Erickson hitting pads together. So I'm sure you're going to have a friend in him. And for more on that matchup, here's a little story about Tarek Khalifi and er Samuel Erickson. Thank you, man. I'm called Khalifi Tarek. I'm born in Algeria and I live in Paris. J'ai grandi dans le karaté depuis l'âge de 3 ans. Mon père, moi et toute ma famille nous a mis dans le sport de combat, enfin les arts martiaux, karaté. On a tous été médaillés en Algérie, comme on a tous été médaillés en France. Dis-lui que mon rêve depuis tout petit, c'était d'aller dans le plus haut niveau des sports de combat. Et au jour d'aujourd'hui, j'y suis et je pense que j'ai réalisé un rêve et je vais aller réaliser la victoire aussi. 
je, je suis prêt depuis ma naissance, je suis, depuis que je suis sorti du ventre de ma mère, j'ai toujours été prêt, que ce soit pour la combat et pour tout ce que j'ai affronté dans la vie. Prêt. Même si je perds ou je gagne, je serai toujours prêt. J'ai rien à prouver à personne. Je... Moi, ce qui compte pour moi, c'est la ceinture. Et celui qui a la ceinture, c'est le Brésilien. Donc le Brésilien garde bien la ceinture au chaud et j'arrive avec toi. I was born in South Korea. As fate would have it, I was adopted as a baby and I began my new life in Sweden with my family. I am incredibly close to my family, especially my grandmother. They all supported me in my choices and I laugh because I never enjoyed the competition of it all. I love the training. In addition to my training, I began to incorporate weight and gym training and each medium complemented each other so well. I was gaining both strength and muscle So in 2017, I did the most natural thing for young martial artists to do. I signed myself up for a local MMA fight and was matched with a top-ranked fighter in Sweden. I ended up losing that fight and took a step back from MMA. But I didn't want people to think this was the end of the road for me. I had to refocus and my focus went to sharing my knowledge on my Instagram page. My goal was to show that I'm a great martial artist and that the chokeout didn't take me out. One day, a video I posted went viral. It caught fire. Before I knew it, people I never thought in a million years even knew I existed started talking about me. Joe Rogan, Conor McGregor, it was insane in the best way. People recognized me not as someone who got beat in the cage, but as a great martial artist. When I originally started to work with Karate Combat, My goal was to come on to do reaction videos, but life had another twist and turn for me. My original debut was supposed to be in November of 2020, but as we all know, the world had other plans with the pandemic. We were all affected in our own very personal ways and had to quickly learn to change and to adapt. I needed to be there for my dear grandmother who fell ill, coincidentally, during the pandemic. I am thankful for the delay because I was able to be with her before she passed which was the hardest thing I could imagine that came true. There was no way I was able to focus and train and get in that pit with so much weight on my shoulders and sadness in my heart. But I was home and my family were here for each other and slowly, somehow, we crawled out of this darkness and began to heal. I look different on things in terms of how quickly things can change. It might not be forever or even tomorrow, so I'm just doing my best at the moment to make sure I can be proud of what I do and, and who I am. We have got a debutante tonight, a guy with a lot of pressure on him. Wow! I'm here because through life's twists and turns, through hardship and hard work, I've learned to never stop working and to never give up. And I can only hope that I can inspire others with my story. What a fun bout to open the rest of our main card tonight. Uh, Bas, let's talk very briefly about uh, Tarek Khalifi, uh, French Algerian, a lot of sport karate experience, but but like a lot of those uh, French trained fighters that we we see, very tough, very durable, very accomplished. But questions over perhaps the full contact nature of their experience. Yeah, we're going to find out tonight. He, well, he says he's very excited. Listen, this this fight has been making in the making for four months, right? If he decided four months ago to start kickboxing on the side, I think he's going to do really well. He says people are going to see things that they've never seen before. He's very excited to be here. He will win. He will win big. And he's going to leave an impression. Yeah, George, uh, his opponent tonight, Samuel Erickson, you know, he's not just got the weight of, like, his personal goals with fighting. Uh, he's got this huge social media following. Yeah. That's a bit of extra pressure for him. Yeah, they, they both got uh, a lot of uh, pressure because they... They put a lot on the line, and they, especially uh, Khalifi, he talks a lot, you know. So when you talk a lot, you, you need to back <laughs> it up. So it adds uh, an emotion element to the fight, which makes it more interesting, of course. Yeah, there's been quite a bit of back and forth. We're going to settle the grudge match now. This is Tarek Khalifi and Samuel Erickson. <laughs> Samuel Erickson is probably one of the fastest guy on Instagram. The things that he does, everybody believes it's sped up. You know, there's nobody that fast. But he's really that fast. I'm very explosive, so I really think my opponent will have a problem handling that. Erickson already fought a fight at Karate Combat. 
A bit surprised. A little bit surprised. <laughs> he became the winner, but a lot of people thought that he might have lost that fight. He said, no, I became a winner, and now I'm back to prove my point that I'm a really good fighter and not only a social media influencer. What I really want to do is not to make this fight as close as last time. So he's the winner, he's the loser, that's it. We've got Tarek Khalifi here, who is a newcomer in Karate Combat, also a little bit of a social influencer with his 100,000 followers. J'ai grandi dans le karaté depuis l'âge de 3 ans. Mon rêve depuis tout petit, c'était d'arriver au plus haut niveau de karaté. Et au jour d'aujourd'hui, j'y suis et je vais aller réaliser la victoire. He's a member of the French national karate team, so we know he's good. But does he translate into full contact? There is a big difference going into the first full contact fight and you fight someone that is actually really wanting to hurt you and, and knock you out. This guy has been challenging already Samuel Erickson a couple of times. He said that he accepted the combat, and after he refused the combat two times de suite, a real karate car refused never a combat. That's not true. If I don't want to fight, I don't fight. <laughs> if I want to fight, I fight. For the moment, he signed the contract, so chapeau à lui et and good chance à lui. Let's go! This time, a knockout or TKO. Il n'y aura pas de décision d'arbitre. Of course, he can beat me, but I just. I don't think he will. Samuel, j'espère que tu es prêt à me KO, mais je pense pas pour me KO, il faut me tuer. Tarek, you got what you wanted, and I hope you show up because I'm showing up to win. Je lui crois qu'il m'a pas tué, il pourra pas me gagner. C'est ça que tu sais pas, mon pote. And even the elves are pumped up here tonight. Fighting out of the blue corner, <laughs> representing Algeria, Tarek Khalifi! So welcome to Karate Combat, Tarek TK Khalifi fighting out of France. He is Algerian by birth, storming down to the cage here. Debut for him tonight. Uh, he's got a, a couple of teammates we've seen before, though, the likes of Davy Donna and, of course, Ilias Mardi. Very excited to see this young man. It's a very interesting test for him in Samuel Erickson. It's, uh, he talks a lot. Now it's time to back and it his up. Opponent and we'll see. Fighting tonight exactly. out of the red corner, representing Sweden, Samuel Erickson. And that's why I never talk crap about my opponent, because <laughs> I know I have to m make my words come true. <laughs> and it's a lot of pressure you put on yourself. So uh, Samuel Eriksson, he's returning to Karate Combat. Saw him, of course, once before in his debut uh, last year. Picked up a, a kind of surprise split decision win over Alberto Ramirez. Wasn't quite able to get uh, the volume of kicks he wanted in that bout. Got caught up in the clinch a few times, but got the win there, looking to move on and really test himself, show that he's not just all about social media and making flashy videos. Gonna have a little bit of a height differential to overcome, though. Tell the tape here for the blue corner, Tarek Khalifi, 27 years old. This is gonna be his first fight for about six months. He's been training pure karate since he was at three years old. His father uh, is, of course, his coach, Omar Khalifi, here with him tonight. Who's a character, by the way? Very <laughs> funny guy. Very funny guy. Uh, Samuel Erickson, you can see a little bit older, a little bit shorter, 30 years old, 1-0 is his record. Hailing from Sweden, he said he's really got stability in his life now, feels very good mentally, very good physically, and uh, is really looking to just prove everything to himself. Look at Santa there, he's like... Wow. Uh, so he, he, he, has he been drinking? It's a death stare. <laughs> it's a death stare. <laughs> wow. Oh, blimey. Oh, Miss Santa, I don't know. <laughs> she might be needed driving home, flying home. Yes. Fighters, it's that time. Time to enter the pit. Okay. Uh, your referee for this one is Sam Amidi. Karate Combat 37 is sponsored by Gameful. Use their customized Gameful system featuring clean ingredients paired with complimentary one on one registered dietary support to enhance your routine. Sign up now at Gameful.com. Get 40% off when you use the code KC37 at checkout. Boom, question mark kick, oh. front kick. Yeah, his kicks are fast. Yeah, Kelly start very hard. Yeah, but Samuelson needs to close the distance. He cannot let those legs fly. He's the shorter guy, so he needs to fight in close and use his boxing. 
and knees from the clinch, but then in the clinch, watch out for the knee to the head. A little bit of a question mark kick there, not able to get up and over that lead guard. Tweets coming in thick and fast, sold out at Karate Combat in Florida. Thank you, Santa Adam, of course, referring to Adam Kovac, our league president. Get involved on social media at Karate Combat on all platforms. Of course, the Karate Combat archives are available completely for free on YouTube as well. I think actually that uh, Ericsson is doing a great job uh, by just letting him kick, letting him kick, you know, get him tired. Yeah, he's uh, pacing himself. Uh, you know, we talk about emo the emo emotion side of the mental, mental game. Some guys like to trash talk because it gives them no choice, so they have to back it up. You know, so, some, some guys, they use that in a way Ooh. to propel themselves. And the hook, X kick. I was just going to say, Bass, that's going to make you very happy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they are connected with a little short left. Yeah, good work from Ericsson, pressuring around the pit here. Hasn't yeah. thrown in too much volume yet, though. Yeah, but he's smart. He's playing a smart game right now. He's just feeling him out. There oh! oh! Big right hand from Samuel Ericsson. Back to his feet for some ground and pound. That five count's going to come in quick. Oh, and Tarek Khalifi. Woo! Anxious moments for him. Welcome to full contact. Right. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, and he's still uh, he's still uh, dizzy. That's it, and he's... Oh, oh. chin up, Ericsson teeing off here. Right, right. One minute and five seconds. Yeah, wobbly, tries that front kick. He's got to watch out, oh, Ericsson still, also. Oh, still, big left. He's still hurt, he's still hurt. He haven't recovered yet. No, he's so. trying to make it look like he's still there, but uh, Ericsson faints, big right hand bomb. Like you said uh, earlier... Uh, uh, oh, oh he left hook catches him on the way in. Just well, get back up. Maybe sometime a good idea to go to the body, then to come back to the head, you know? Well, Ericsson, this is very different from the first time we saw him. Ericsson needs to go in now for the kill. He needs to wrap it up. Yes. 30 seconds. The support team might, might not come back if he, if, he, if he misses. Yeah, he's caught him with the right, he's caught him with the left. Right, right, right, right, turn right. Well, interesting. This is a very different uh, clinch situation from the uh, Ramirez fight. Ramirez was all about the throws. Halifi, possibly not so. Oh, again, the right. Again. Oh, misses. That's a power differential as well. He's just bulldozed him down to the ground. Right, right. Back of the head, Samuel. Okay. What a good round for Samuel Eriksson. Good. Yep, and you know what? He was good. He was composed because he knew that, you know, if he can't put him away, you know, he's going to lo load out all his energy, which is not a good thing, of course. Look at that punch, man. Wow. Yeah, that was the first right that dropped him. Hopefully, we'll see the left as well. Boom. Oh, that's going to be hard for it to come back. Now, we, we, we're going to see what kind of... Uh, what kind of... Uh, heart uh, Khalifi is made of, you know what I mean? Because he says in French in his interview that if he, if he, his opponent, Ericsson, want to put him away, he literally need to kill him. But... Uh, He's coming close. Yes. <laughs> that was like... Let's that listen was very close to a stoppage, you know? Let's listen into the corner of Samuel Ericsson here. Yeah, if I was Ericsson, I would attack the body now. We'll never expect that. Yeah, it's slow off the stool is... Uh, Tarek Khalifi trying to buy himself a few, oh, oh a few he, extra uh, seconds here. And he uh, a little bit still unsteady let's go, let's on the go. way down. And buying some more time, tying his belt here. Gee. Yeah, I am. Uh, that's an uh, old, old, you, old trick. Let's go. Yeah. Well, that's why they have belt loops here, so they don't fall down. We just usually let them uh, come out here. But another three on the clock. See if Ericsson's patient again or if he just tries to turn the tempo up. He is still dangerous with his kick because oh, a, yeah. a kick is, is, is a very powerful weapon. You know, you don't if you if you clip the head of your opponent with a kick, sometimes it's a knockout, but I think he's still hurt. I think he's still hurt. If yeah. I look at his body language, he doesn't move with as much as confidence that is, as he used to. No, he's been hit, you know. It's it, it, it, probably never experienced that before. A big Punch like that. Ericsson should push now. Well, and the follow-up after having to immediately try and regard, try and regain composure. Definitely had to uh, backstep a little bit there. Ericsson needs to step inside the reach of the legs. And needs to go. And Khalifi needs to keep him outside. 
Cannot let him come close. He's trying to reach with his uh, lead leg. Khalifi uses lead leg a little bit like a like a jab, you know, to to to uh, control the distance. Well, switching stance here, back to orthodox. Ericsson again being. It's good, I like the feints. Yeah, very composed. That's a smart, look at that, that's some powerful kicking there. Yeah, wow. well, I mean, look, you do the kind of things that he does in his videos, you've got power, you've got explosiveness, you've got dynamism. So you work it, so you work it. Smart what Ericsson's doing now, faking it, pointing at it, faking it. Oh, and he gets caught behind the ear. You always talk about that pass. The oh, right my God. From what a, what a what? 180 degree. Oh my God, what but a 180 degree turn. Oh my God. But did it connect full? Because I didn't think it landed full. Oh no, let's see. Well, Ericsson back up very quickly. Let's see if that makes him weary now. I mean, look, it only takes one significant motion like that to, to, to win the round, you know? So there's only a minute left here. It's true, because like it is now, he's, Khalifi is winning the round just right. with, with, with that punch. It yeah. could be all square. I mean, you know, the margin with which you win the round, unless you put it into the realm of a 10-8, you know, it's going to be a, it's gonna be pretty even. Erickson. 30 seconds, Ericsson needs to get in there Yes, if he wants to finish it. Yeah, he's been good pushing forward, nice little lead hook there. Oh, there we go, right again. again. Didn't quite land, kind of rolled with it, did Khalifi. Let's go. You can't fight Khalifi in a kicking range. You need to, to, to, to close the distance and fight him in a punching range. Oh, that was a beautiful throw. All right, 1-1, one, one, I guess. Yeah, second round in the books there. You keep Bas Rutten immediately saying we're probably all square in this one. What do we think uh, as we get some of the replays here, guys? Who's going to have the, the stamina moving into this next round? I, I, I want to see the, the, the, the knockout if, if, it was, if it was connecting. Oh. Yeah, it was the top of the head. Yes. Yep. So that's kind of a whiplash effect little thing, I guess. Yeah, and this was a, a nice right hand. I mean, it did land. Luckily, Halifi was kind of rolling with it, trying to take some of that momentum away. And this was the takedown at the end. Beautiful catch of the kick in the sweep. That was very nicely done, yes. You see Samuel Eriksson wearing a little bit of damage there on the face, perhaps. But Halifi, last time out, was very slow to get up from the stool. Let's see if uh, it's any different this time. I think it will be. I think he recouped. And especially, you know, when he landed that punch, you know, with a little bit more confidence, he's back in the game. Kelly's style is much less economical than Ericsson because he used a lot of kicks, a lot of movement. Uh, Ericsson is go, more let's economical. Go, let's go, let's so go. we'll going see how it's going to play out in the third right, round. You ready? You ready? Let's go. Touch of gloves underway. Final three minutes on the clock here. Tarek Khalifi in the white pants, black pants for Samuel Eriksson. Every time Eriksson threw a punch, it connected, pretty much. Yeah, very measured and judicious with how he doled those out. Yeah, Eriksson needs there to get go. into punching range. Khalifi, in, I believe, in a kicking Ooh. range. Oh, another one. Nice left from Ericsson. Nice yeah, got to target those kicks a little bit cleaner. Switching stance is the Algerian. Oh, the hook! Just nicked over the top. Did he? Is he limping a little bit, Khalifi, or not, from the oh, last yeah, kick? Did you see? Much so. Yeah, it's that was that last kick. Yeah. He's switching stands because of it. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. Oh, was, wow. It was the calf kick. I mean, yeah, it, as you said, it, it could have... Perinol nerves, maybe, is numb. Yeah, he numbed his legs. Yep. Yeah, switching oh. stands, oh, yeah. visibly yeah. limping. Yep. Oh. Yep, that's it. Well, that is going to be an injury. And yeah, Tarek yeah. Khalifi can't stay on his feet any longer. That, Good stoppage from the referee there. Yeah, that could have been a fibia break, breakage. Oh, the little yeah, ball like in the that, shin, behind I mean, the it's, shin. It's clearly substantial yeah. damage, isn't it? Yeah. Because that was a hard kick, and he, he acted like he, he didn't feel it. But boy, 
It did some damage, so yeah, that might be a break there. Uh, hopefully we're going to have a replay coming in for you. Well, let's have a look here. See what we can see. Well, the left didn't do it. Oh, oh he rolled his ankle. Yeah. He rolled oh, his ankle. Oh, that was it. Okay. Yeah. I thought maybe he rolled it getting off the wall, but it was... Uh, oh, yes. Oh, and then back the other way as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's like Krokop. Remember that when right. he went down? But, but foot? maybe... UFC 80. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the damage happened before, because remember he received the kit. He got kick, kick in the leg, so maybe yeah. his leg was numb, and that happened. So I, I'm curious to see if it's because of the kick before. Yeah, because it was a hard kick too. It was, it was, and right in the ner where the perineal nerves is. Sometimes it numbs your legs and your foot, it becomes kind of uh, dead. And you don't, you don't, you lost the feeling of your, where you put your, when you're step, stepping in. Wow. Well, Samuel Erickson, very happy. Yeah, he should. <laughs> Moving to Gothenburg, what he did so he had more yeah, training partners, it. training partners, was definitely a good move for him. Great performance. Yeah, Samuel Eriksson, you know, he, he was very interesting in... <laughs> Uh, the interviews, you know, we kind of asked what his long-term plan was, and he really did just kind of give off the vibes that he was fighting for himself and, and not much else. And he really did uh, did prove something to himself there. Uh, good show of respect. They did have a bit of back and forth, hyping it up a little bit for social media, but perhaps a, an underlying tinge of animosity. That's the good thing about fighting, right? After they fought, everybody made up again, friends again. How cool is that? <laughs> it's like the early days. Yes. Go to the bar, you know, leave the weapons aside, just beat the crap out of each other, and then drink a beer together. I remember my mom always told me, like, violence doesn't settle uh, conflict. I mean, I think she's wrong sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> she is. She is. I think it, it, it, it does uh, settle conflict. <laughs> Not always in a good way, but... Well, let's, uh, we've got excellent uh, expert medical attention here, of course, at Karate Combat. And uh, Tarek Khalifi has been seen in the pit. He's obviously going to go backstage and get that reviewed properly, possibly a hospital visit to get an X-ray. Oh, he wants to lift him up. Don't do that. <laughs> let's uh, head down into the middle of the pit here and get the official decision. Karate Combat fans, our winner tonight, coming out of the red corner by TKO, Samuel Erickson! Good sportmanship. Yeah. You know, they talked before, you know, but to, to, to promote the fight, and now it's over. It's a good good sport, sport, sportmanship. You know what Khalifi said that also? He said, listen, after the fight, I'm 100% sure I'm going to hug him. Yeah. You know, who ma no matter who wins. Exactly. That's what that's what martial art is. You know, that's what karate is. You know? So, Tarek Khalifi's going to head off, get his medical attention. Samuel Erickson is going to head off and grab a word with Layla. Turn this way. Don't Yeah. <laughs> Don't fall backwards, that's the first thing that we say. Um, Samuel, I think good? today's the day that you have proved the doubters wrong. I never proved doubters wrong, they just come up with something else now. So, I, But I'm happy and I hope you are happy too. Thank you so much for coming. This was a, a, great, a great thing. You were talking to me ahead of this fight about how different your training camp was versus the last fight. Yep. How different was the fight for you versus the last fight? Um, this guy, he's very, uh, sorry, this guy, uh, Tarek, is, he's very tall. So when I stand here and he stood over there, I was like, damn, that guy is tall, you know? Because on the stare downs, we are kind of looking down and up. But one thing that I knew, and I think you, I think I made a point, the first calf kick I threw, I felt like my shin was just digging into his like back of his leg. And I was like, I hit you, I got you. And he was like, no, it's not. And I, I kick again. And he was like, no, and no. So I, I, I, after the first round, I was very confident that would work again. And then I just saw he started to do that. But uh, I hope he will be OK. Um, but my game plan was actually to do a lot of boxing, which was quite successful. And then so he protect high and then work on the calf. 
and then go back high if it wouldn't work. Well, you definitely picked him apart in that first round and you saw that you had the upper hand with him, some power behind those hands. He was quite wobbled going into the second. Were you oh, surprised sorry. the second happened? I mean the third round. I, yeah, sorry. I, sorry. What but were you surprised? He was quite wobbled going into the second round. Were you surprised the second happened? I saw you looking at the ref. Yeah, I thought, I thought that I would... Uh, no, I was looking at the ref because he was standing and fixing his belt. So I was like, is he stalling or is it like... But no, it was a great fight. I thought that I would finish him in the first one because he looked like this. But uh, yeah, it was a great fight. I hope, like I said, everyone enjoyed it. I came here, I felt that I got to show some new things. Um, yeah, that was great. We look forward to the future. Thank you very Thank much. You so much, Samuel Eriksson. You, so you know the game, man. You go high, I go low, OK? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sand uh -oh. Well, Santa is definitely is having a good time here tonight. Now we know why. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Mr. Robin Black, what were your thoughts on that one? Man, man th these two lifelong martial artists can now both proudly and truthfully say they are professional fighters. The story of this fight will be recorded as damage to the nerves, the exposed nerves due to the shin of Samuel Erickson. A very clean win. But the real story, the story behind that, is a story of experience. There is nothing normal about fighting another professional athlete in a pit in front of all these people. There's nothing normal about that. But with seasoning, you become a little more comfortable in it. People often say, I respect anyone who steps into the pit once. Those of us who have fought know that is not true. You respect anyone who has done it twice, because once you do it once, you know how difficult it is. Samuel Erickson knew how hard this was, and he stepped in here, and that was the difference tonight. Congratulations to both those two gentlemen. Yes, thank you, Robin. Let's take a look at some of the stats from that bout and see what the situation was for Samuel Erickson and Tarek Halifi. Ooh, so there we go, actually fairly close. even overall. Yep. Just, uh, you know, Samuel Erickson, he said that the, he'd worked his boxing and he, he said, I pretty clearly know that the power edge is going to go to me. And that was pretty much the story of it, right? He did it, you know, but the punch is there 25, 27, but he was the one with the connecting shots. Yes, he, he connect with more power, more efficiency. And it was not about how many times you connect, it was about the timing when you can connect. Quality over quantity. Yeah, and you know, he, he did say there's a lot of pressure on him coming into this one. He, he did himself a, a great service here tonight. I think he did, but there was pressure on both these guys. And like Tarek also, he was talking a big game, but like, he's, you know, when you come up and you see the preview and all the things that you said, that puts a lot of pressure on you. So he had to deal with that as well. His kicks were freaky fast, though, I have to say. <laughs> but once he clipped, got clipped with the big punch, that, uh, yeah, that set him back. Yeah, three more fights coming your way tonight. Of course, main event is coming up a little bit later. Here is Leila Machado-Gary with a bit of a preview. Hello. So in our main event, Rafael Agaev will enter the pit. Now, this is a man who is the most single, most decorated karateka in the game. His reputation is not to be underestimated, but he is a lot, lot shorter than his opponent, Raymond Daniels. Baz, the fact that he is a lot shorter, how much difference does that make? He says he's always fought people a lot taller than him. It, no, I don't think uh, for him it's not going to make a difference, but I think the other way around did. Uh, Raymond Daniels ever fought a guy that size, you know? So we're going to have to figure that out. Tyson also, never was a problem for Mike Tyson. <laughs> so. Yeah, Rafael Gaev, we've seen before, you know, he is, uh, he's used to fighting, everybody's bigger than him, but that's what he does, he gets inside, he gets in the pocket, he gets that, that blitz going. Yes, his ability of closing the distance he, he's, is just remarkable, and he carry a lot of power with him, and also, he's, uh, he's built like a tank, you know, so... It's hard to fight a guy like this. Yeah, lots to look forward to. Go ahead and uh, take a look at, well, that's a preview of our main event. Uh, coming up next, though, Gabriel Varga and Tommy Azuz. Time for you to meet Gabriel Varga. Ooh, ooh. My name is Gabriel Varga. I'm from Victoria, British Columbia. Gabriel Varga. I'm really looking forward to see him yeah. compete in the pit. Uh, this guy started Perfect. out as a karateka, and you then he went outside the box, so to say. Yeah. I started you karate at about six years old because my father insisted that my brother and I both got our black belt. 
Varga is a piano playing, meditating, fun, nature loving guy. Peaceful and quiet. Um, old Zen. Never had a street fight, and I base that solely on the fact that I have the martial arts background because when situations have arose and I have people push me or I had somebody one day slap me, I have that ability to control my emotions and go, I know I can hurt somebody, but I don't need to do it. This guy doesn't like to fight, but he takes on fights because that means that he has to train for the fight. They go, whoa, whoa, whoa, that's completely backwards. Not for him. So he doesn't really like to fight. He only fights so he can train for that fight. Over the past 15 years, I've basically fought for all the premier kickboxing organizations picking up belts. Then I tried my hand at MMA, but I did not love the groundwork. Gabriel Varga was a Bellator and a glory champion. The YouTube channel for me was a way to give back. I've been very fortunate throughout my entire career of having people help me. It's very important for me to pass on knowledge. So that was my main goal in starting my channel. He's got so many belts, basically more belts than our fighters have fight. I want to do something that stands out, something that's different. And going and winning another kickboxing belt doesn't really help me accomplish anything else. For me to do something unique, I need to switch the rule sets and I need to be the best there as well. For me, karate combat is basically the perfect blend. It challenges me because I have to move away from the comfort of a boxing glove, but I don't have to focus on doing the groundwork. Being able to go to karate combat, win some fights, challenge for the belt, and become the champion there, that's basically the goal right now. I will possibly even go into my 40s and re-sign with karate combat, but right now, 100%, I plan on finishing my career with karate combat. Hey. Yeah, that is Gabriel Varga you're going to see up next. We'll talk about him in a moment. Uh, Bas, he is, of course, facing Tommy Azuz tonight, uh, who is quite a few years his junior. It's very much an uh, up-and-comer versus veteran scenario here. Uh, Tommy Azuz, last time out, unfortunately, a split decision loss for him against Mitchell Thorpe, but the guy's a firecracker. He gets stuck in. That's the thing, you know, his unpredictability. He's switching stances, making back kicks, e equal back kicks with the back and with the, uh, with the right and with the left. I mean, he can be all over the place, and if Varga never had a training partner like that, it might surprise him. Yeah, George, I, I swear we don't always give you the Canadians to talk about. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, Gabriel Varga, of, of course, uh, you saw that extremely accomplished kickboxer. Yeah, but the thing we, we need to consider and, and, and pay attention to this fight is that he, he changed opponent three weeks ago. So it's a, it's a newcomer and that's always dangerous. He knows his uh, opponent's coming from a strong karate background. So he believes that he's going to have an advantage in the punching range. And not not so in the kicking range, but mostly in the punching range. And he believes also that he's going to use that that killer liver shot that he specialized with yeah. to win the fight. One of the things we always ask the fighters, uh, you know, in the in the run up to the fight is, you know, did you do any tape study? Did you did you look at this? And as soon as we asked that to Gabriel Varga, he just reeled off everything he saw about his opponent and everything he thought he could do in every hole. And you know, this guy just studies everything. That's it. Very methodical. He might have been torturing small animals though when he was a baby. <laughs> <laughs> He's oh a my. very methodical uh, <laughs> fighter to watch. You know, if you if you have if if you have, uh, for example, uh, you want to show a kid how to fight, like technically s someone who's technically sound, Varga is a good guy to to to as uh, to have a, as an example. Yeah, let's see uh, if he can put that to pay his experience in this one. Gabriel Varga, Tommy Azuz up next. Tommy Azuz in the blue corner. Je pense qu'il y a beaucoup de karatékas aujourd'hui qui se voient la face. Ils pensent qu'à leur record et qu'à leurs chiffres. Moi aujourd'hui, je suis venu ici pour euh, combattre tout le monde, pour gagner tout le monde. Ce sera, le... sera pareil pour tout le monde, je chercher le chaos. Il n'y a personne qui me fait peur. Et, euh, et voilà, comme il a dit Adam, j'ai des boules d'acier. Donc, euh, donc voilà. Gabriel Varga is one of the best strikers ever. Gabriel Varga! This guy started out as a karate guy, and then he went outside the box, so to say. He is six-fois champion du monde, uh, du glory, du bellator. He's got more belts than our fighters have fights. All fights I've learned now at this point in my career are important because if you lose one fight, it just takes you down the ladder and I'm always looking to move forward. So basically every fight is a must win. 
Oh, and that's nice work from Varga, digging to the body a couple of times. Il n'y a personne qui me fait peur que vous m'emmenez Gabriel Varga ou. He likes to control the distance. He likes to stay further out with his movement. I want to be in tight. Oh, look at the volume. He's icy cold, analytical, explosive. Le combat ressemble à une vraie guerre parce que ça va être l'expérience contre, contre la Grinta un peu. Off to assess how fast he is, assess the risk of trying to put that pressure on and cornering him. Là que la victoire, ça va être euh, ma fougue, donc euh, la Grinta que j'ai en moi. I need to isolate his speed and I need to take advantage of my experience. I think for him it will be a combat facile. This guy is going to be a little surprised about the difference in striking power. Et euh, voilà, le plan ça va être même pour tout le monde. Hein. Je vais chercher le chaos. And I'm not an exceptionally hard striker, but when you start getting into that champion kickboxing sort of status, people hit hard. Que je vais vite le mettre à la retraite. Euh. And I don't know if he's going to be ready for that. Oh, I love it. Ice cold, no emotion. All right, karate combat Perfect. fans. On our representing France. Welcome, Tommy Azu. Tommy Azu is returning for his uh, fourth appearance here at Karate Combat. He's one and two so far, had a good win over Gabriel Brito in his debut, but has had a, a tough couple of fights since then. He's going to be in the blue corner tonight. Look, French champion, uh, Europeans, he took silver third of the world. Quite a lot of experience for being just 23 years old, uh, but make no mistake, he is the underdog here tonight. And his opponent coming out of the red corner, representing north of the border, Canada. Welcome, Gabriel Varga! <laughs> well, Gabriel Varga not appreciating the uh, dry ice there, I think, on his way out. <laughs> you know, if you talk to a student, you know, when you, you talk about a blueprint for a fighter, for a kickboxer, that is Gabriel Varga, right? Everything is perfect. It's technically perfect. It's, it's just, and you saw his house. Everything is ordered, everything is styled, you know, that's why I cracked that joke, of course. It's, uh, yeah, he's just... He's something, man. Goes the body, goes the head, kicks head, kicks legs. I mean, he's really all over the place. So it's going to be a hard puzzle to, for Toby Azus to, to solve. But hey, you never know with those crazy kicks, man. What can land? If something lands with a spinning kick, you know it's over. Tell the tape for this one. Blue corner, Nook Sukau, Tommy Azus, 23 years old, hailing from France. Going to be the shorter fighter here this evening as well. And Gabriel Varga in the red corner. You can see leg reach is pretty similar, but uh, he's got six inch reach advantage in the arms. For 37 years old, he is looking to stay undefeated here in this division. Noksukao, the white warrior. The white warrior. Yes. All right, fighters, it is time to enter the pit. Your referee for this one is Wayne Spinola. You ready, sir? You ready, sir? Fight! Karate Combat 37 is powered by Hedera. We'll White see pants Var for Zeus, black pants for Varga. We'll see Varga trying to close the distance, but he, he normally doesn't start hard. He, he likes to, to study his opponent. He, he, he's one of the, these fighters that does a long uh, filling out process sometimes. Really good timing on that kick on the way in. Just took the base completely away from Tommy Azuz and doing a bit of neon belly for some strikes. He said he didn't like the groundwork in MMA, but that's kind of the first time we've seen proper neon belly use. I'm telling you, man, <laughs> he does everything the, the right way. Tuning in to KC37 to see Varga do his thing. Of course, if you're tuning in as well, do tweet at us, hashtag KC37, at Karate Combat on all social media platforms. Varga keeping that guard very high indeed. Yes. But also when he's punching and kicking, you know, it never leaves his head. And, and his answer was very simple. I said, how did you do that? He said, well, my hand movement is not that good, so it seems very smart to just keep my hands up. I go, okay. <laughs> I think to be, in order to be successful, Azus need to go with flurry. You know what I mean? He can't stay 
and, and, and keep the same rhythm the whole fight. Otherwise, Vargo will download this data, so to speak, and, and, and pick him oh. apart. Oh, look at some power differential there. He's uh, being slammed from the uh, double unders at the what? back. You know, interestingly, both these guys, it's a family affair tonight. Both these guys have got their brothers in their corner. Aaron Varga uh, for Gabriel Varga and uh, Kevin Azuz for Tommy. Stop, stop! Fight. I mean, Bass Varga said, you know, when you get to the, the level of kickboxing that he tends to compete at, you know, you hit hard, not necessarily because you're that heavily muscled, but because you're so technically, you know, perfect. That's it, yeah, and he's correct. You know, don't even need power if you got perfect technique. You know, combination there will be great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get spun there, though. Bit of success for Azuz. Right out, right out, right out. Here's a free. Got to break him. And this is very smart. Now, what you can't do under the yep. Karate Combat rule set is pull someone down onto a knee. You see Varga actually turning and framing. So it's going to count as pushing off and striking, which is extremely smart by him. Something we actually spoke about in the uh, fighter interviews. Stop, stop right here. Back up. Yeah. We say every time that Varga is, is methodically closing the distance. And uh, the more... That, the more time he's gonna, the more, the longest the fight will go, the more he's gonna do it. He's finding his reach. And he's gonna go in for the kill. Stop. So, final closing seconds of round number one here. Nothing hugely decisive for either fighter, though, it has to be said. I, I believe most of the damage have been done through ground and pound for Varga. Uh, even though it was not a lot of damage, most of the shot that connect was was done to, uh, to ground and pound. Yeah, let's have a look at the replays here. This was the, the very first exchange. It was a beautiful timing on the kick, and we saw some power in the clinch from Varga there. For a guy that doesn't like the groundwork, he right. he's doing, he's doing awesome. pretty well. <laughs> I mean, he's, you know, the studies the art, that's the thing, you know? Yeah, he, he, and like you said, with he, the clinch, what he did, that was beautiful. Right, he's assessed the rule set, he's found where he's and how to play it. Listening into the corner of Varga here. Same thing, focus. Oh, looking a little bit heated, perhaps, wanting to cool down. Yeah, not a whole lot to say. <laughs> Where, gentlemen? He knows what he's doing. Nobody needs to tell him something, anything. So, touch the gloves underway here, second round. Oh, nice kick there by Tommy Azuz. That's what Azuz needs to do. He needs to to throw, throw strike that comes comes out of different angle. That that strike that that stop, Varga are not stop, used stop, to stop, see because Varga has the know, has an enormous experience in, in uh, striking uh, combat sport. No, no. You guys, your guys were in a clinch. Okay, you can't do it. Ready? Fight. Braga closing the distance. Oh, oh that was a lovely beautiful. kick. Yeah. And then opening up, Varga has got to be on his toes here. That's what Azuz need to do. Throw those crazy kicks coming from different angle. Yeah, you called it, George. Straight down the middle on that one. Yeah. He can't. He can't. You can't make the fight like a boxing fight. Time, can't time, do my that. Time, my time. Oh, my I think time. accidental clash of heads there. Accidental headbutt. Accidental headbutt. Doc, you want to take a look oh, at that? Oh, and the cut has immediately opened on the head of Gabriel Varga. You're Luckily, okay? it is not Doc. near the eyes, so take hopefully we can get this tended to. Let's see how big it is. Yeah. Hey. Wow. Oh, that's immediately that's opened up. That's a bad one. That's a bad one. Let the doctor look at him. Yeah, dogs, it's I mean, just a flash wall. Well, it's, it's, it's a cut and it's not anywhere near his eyes. So yeah. if he chooses to continue, there's literally no reason to stop it. Let's have a look at the replay here. See what we can see. Comes in. There we go. Yeah, completely accidental. Yeah, Nick put some grease in it. It should be okay. Yeah, as we say, it's up in the hairline. It's going to bleed a lot. It absolutely is. But it's not necessarily going to in inhibit his vision. So there's, you know, unless it's really, really deep. Yeah, the referee uh, telling Aaron Varga to uh, okay. take a seat. No, uh, yeah, he's... Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 
Let's go. Azu, Azu, Azu's corner is telling him in French, like, oh, every, everybody's surprised now. It's time to shine. So let's go. It's time to explode. We'll see if he, if he follows his uh, coach's instruction. Oh, that, that looks like he does. Wanna... Yeah, flicking that kick out again. Varga is trying to back him up. I wonder if it puts a sense of urgency into Gabriel Varga now. It has to. Up we go, big flurry from Varga, staying on his feet nicely here. Azuz trying to find a way out. Well, now he's downed. Until he sinks all the way down to the bottom of the wall, he's not considered a downed opponent, so Varga can tee off at will. Oh, and again, oh, oh my god! Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Bad. I think he's going to get warned for leading in with the head here. Oh, Azu's running out of space, having to try and find some sort of lateral movement. When he gets up, kick the front leg. Good catch and a kick. Stop, stop, stop, stop, stop, stop, stop, stop, stop, stop, stop, stop. Oh, and this, uh, this cut has started to open up now. These fights are the best, you know, afterwards, you know, when you bleed all over the place, then you still keep fighting. I love that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's a flash wound. Seems like Varga released a little bit the pressure. Like, now, now, now he's, he's very methodical now. Teeing off again here is a good flurry. Has he got knee on value or has he got knee on the ground? I've got to tell, he can't have a knee on the ground to initiate those strikes. Azuz has got to get out of this corner. Yep. Oh, that's a nice kick. Oh, tries that little hook kick to the face. Very good, going to the body and then to the head. Azuz has got to be careful here. I mean, he's probably going to see the round out, but he can't just lay there and cover. And turn, more importantly, he can't turn away from his opponent when he does so. Good shot. Oh! He gets spun. Not long left. Varga trying to finish here. Oi. Oh, he's going to see it out of the round. Varga thought he'd done it, but it is dying seconds. Oh, this is hard for uh, Azus. Wow. Varga's just notching it up here. Oof. Azus is. Uh, oh, yeah, Azus is. He has is, trouble uh, coming up, right? Yeah. I mean, that was the cleanest of the shots that, that Varga had landed. Let's go back and look at some of the replays here. Boom, that was the... That was a shoulder charge. Oh, that charge. was the second one. Yeah. And there was, this was a, this happened quite a lot of times. Azuz getting pushed down to the mat. You see that there, Varga's knee is on the ground, and that's not those are not legal shots. So the referee has okay. got to be on the ball with watching that. Yep, yep. But that's there's the one. The one. Wow. Listening in to the corner of Tommy Azuz, George, help us out. Well, the stuff he said, I can't translate because it's swearing, but he says, <laughs> he says you're going to put your chin down and ends up, and it's the last round. You got to it, give it all. You should have just straight translated. It's not me. Be you ask, you can get away with it. it. Well, so Varga immediately trying to push Tommy Azuz back into the corner here. Again, they've done some coming, they've done some good work. Done the damage to the forehead. Varga, oh, question mark, kick up over the top. Oh, the liver punch. You see? Yeah, he said his left hook to the body is his favorite weapon. You, you, and again, oh, to body the body. Shot. When he's in ground and pound position, I believe that's a mistake that he does because he always goes for the head punches. And, and Azuz covered very well his head. I think he should work on the, the rib cage and the, on, on the side, you know, to the body. Well, he did that in, in the second round. He did throw body shots oh. in between there as well. Look at the power of Varga. Yeah, he's really taking it to him right now. Oh, good knee on belly. I think he's irritated. <laughs> Yes, the guy you don't want to piss off. Right. <laughs> he said, you know what, I've got my martial arts background, I can control my emotions. <laughs> you know, whew. Well, it's still controlled. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, shit, oh, get it. Oh, good sh little shot on the inside, but Azuz is going to be wearing some damage That's here. That's the body oh, yeah. shots. The body shot, is, it, works, it works very well. That's delivery, the you know, yes. he's hunting it again. You know, so show me something, I'm going to start this fight, you understand? Fight. There is a tweet coming in, uh, Gabriel Varga, another level. Yeah, certainly is right now, chasing Azuz and all over for the here. body. 
Oh, Azus is a, looks exhausted. He's, he's, he's literally yeah, accepting the fall. Yeah. You know? His legs go limp. I, I mean, think he's just exhausted. I have got to say, the referee's got to be more on the ball here. You cannot have a knee on the ground when you throw these ground and pound shots. They got to call it. Yeah, they call it. Oh. That's it. Good, wow. good call. Good call. Very good call. See, yes. called by the referee to end this one. Tommy Azuz taking wow. a lot of unnecessary punishment towards the end there. Five fighters safety first, and that, that was great. That, that, that's a good call, 100%. And wow. a good show of respect. I mean, I'm dying for the interview for Gabriel Varga here because you know it's going to be very reflective and introspective, but, you know, acknowledging the uh, tenacity and toughness of Tommy... And, oh boy, he looks, uh, well, deservedly looks very tired there. Yeah, I think the body shots did its work. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, body shot ground and pound. I mean, just kept backing him into the corner. Let's take a look at the replays here at the end. There's the kick. Oof. To hide the temple. And every time when I went to the ground, it was he was on and he studied, man. Knee on belly, guaranteed. Going for the body, the head, you see? Yeah. Love it. It's just the, it's the awareness. Because, because the, the fact that there, there is no submission, when a fighter hit the ground, I think it's, it's, it's, it, it is to it, its advantage to, to make like a, like a bubble, you know, like to, to put, bring his knees to his uh, almost shoulders and cover the head like a, in a fetus position. To, to avoid the damage as much as, as he can. Santa and, and hitting the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, Santa. Santa have a good time. I hope he doesn't drink too much because he has to, to deliver a lot of uh, gift uh, in a few a few days. As long as Rudolf is OK and didn't drink. <laughs> but with the master like that, you never know. <laughs> So uh, before we get our official announcement, Gabriel Varga getting a bit more attention. I mean, you know, he, he just, that headbutt happened and he went beast mode. That's it. <laughs> oh, turning it right up. Let's go ahead and get this official decision here. <laughs> Karate Combat fans, your winner by TKO, representing Canada out of the red corner, Gabriel Varga! So we're getting a, a nice show of respect in the middle of the pit here. And Gabriel Varga is going to head up pit side for an interview with Layla. <laughs> He's going to have to get this cleaned up a little bit. Gabriel, joining you now, ahead of the fight, you spoke to me about the importance of body shots. And you really worked that strategy perfectly. We didn't do any grist to ground stuff. I haven't done zero. So it was just in the moment I went, oh, he's covering his head. The body's open. Um, might as well try. And it seemed to work well. And talking about covering the head, you got a cut there. Did that change the strategy and the game plan for you at all? Um, no, not, not really. But my brother told me right before, he's like, you guys are going to clash heads if you don't put your hands right over your forehead. So he called it. I lapsed for a moment doesn't really change the game plan because it wasn't running into my eyes but I have about 60 stitches on my face already so at least I've had experience with blood going into the third round walk me through your emotions there third round um, it's always the same when you're winning you're just like I'm winning but that means he's gonna come harder because he only has one option which is knock me out so it's always a little scary you're like I'm winning but a losing dog is a dangerous dog so <laughs> what does the future hold for you um, next up, I don't really know. I'm still getting used to the transition, so I'll talk with the head guys at Karate Combat and see what they want next. But uh, I'm thinking another fight before Title One would be good just to get the kinks out and to have a full camp to prep for one opponent and be able to execute, because I didn't get to execute the game plan at all tonight, because there was no game plan. Well, that was brilliant to watch. Thank you very much. Gabriel Varga.
Oh, so, Gabriel Varga victorious there, Bas. We've got the stats up on our screen here. And let me tell you, uh, strikes landed. Tommy Azuz, 25. Gabriel Varga, 112. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and well, let's talk about punches landed. 95 versus oh, 17. Oh, goodness. Oh, I mean, what can you really say? You know, we, we talked about how cold, how calculated, how technically brilliant he is. I mean, uh, you know, this guy could really just rule this lightweight division. He can, you know, and, and I like what he said. He says, let's work the kings out of the gable, you know, give me another five spurs before I go for the title. He knows exactly what he wants. Everything is methodical. I love it. I love everything about him. George, yeah. what, did, what did you think about that? Well, it's one of the most one-sided fight that we had tonight. I mean, it's just, uh, you see the number. It's, it's incredible. And uh, Varga, I'm very excited to see what's the, the future holds for him. I, I personally would like to see him for a title, but he's so methodical. You <laughs> want to take his time and go step by step, but it's okay too. Yeah, let's uh, let's see what that uh, is in store for the Canadian. Uh, left, three steps we've got left. a lot of people floating around here tonight. I believe Alex Wendling is somewhere pit side uh, with the wife of one of our main event fighters, Colby Northcutt Daniels. Let's see. Yes, I am with Colby Northcutt, the MMA sensation, and the wifey to Raymond Daniels, who will be in our main event tonight. Man, we just saw a crazy fight between world kickboxing champion Gabriel Varga. Get cut open. You're a fighter yourself as well. So what is it like to kind of fight compromise and fight through that? I mean, luckily, I've never been cut like that, but both of those fighters have a lot of heart. Gabriel's fantastic. I've been watching him for years since he was in Bellator kickboxing with my husband. So props to him for overcoming that and way to go on the victory. That was great. A hundred percent. And your fight background is so decorated as well. How much have you been able to help your husband and especially get shredded? He went from middleweight to welterweight, now has like a bunch of six packs going on. Yeah, I mean, um, I'll, I'll, I'll take the blame for the last fight when he was a middleweight. I just had a baby. So, you know, kind of husbands, they want to eat with their wives. So I'll take the credit for that. But I'm happy that now he's actually at his real weight, welterweight, and he'll be in that weight class for the rest of his career. Um, you won't ever see that dad bod again, I promise. <laughs> And can we get a prediction on, on the main event tonight? I mean, I've talked about it with him. I know his game plan. He's been training extremely hard. I'm going to say a first round knockout. You know, he's declaring that. And I think everybody will be really excited with the outcome. Well, that's the inside source right here. Colby Northcutt, thank you so much. We'll send it back to you guys. We're going to be seeing Raymond Daniels in our main event. Now, when Raymond Daniels was young and when his father finished his cigarettes, he used to throw the butt in the air and Raymond would have to kick it out of the air. It is that skill that Raymond mastered, and that was the beginnings of his really showful and colorful style. Raymond walks into the pit today calling it his vacation. He's so confident, and his training camp was so difficult that this is where he sees the joy. Guys, Josh. His confidence is just oozing out of him, isn't it? Yeah, we've spoken about it over and over again. You ask this guy a question and you get a monologue of why, you know, he's the best, he's going to win, but he backs it up every single time. Every single time. He says, you do, you put, if you, a front kick, you put it in, he says, I'm like Google. You get like 1,500 answers and I'm going to use all of them. <laughs> and he, he is so creative. I, I, I don't know what he's gonna, what kind of weapon he's gonna bring into the pit tonight. I, I probably things that we haven't seen uh, before. The bicycle kick, right? He was talking about the bicycle kick, which is something. Go, pa, pa, pa, pa, pa, pa. He said that we don't know what it is, with or without the sound effects. He said. I loved what he talked about fear. He says that everyone has a fear of the unknown, and when he walks into the pit for his opponent. He is the unknown, yeah. right? Oh, percent. Yeah, absolutely. You, you like don't know that. what he's going to do. You don't know what angle is going to come out. You don't know. It's just, you don't know. You know, and we saw a guy have a lot of times trapping a kick. That's something you cannot do with Raymond because once you grab, he jumps up with the other leg. He's going to kick you in the face. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We'll talk more about this later. Of course, we've got the co-main coming up very shortly indeed. Yoen Chelmia and Jesus Lopez. Let's preview this co-main. What a title fight this will be. Bantamweight title on the line. Owen Chalmia versus Jesus Lopez. Oh! He's a super dominant champion. I'm here to take the victory, no matter who's in front of me. La bestia va por él. Oh, oh, yeah. Tough challenger. Oh. It's a little bit crazy. Yeah, how did that? Great technique, great power. This guy has it all. I'm gonna go in there and just beat him on every sense of that. More power, more cardio, more machismo. He's a non-stop pressure. I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen such opponents as I've had. And this is the first time I've ever I'm prepared to drag him into a dogfight. Either he's gone to sleep or me. 
No vamos a parar hasta lograr el cinturón Golden Bell. He's going to find out how hard it is to get it. Show me a drop him, and it. that is over. Hey everyone, Boss Wooden here. Coming this January, Karate Combat will launch the Up Only Gaming app. Now, in the new app, you'll be able to collect free Karate Combat tokens and then vote on your favorite fighters with those tokens. Simple, right? Now, if your fighter wins, you earn more tokens, and if they lose, not a problem at all. You lose no tokens and just try again at the next event. You can also support your favorite Karate Combat fighters by boosting their potential fight prize pools, so your favorite fighter can take home more rewards when they win. Now, more tokens means more influence over future fighter prize prize pools and other league's decisions. You got it all. And for a limited time only, receive two times the standard Karate bonus sign-up tokens after the initial launch when you sign up right now. So go to karate.com slash airdrop or scan the QR code on your screen right now to receive twice the standard token allocation. So don't miss out. Sign up right now. There's no purchase required. Well, it is almost time for this co-main event here. Let's have a quick chat about these two gentlemen uh, a little bit more. Uh, Bas Jesus Lopez, a lot of support for him in Peru, but you managed to spend some time with him, showing him a few things, and you were just blown away by his ability to pick things up. Yes, you know, because I have a really weird uh, fighting stance. It's an open stance. Not a lot of people fight like that, and I was showing him counters that I did. And everything that I did on him and showed him once, he was actually doing immediately. So I did ask him afterwards, you know, I go, did you ever watch my stuff? And he goes, are you kidding? Of course <laughs> I did. I go, okay, good, because man, I've never seen anything like it. So uh, he's doing really well. Then again, I also worked with uh, Chelmia, you know, and this guy is also a freak, also coming forward the whole time. <sighs> this is going to be a great fight. I really believe so. I don't think it's going to go the distance. And if it goes the distance, it might even go to a sixth round. George, yes. uh, let's talk about Owen Chelmia very quickly. Um, you know, we've said several times he's young, he came out of nowhere, but he handles the pressure like a much more experienced athlete. Well, for Chelmia, it's simple. Going forward, going forward, and going forward. But <laughs> when you go forward, you expose yourself to a potential uh, counter-strike. So we need to be aware of it. Because Jesus Lopez, if he has, if, if you're fight, fighting him on a good day, because in the past, he had some different uh, level of, uh, of performances, but if you fight him on a good day, and he, as he claim as he is now, it could be very dangerous. Yeah, well, we've got a lot of fight footage uh, of these two guys. Both of them have four appearances each in the pit. Uh, of course, no better man to break down that fight footage than Robin Black. Robin, what do you think? Guys, we have had a wonderful night of martial artistry. We've seen the essence of karate, equal parts, elegance, and vulgarity. And we still have our title doubleheader, and it is with great privilege and pleasure that I tee up for you this bantamweight title fight. If we look at the footage between Owen Chelmia and Jesus Lopez, we see two very, very different martial artists. Jesus Lopez is an aggressive fighter. He's moving forward, he's attacking. And uh, Owen Chelmia, very open, very fluid, improvising in real time. And between the two of them, we get a very, very spectacular fight. Look at this moment here with Lopez. Watch, he catches, and just as the other punch is coming, he uses the leverage from it to drive his right knuckles, bink, right to the temple. He has landed two of the very nicest knockouts that we have seen in karate combat, in martial arts, and he's a dangerous man. But this kid has been changing constantly, growing and evolving. He puts together his weaponry so elegantly. Look, the low hand here invites, but also bink, comes from beneath the peripheral. There, touching the toes to the forehead, he puts together all of the skills of the Japanese martial arts here with the throw. So many skills, see defensively here, goaltending with the defense, kicking up and over. He puts it together so well, and when he's in flow, look, Bink lands with the left here, and then the right, and then the left. Watch, they all make contact. In the moment, he sees everything, and his mind allows himself to flow through it. Every one of these lands. When he is on, he is on, and he is the champion of the world in karate combat at bantamweight. These two guys will meet in this pit, and it will be for the bantamweight title of the world. Two very, very different martial artists, but one spectacular fight. And man, are you guys ready for the co-main event I said are you ready for Owen Chelmia versus
versus Jesus Lopez. Give me the head to head. We have a title fight. The bantamweight title is on the line. Owen Chalmia versus Jesus Lopez. Davis coming for you. I can't blame him for wanting the belt. At the same time, he's going to find out how hard it is to get it. A victory roar from Jesus Lopez. This guy's a little bit crazy. My hermano me decía loco, que era un loquito. This guy will not back down. He will get neat hit. It doesn't really matter. He will always come back. Y así somos los locos, ¿no? Nos gustan los retos. Lopez seems to throw everything with bad intention. Yo no busco ganar por puntos. Yo siempre voy a destruir. If you talk about pressure, that's the guy. I'm here to take the victory, no matter who's in front of me. This is a real kind of Cinderella story. He came in as a qualifier. What a performance. Another absolutely banging fight. Oh! Letting him hit him. He's trying to undermine the confidence of his opponent. Three fights, three wins, culminating in that belt. And still! He's not going to stop. He knows one speed, full speed. One movement, forward movement. I'm not in there to win on decision. I'm there to knock him out. He comes forward, and there's no stopping him. I'm not the most strategic of fighters. Hitting a lot and make my opponent quit. That is his game plan. He's a super dominant champion now. I'm here because I want to be. It's not for the money. I don't really care about legacy. I'm there because I can. I honestly believe that there's not a fight on the roster that I can't beat on any given day. He querido esta oportunidad desde mucho antes. Dudo mucho que Chelman tenga una posibilidad de ganarme. Time is more on my side. He's getting older. Discipline might be an issue. We've seen him missing weight. Yo siempre estoy activo. Lo he demostrado en este último evento que me avisaron una semana antes. He does tend to get tired. I'll exploit that in there and knock him out. Él está hablando por hablar. No tiene el poder para noquearme. I'm a better fighter. I hit harder. I hit more often. I'm more accurate. I have more than enough power to knock him out. Either he's gone to sleep or me. Se lo dijo. Él sabe que va a perder por nocao. Si él quiere ganarme, va a tener que matarme. Entonces, that's what I'm doing. Not leaving it in the judges' hands. I'm knocking out that cringy old fool. Fight fans, it is time for our co-main event. This bout is for the Karate Combat Bantamweight Championship, a bout that could go as long as five rounds. Fighting first, out of the blue corner, the challenger. Welcome from Peru, Jesus the Beast Lopez. Oh, so Jesus Lopez makes his way to the pit. He is your challenger here tonight. Said he was extremely happy to have this opportunity. He thinks his opponent's good, but he says he's fought people a lot tougher than him. He believes he has some combinations are going to work on Owen Chalmere. He feels that this fight is likely going to go the full five rounds. Well, we shall see. Well, you, you always have to prepare for the worst, you know? So if it, if it finishes earlier, it's a good thing, you know? And both have their models here. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He is the karate combat reigning bantamweight champion. He's from Ireland. Welcome, Owen Chilmia! This is your bantamweight champion, 26 years old. Hailing from Ireland, originally a Waduriu proponent, but uh, very much a more well-rounded striker now. 
He said he's seen his opponent's fights, and despite uh, a mixed record, he's prepared for the absolute best version that he thinks Jesus Lopez will be. Very interesting individual who has actually joined a model rocketry club in his spare time whilst he's waiting <laughs> to graduate uh, October of next year with his PhD. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Say some accomplishments for rockets. everyone else, please, Owen. He's programming the whole <laughs> flight plan and everything for rockets. Blue corner for Jesus Lopez, 35 years old, uh, nine years the senior. Mixed record there, as you can see. Probably going to be a little bit taller, though. There you go, two inches shorter is your champion, but uh, as we kind of said, he just comes forward and really makes up for it. A lot of damage, incredibly durable. We've seen him take some shots and just keep coming forward. All right, fighters, it is now time to enter <laughs> the pit. Karate Combat 37 right. is sponsored by Gainful. Supplements like Gainful's personalized Come protein, on, hydration, and pre-workout deliver ready. results for you. Sign up now, get 40% off at gainful.com forward slash KC37. Nice kick there by Lopez. This fight, ladies and gentlemen, has the potential to be the best fight of the night, just for you, just wow. so you know, and it's not even the final yet. Look oh. at that double jab, body to the head. That's the second one. Josh Palmer, Bass Rutten, and of course, George St. Pierre, pit side for you tonight at Universal Studios, Orlando, Florida. Just two fights left for the Karate Combat 2022 calendar. Chomia with the center of the pit. Close stance. Oh, Jesus is working on those uh, left leg kick very well. You got, uh, you got you got three good leg kicks so far. Ooh, Ooh. big nice fight from Lopez. Yeah, we've seen Chelmia take uh, a lot of shots and, and very rarely get wobbled. We have seen it though. Remember, no clinching strike. Pay no knee when you clinch it. Let's go. Again. Oh, those were very straight yeah. shots indeed. And we, we've got to talk as well, it's not just the, the constant forward movement, but like it's the pace that he puts his opponents under, right? The volume of strikes, the constant barrage. You know, as you said, disrupts the breathing, disrupts their rhythm. Everything, you know, if you can't breathe regularly, you get interrupted the whole time, that makes you tired so fast. We were talking about it with fainting already that happens, so you can only imagine when it hits. I, I'm, I'm impressed so far by uh, Lopez, uh, the way he keeps his composure. You know yep. what I mean? He doesn't, fe he doesn't feel like he's rushed. Everything he throws is, is methodical. He doesn't waste any energy. You see, he went to the body, went to the head, to the body, go, goes to the leg. It's very methodical, very beautiful. He's going to get warned for a knee here because he clinched and pulled Chalmia onto the knee. You can't do that. you got to frame and throw it as uh, an isolated strike. And he's caught the champion again for a second time in quick succession there. And the other way around. <laughs> and, and those leg kicks now are starting to... The damage of, of those leg kicks are starting to show now. And they're very powerful. Look the way uh, Sh Shalmya is, is moving his leg. Yeah, he, just to make sure, put your left toes from your left foot, put a 45 degree angle to the left. So he's going to kick your shin instead of the calf. Oh, boy. Oh, jumping knee there, ate a shot over the top. Oh, he got clipped now with a hook. Oh, we've seen Chomia do this before, and that's a great move from Lopez there. Tried the spinning back fist. Right. Big shots. Right. Wow, that's a end of the round snuck that up on us fast. There. Yeah. Wow, that means it's super exciting. Really good first round. Any thoughts on uh, who no. got the better there? I, I, th I would give the first round to, Lo to uh, Lopez. Yeah. Yeah. yeah. With leg, leg kicks, be better variety of strike. Yeah. He got clipped with a hook, at, uh, left a lead hook at the, at the end, but he, I think he statistically he had, the, he had the edge. Well, let's take a look at some of these shots here. Lopez that was jumping nice, knee, knee. Oh. Jumping knee off the pit wall. Lopez winging everything in. That was a good counter left from Chelmia. And here, Chelmia trying to absorb some punches and 
Land back, did a good job there, but ate a strong right. Yep. And there was quite a lot of those tit for tats, I'll eat one, you eat one kind of exchanges. Nice knees by Lopez too. What I would like the, the, these guys doing sometimes is the scissor knee. You know, sometimes it, it, it, the way it comes in, it's it's more deceptive. It, it, it, it more deceptible, you know. You don't see it coming as as much. You can't hold the knee, okay? Scissor knee. Okay, go back on me. So the referee, Sam Amidi, just reminding them the rules under which knees can be incorporated into the arsenal here. Oh, oh, gotta watch out for that. Yeah. He's been working Work on his uh, counter. Oh! oh beautiful beautiful work from Jesus Lopez. Again, he's got to get that knee off the ground and throw those strikes. And look at that. Chomi held his hands up and said, OK, break, break. But you still get to throw a technique. And that was a textbook Haragoshi from Jesus Lopez. And those kicks again. Yes. He's constantly attacking with the right calf kicks. Well, Chomi is still five, light. Five, five, two. Yeah, light on the feet here. We're in round two. Long way to go still. And you see that both fighters sometimes has their hands down. It's okay because they're not in, in, the, in the punching and kicking range. So they use the, their hands as balance so they, they have better mobility. There's a cliche in fighting you that says, oh, always keep your hands up, which is wrong, by the way. Yeah, I never did. I did it on purpose low because I know they're going to hit the head. Then I get a measure of his reach. Ooh. Well, Chelmia well, with that. some gamesmanship there. He ate a right. good shot on the guard. Right. And George, you talked about this earlier. You can't take shots on the guard. That concussive force still goes through those small gloves. Yes, it's always better to avoid it than to, to, to block it. Especially when in karate combat with those small gloves. So Chelmia took another shot there. Trying to be first to the punch. Move the head out of alignment on that jab. Now their open stance. Oh, he goes for that kick. This is a dangerous kick. Very nice knee too. Again, shin against shin. Right. No, you see Lopez thinking about it again. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah, lovely hat right. Break already. Yeah, I pulled it already. What the fuck? Now tell me, I think getting a little bit fired up here. Got to be careful, though. He does, he's not too predictable with the forward motion. Great, great fight. Great technical fight also. We see a, a little bit of everything. We see knees, punches, kicks, throws. This is a beautiful, beautiful display of, uh, of karate. Now, now you see Lopez is tempting, tempting his opponent to throw <laughs> something, but he, that that means because he leans forward, there that's mean go. he want to he want to go in a, oh, a counter attack. He wants Chelmia to throw a punch. Well, that's a good use of a knee from Lopez. Oh, this is going to be nice tough rounds to score. Nice movement for Lopez to move right. out of the corner, right? Yeah. That was nice. Circle around. Wow. Guys, I was not expecting a, a, a, a, a, that much of a high-level performance by Lopez so far. It, it really stepped up his game. Well, I we think. said it, right? You know, if it's if he's on and he's on, oh, it's his he, day. He, he can match it. Tonight anybody. is really on, like really on. Like, and he said it before. Boy. He said, "I'm I'm a bet. I'm the I'm at my best tonight." You know, it's true. It's the best version that we ever seen so far. It's his performance is fantastic. Boom! Look at that knee, man. Beautiful. Yeah, and that's good. something else Chelmi has just got to learn to think about as he walks forward with his hands up. <laughs> Ian Gary. Well, karate combat for all ages. Yeah. UFC welterweight Ian Machado Gary is pit side tonight. Obviously yeah. rooting for his Irish compatriot Owen Chelmia. Santa Claus is losing his... Yeah. Uh, Slowly getting more disheveled as the night goes on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Round three, you ready? You ready? <laughs> Again, Lopez opens up with a knee, backs Chelmier up, not able to take advantage of the misstep, though. Well, let's take that break. Break. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Stop thinking, you can't hold it in strike. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> God. <laughs> a little bit of exasperation yeah, from uh, Sam, Sam there. 
So we're in our third round. Of course, championship rounds, four and five still to come if they need them. Ooh, spinning back What's fist. Chelmy is bleeding from the nose pretty hard. What advice would you guys have given to Chelmier in, in his corner between rounds there? That's an in and out movement. Yes. Go in, pop, pop, and move out again because yes. the counters from Lopez are really good. Yeah, and Lopez' experience is a big factor so far in this fight. You know, he's able to a little bit pick him apart a little bit better. So we can't stay in front of uh, Lopez like this. He needs to either come forward or just disengage. You know, don't, don't want to stay in my like this in front of a more experienced fighter. We kick up the open side as Chelmia moves stance around. He has someone tonight, he's fighting someone that can match his power and, and, and strength, you know? So he needs to, to go in and out. He can't stay in front of Lopez like this. Well, that's good work. Lands the jam for the second time in this round. That's very nice. The jab and then a right overhand. Yes. Behind the defense. That was nice. Throw a jab as a distraction, then he went on with the overhand that, that land on the side. It was beautiful. And he immediately immediately after that he moved out of range. Oh, body shot. Ooh. Oh, again, nice knee from Lopez. Still a minute left in this third round. The pace has been ferocious from these two so far. Wow. Conditioning man. need to be absolute peak. Lopez's counters are great. Yeah, it really shows that he, he, he was, uh, it was part of his strategy. Was, I'm sure he was like planning his strategy on, on fighting off uh, countering uh, Chelmia. Yeah, you know, interestingly, he wouldn't actually tell us. He said, I think I've got combinations that are going to work against Chelmia. We have to wait and see what they are. When you when you throw first, sometimes it's it's very short combos. Like it's it's either a, a leg kick or a a, a, a jab. A jab. Oh, oh, that's a hard oh, kick too. Perfect. Perfect. Oof. Right, right, right. Just threw the tempo off with the extra step in. Well, he's ahead. Championship rounds, huh? Yeah, I think Jesus Lopez probably getting the best of uh, our champion through these opening three rounds. But this is where it's gotta be made to pay. Oof. Now we're gonna see what they are mentally made of, you know what I mean? Replays coming in, good jab from Chomia there. That landed a, at least two or three times during the round. There's the jab in the overhand, maybe? No. So 8 1 straight back, and this was the end. Lovely sweep. Coach, tell him no elbow, okay? No elbow. So Catherine Chelmia, Owen's mother. Oh, Jacare Souza, legendary jiu-jitsu fighter and UFC middleweight. Yes. <laughs> I'm doing the crocodile pose in the corner as well. Yeah. <laughs> Want a photo with that guy. Good, yeah? Animal. Oh, you ready? You ready? Let's go. So fourth round underway, championship rounds here. Jesus Lopez in the white, Owen Chelmia in the black pants. Chelmia still with his patented game plan of coming forward and throwing with a huge amount of aggression. You guys think just uh, more of the same from Lopez? What does he need to change up, if anything? Well, you don't really change a good formula, you know? Yep. It, it works very well so far. Um, Chelmia need, need to change the, temp the tempo of the fight, uh, for sure. Uh, he can't stay. Sometimes there, there's times that he spend a uh, many few seconds in front of his opponent without moving. This is you can't do that in front of a more experienced fighter. But the thing is this, he's countering every strike. So what I would do if Chelmia was stand still, let him come to you. You know, change the game of the fight. You have to wonder, have we seen that, that type of fight IQ from Owen Chelmia in his previous fights yet? No, we haven't. 
You know, the, he started, Lopez started him meticulously. Yes, he was very well prepared, that, that, that showed. Everything that Chalmia would throw at him, he, he had an answer for it so far. Yes. And he counters for punches and with kicks as well. Sometimes uh, Chalmia comes in and he flaps a kick out. No, Chalmia doing some fancy footwork, but... Uh, but it, it, it is not over again. until it's over, guys. So we'll see. Here. One punch can, one punch or kick can change the, the entire fight. Yeah, that's it. Chalmia trying to rely on a bit of boxing, perhaps. Got a minute left here in this fourth round. This looks like uh, when uh, Bruce Lee was fighting Chuck Norris, you know, and it didn't work, and then suddenly he started moving. A lot of footwork, and that's what Chelmy now is doing. He's doing a lot of footwork, dancing front and back. Well, Lopez being very patient here. Oh, connect. Oh, nice again. Oh, shin on shin, you heard that. that. Oh, nice. Good high kick, and immediately Chelmia feels the need to come forward, trying to switch step into that kick. But Lopez has got his number right now. Final 30 seconds of round four. He's waiting now. Because everything he throws. Well, Lopez, Lopez is, is counting. Lopez is baiting him in here. One of them's got to do something. <laughs> Oh, oh, and that's great work from Jelmia. Well, closing seconds here, and Oof. Lopez just uh, pushing him off, lands a jumping knee right at the buzzer. Wow, what a fight, what a fight. It's, it's a really great fight. Oh, hey. Mama Lopez in the crowd tonight, supporting her son here. He's putting on a heck of a performance so far. He said he felt it would go five rounds. It is going to indeed do that. Replay's coming up, gents. Talk us through it. Boom! Look at that. Whoa. Hard shot. And again, on the counter, constantly. <laughs> yeah, he's really... Tonight, it's really the best that he ever looked. Like, it's, his performance is fantastic. Yeah, so, four rounds in. Possibly leaning the way of Jesus Lopez. Yes. Uh, Owen Chelmia, what? Just go for broke here? He needs to. Yeah, yeah, no I would choice. not take the risk. He needs to go full power. He needs to get in there. Yes. So, gentlemen. I like his spinning punch. He throws some spinning spinning, spinning punches that, that you know, missed, missed a little ready? bit. But you ready? Let's go. If it lands, it could be very dangerous. He needs to go right. for right. Uh, right. With, a, with a Hail Mary, so to speak. And he's doing that. I think that's exactly what his mom told him to do. You got to go in now. Oh, what a shot! Punch! Wow! Wow, man! I mean, look, Jelmy has got a chin, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah, you yeah. don't want to test it too many times. That's what they call the stiff jab. <laughs> oh, that one. Again. Oh, oh Chalmier now is is pushing. Is, is oh, God, look at this! Lopez front kick to the, the face, man. looking for a throw here. Right. What? Oh, Chelmi are doing exactly what we thought he needed to do. Yes. Lopez I, measuring. I, I believe also that Chelmi well, need, need to go third. We talked about right. it earlier uh, let go, let go, tonight. Let go, let go. Like he, he, he fake, make, well, make, make it in a way that that, that, that Lopez throw his counter strike and then go third, go over, over, over the Lopez strike. But well, you need to fake to do that. Because he cl clearly when he tried to go first, he, he fails so far uh, every time. Well, Chelmia dancing around here. Lopez trying to play that counter game that he's been working so well through the first four rounds. A minute and a half left in this championship bout. Of course, we've got one other big championship fight coming your way next, Raymond Daniels. And uh, Rafael Agaev are going to pick up the interim welterweight belt. Clock is ticking. Yeah, these are seconds that Jomia doesn't want to burn in a clinch in every exchange. Yes. Less than, one, well, less than a minute. Less than a minute. Lopez, Blitzen, miss. Well, Jomia trying to throw. Right, right. 
Final 40 seconds here. Nice left and the, the duck in. Oh! Right. Gents, you've got to work the takedown. Yes, sir. Yeah. 30 go. seconds. Lead up a cut, right up a cut. Right! Back, I mean. Wow. Yeah, Gents, again, each one of these clinches is just Keep time ebbing here. away. 18 seconds here, we could possibly see the champion dethroned, handed his first loss in the Karate Combat Pip. Well, the fight down. Right. Let's go. Let's Five seconds. Maybe let's one, go, one more opportun on. opportunity. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And this is the end of the bout. Wow. Well, both of them think they've done it. Wow. hands in the air. Wow, beautiful fight. Yeah, we knew this would be a lot of fun. It certainly was. Wow. We saw everything in this fight. We saw the punches, kicks, Help, uh, uh, uh, knees, yeah. yes, uh, trolls, you know, we saw everything. And let's that talk about that, that front kick to the face that happened at one point here. Boom, he beat him to the punch there, right? That was so beautifully timed. Yeah, I think this is going to be that kick. Oh, <laughs> oh that's the front kick. Ooh. Wow. Beautiful performance. His timing tonight was just to an another level. There we have his mother. Yeah, Mama Lopez, yep. she probably thinks her son's done enough. I think general consensus up here, we possibly do as well. Okay. So there's no six rounds. We have got a decision. Fight's finished, guys. We've got a decision. Fight's finished. We've got a decision. Finish. We've got a decision. This is going to be anxious moments now. for both of these gentlemen. We're going to head them down back into the pit. See who's going to get this belt strapped on. Wow. Hey. No? Well, you get chance of Peru coming through the crowd here. Warriors, what a battle! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have a split decision. Hmm. Oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. The winner. And new yep. Bantamweight champion out of the blue corner, Jesus Lopez! <laughs> So our league president, Mr. Adam Kovac, straps that championship belt on our new bantamweight champion, Jesus the Beast Lopez. He, of course, is going to get the golden belt as well to wear into his next bout. Wow, man, I can only believe what the people in Peru right now are feeling because he's a big name in Peru. This is awesome for him. Uh, and you see the emotion. A, a, a, a, big, a big and good example of uh, per persistence, you know what I mean? His career was not in a, a straight line going up, you know? He had some downfall, some good and bad uh, moment, and now he's champion. And, like, what a performance. He excelled at the right moment. Well, wow. let's, let's head down into the pit, get a word with Layla. Uh, bring her over. The first thing he says to me is, my mother is here. Bring her over, please. So, Mama, make your way round. Let her come round and enter the pit here. Let her come round here. Puedes, puedes. Jesus, felicidades. Congratulations. Walk me through your emotions in this moment. I've trained a lot. I'm very happy for this. Mi hermano me preparó para esto desde niño y aquí estamos. El tiempo de Dios es perfecto. Siempre mantente listo que las oportunidades y tu momento llegarán. Estoy feliz del resultado. No solo soy yo, es mi familia, 
mi novia, mis amigos, todo el equipo en Perú, muchos senseis. Yo solamente recibo esto, pero esto de todos ellos. I've been waiting for this moment since I was a child, still training. I'm very happy. No words can express how happy I am. And this is not only for me. This is for my family, my mom, my brother, my coach, my girlfriend, and everyone in Peru. God's timing is perfect. This is all for you. Your new champion, Jesus. Congratulations. So man, man, that was an unbelievable performance. Jesus Lopez didn't just win that fight for himself and his family in Peru. He won it for karate as well. He prioritized mobility and fluidity over the rudimentary defenses of Western styles. He was able to move in and out. And you know, fighting karate, it is not turn-based. You do not attack and someone else defends. And then they attack and I defend. It is fluid, it is ongoing, it is simultaneous. And the reason he was able to win this fight is when Owen Chelmia would attack others, they would defend. But when Owen Chelmia would attack Jesus Lopez, he would intercept. That was a wonderful performance, a wonderful fight between two brilliant young martial artists, and it was an honor to watch. Accepting fist. <laughs> Thank you, Robin Black, for that analysis, guys. We're going to go ahead, as usual, take a look at the stats from that five round championship fight. And they are, of course, going to go the way of Jesus Lopez. Uh, it was a split decision win. What are your thoughts on that? I thought he won. Yeah, not a split decision. I think he did a phenomenal job. He worked really hard on his game plan. The things that he was doing, the knees in there, the, the, the straight punch, the jab at that overhand, the hitting it, that. I mean, everything, the throws, uh, we, we saw everything that we want to see in karate. I, I, I think he won as well. I think his, his timing, his, his techniques, everything was so perfect for him tonight. His best performance that I've seen so far for, from him. Yeah, and of course, you know, there's no shorter people in this, uh, shortage of people in this division for him to defend this belt again. Uh, you know, we've seen him ebb up and down a little bit. Can he stay at that level now? But that's the thing, you know, I think now he tasted it. Now he knows this is the game pad, this is the blueprint. So I, I truly believe he will. And, and, and every single time he gets better. I say this every show. Every <laughs> single time we see him, he gets yes. better. So I can only imagine what's going to happen next. It's hard to become champion, but it, it's even harder to stay champion. So now he will need to put in even more commitment, more discipline into his craft. To, to improve and get better, you know? Otherwise, if he doesn't improve, the game will will catch up to him. I think if anyone knows anything about that, it's definitely you two. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, lots more to look forward to, of course, Rafael Agaia of Raymond Daniels in our main event coming up very shortly. We're, however, going to go pit side where Alex Wendling is with one of the best fighters in karate combat, Bruno Souza. Yes, I'm just jamming out with lightweight Bruno Souza over here. Man, what a moment that we just experienced. You were the main event not too long ago. So tell me what it's like to be on the main event and what we can expect for this next fight. No, the main event is amazing. You have all the crowd. That's, the, that's when the, the crowd's already heat up. They are ready to the, to the big show, you know. And we just make it happen, you know. Our last fight was amazing. And I can't wait less than that for the next one. And you are a lightweight. We've had some lightweights on this card. Gabriel Varga getting a nice win. Samuel Erickson getting a nice win. I mean, they didn't call you out. Are you a little bit offended by that? You know, like, I'm standing right here. I'm looking at them. Right. You don't want that smoke, OK? Don't call me out. But like, I'm right here. If you want to fight, let's do it. Well, I guess we're going to have to make that happen in the future. Now, we have a crazy main event coming up with Rafael Agaev and Raymond Daniels. Everyone's kind of counting Raphael out every now and then just to say that Raymond is the real deal. But what does Raphael have to do to get the win tonight? Well, Raphael needs to slow that fight down. You know, they, he cannot let Raymond start feeling himself too good and use the in and out and circle around. He cannot go in a fist fight with, with Raymond because Raymond has been doing that for too long. Raphael needs to bring the, get, the fight for his game. Well, we cannot wait for that fight. We cannot wait for you to be back in the pit. And for more on Raphael Agaev's story, here's more. Ben Ağayev Rafael Mahroğlu, ben Azerbaycanlıyım. Karatenin sevgim benim 6-7 yaşlarında hayatta yani yüksede 
və Bruce'nin filmlərinə baxarmışam. Baxmayaraq ki, Bruce Lee konfi ilə məşğul olub. Bakı şəhərində məşlərimə başladım, sonradan yığma komandayla karateni sevdim. Karate mənim həm işim, həm həyatımdır. Demək olar ki, mən hər gün və bir neçə dəfə məşlər edirəm. Əgər zalda məşq edəmirəmsə, mən adətən Bakıda Dağustu Park sayılan bir yer var, orada məşqlərimi eləyirəm. Sözümün yaxşı mənasında Bakı şəhəri hündürdən izləyirsəm, ayağın altında şəhər görsənir. Ona görə hər zaman orada olanda özümü çəmpiyonluğa doğru hiss edirəm. In 2018, when we introduced the league to the public, Rafael Agaev was one of the first guy who ever fought in the karate combat pit. He was there to fight Dionisio Gustavo. Dionisio Gustavo and I, we were our hearts and our hearts. But we were very close to talking about the dialogue. And I have a great honor to be here. A guy who could be the best karate guy ever. That's a lot of pressure to carry to that pit. Biliriz ki, İdman bir dost olur və tatam etimizda biz yəni hər şey unudu, döyüşürük. The way he moves himself, it is the blend of artistry with athleticism, high athletic platform, and an incredible artistic expression. Agaev fought full contact with us in 2018. Then he started focusing on the Olympics. He won world championships and then went to the Olympics and he came back with a beautiful silver medal. March in the morning, I'm 37 years old. They say that the first karate event of the medals are held in my hand. I think that I'm more powerful now. I'm not going to be able to use my power. Who comes to me, who comes to me, who comes to me. Kim olursa, rəqib olaraq mən onu sayıram və yuxarıdan aşağı baxmıram. İdmandır, idmanda hər bir şey ola bilər. Mən karate kombata qayıdmağımın məqsədi o idi ki, əvvəlki karatədə zərbəni vurub çəkirdin, indi isə burada kontakt karate sayılır, yəni burada əsl mən istədiyim işdir. This is fighting, this is hand-to-hand combat. Put it all on the table, express yourself freely, naked from the chest up against another man in front of millions of people to see this. Ama ehtiyatlı olmaq lazımdır, tam özümə inanıram. Mən ona gəzmək üçün gedmirəm, mən ona qalib olmaq üçün gedirəm. Can the Olympian Agaev deal with the pressure? All eyes are on him. My name is Raymond Daniels. In fact, my middle name is Lee, named after the great Bruce Lee. I'm a seventh degree black belt in martial arts. I've been training martial arts since I can remember. Second generation martial artist through my father, Frank Daniels. He was uh, my first instructor. He started as a karate cat. Then there was almost nothing to win anymore. So he started going Thai boxing, kickboxing. Let's do mixed martial arts. And now he goes full circle back to full contact karate this time. My choice for karate combat was basically like a no-brainer for the simple fact that at my heart's core, I am a martial artist. Keyword an artist. I love karate. And now I'm going to be able to show the full array of techniques that I'm capable of. You guys are going to see that he's, he's light years ahead of, of anybody in the striking world. When you speak to Raymond Daniels, he has giant confidence. My goal is to be the GOAT, the greatest of all time. He always likes to test the limits and push to see how far he can go. It's so amazing to have a life partner, a wife, uh, that is supportive of what I do. Every aspect of my life, things are already taken care of before I even have to ask. I'm really excited about having an opportunity to fight in the pit. First uh, fight was just me getting my feet wet, understanding my canvas and what I was fighting. Yeah, it was a lot of energy spent, especially in the first round. Our winner and a unanimous decision in the blue corner. This was his debut at Karate Combat. Everybody seemed to be pretty entertained by my last fight. He made highlights, but he couldn't finish his fight. My neck still yells at me from time to time from trying to challenge the pit head on. He was jumping and he hit his head on the ground. We were worried he's gonna knock himself out. I wasn't happy with my performance. I know what I'm capable of. 
and I'm capable of a lot more than that. The things he does in the ring are things you only see in, in action movies or video games. There's no other professional fighter out there doing the stuff he's doing. I'm looking forward to showing everybody what I look like in my true form. It is main event time here. Goat versus Goat. Raymond, the real deal. Daniels taking on Rafael, the Panther, Agaev. Uh, Bass, we, we've, uh, you know, hyped this man up so much, but it uh, has to be repeated again. Uh, and you heard it there in the video trailer. Raymond Daniels, the guy's a video game character. That's what he is. I've been following him for such a long time because he does things exactly what they say. You know, you. it could be that the video game people are watching him and then put it in the video <laughs> game. That's how crazy his kicks are. I mean, I got what I said before. He likes to catch kicks. Watch out with that because once it, uh, his leg is caught, he will jump up with the other leg, make a spinning back kick to the head. He does crazy stuff. Yeah, and of course, the last time we saw him, you know, he, he wasn't in his perfect fight shape. He took it on short notice. Now he said he's turned his dad bod into deadly dad bod. Yes, but he was still wearing this uh, the, the dad socks. You know, he had <laughs> little socks with the pictures of his baby on it. But he's in a much better shape. People, Some people didn't recognize him. Yeah, yeah, really looking trim and in in, uh, in war shape for this one. Uh, of course, he's fighting Rafael Agaev, one of the best sport karatekas ever. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's going to come hard. You've said he's built like a tank. He's, he's going to put that right hand to use. Yeah, you, you know what? The way Agaev approached this fight, he, he doesn't see really much himself as the the favorite. He, he knows that if he beats Damien, Raymond Daniel, he will become the best ka karateka in the world. So he comes very hungry. He knows that Raymond Daniel is very unpredictable, but he says that he has something prepared for him. So we'll see. Yeah, it's interesting. Both these guys kind of said something similar when we spoke to them. They both said, look, I think everybody he's fought before was afraid of his name and afraid of him, but look, He's not my discipline. I'm not his discipline, so I'm not afraid of him. Yes, he, and, and Agaev is built like a tank. He's very short, but very compact, powerful, and explosive. And on the other side, you have Raymond Daniel, who's very long, very athletic. So it's a really a clash of style. And, and most of people, when they see these two different fighter shape, they have the, the tendency to automatically favor the longer fighter. But that, look at Mike Tyson in boxing. He was world champion. So. Shorter fighters are very successful because it's very hard to to uh, to prepare for a guy like this, and th th they're built like a tank, very explosive. Yeah, of course, a lot of people wondering about that height differential on social media as well. It is it is a, a bit of a big one here. It's a big deal. You know, yeah, but again, you know, he always fights tall guys, so he's used to that. I wonder what that freaking bicycle kick is <laughs> that Raymond Daniel said he's going to throw. It is going to be like that, that, that, that, that, whatever that is. The, I want to see it's it. The Liu Kang Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Back kick. That's what it is. Uh, as always, Robin Black, I'm sure, has some thoughts on this main event. Sir, what are you feeling? Martial artist. Martial artist. My friends, what does it mean to be a martial artist? With well, the word martial is reflective of fighting, of combat. It is derived from Mars, the god of war. And an artist is one who expresses themselves freely, unencumbered as a reflection of who they are. These two are martial artists. They are the finest martial artists that the world has ever seen. And like all martial artists, it's not just about the punches and the kicks. Those are just tools, like a pen or a guitar. It is about the artist who uses the tools. It is with great pleasure I present this fight to you. Please show me the footage so we may share it with the audience. This is Raphael Agaev. He is one of the greatest martial artists the world has ever seen. It is not just that Yakuzuki, the reverse punch that he uses, it's the timing, it's the way he sees. Look here as he crowds his man, times it, then attaches himself to his opponent and strikes again. He sees everything slower than everybody else. Watch, he'll use this to draw something, then get a response when his man is going to punch, he will throw the kick up and over the protective weapon. Right there, big. This is a very skilled man. Again, it is about how he sees and how he moves. Watch, underneath. Let's see that again and let that phrase move on. He'll land this left punch, then weave underneath the return. When he does, he will separate, but he sees and feels in real time his man coming in and he will intercept him with a punch. Watch for it, right here. It is a thing of beauty, big. Now he is facing 
Raymond the Real Deal Daniels. This is a special, innovative, and improvisational mixed martial artist. When he is in flow, the things he can do are amazing. This two touch is one of his signature moves. He will touch to the body and steal a little bit of texture, just enough for athletic direction change, and then he'll whip the tail. Gives him a haircut right there. He's so free flowing and he sees everything. Watch, as he punches, his man will return and he sees the liver is open. Bink drives the shin bone into the rib cage. And after that moment, watch what he does here. This was unplanned, adapting in real time to the pit, to the pit wall and the fighting environment. Now circumnavigating his man to find the open side so he can strike where he is porous. This was innovative and in and improvised in the moment. So watch here, now his man goes to protect that part of his body. So when he does, he will strike and then here, shoehorn his man over. He's reading and he's feeling it. He's not thinking with his mind and moving with his body. He is thinking with his body and fighting with his mind. These two martial artists right now represent the finest martial artists that the world has ever seen. We have them right here in the karate combat pit. And I want to know who's ready to see this main event. I said, who's ready to see this main event? We are ready for this main event. Show me the head to head. Guys, George. Sensei Boss, Josh, everybody in this crowd, are you guys ready for this one? Oh, yeah! Enjoy the hostilities, <laughs> my friends! Raymond Daniels versus Rafael Agaia. One from American Karate, one from Sports Karate. Raymond Daniels is an all-around martial artist and elite striker. Rafael Agaia, a five-time world karate champion, 11-time European champion, and an Olympic silver medalist. Two lifelong karate cars, the greatest in their prospective disciplines, meet in the pit for the interim welterweight championship. Raymond Daniels is a karate world champion, kickboxing world champion, and a mixed martial arts veteran. Raymond, the Raymond Daniels is one of the best strikers ever. <laughs> there hasn't been another striker as dynamic or that can flow like I can when it comes to the stand-up fighting aspect. Thus, I look forward to going and competing against somebody like Rafael Agueya because he is considered one of the greatest at his particular style of striking. Oh, good shots again! He lives karate, and he is truly one of the great karate fighters ever. Bir Mart ayında benim 37 yaşım olacak. Demiyorlar ki evvelki karate növünde bütün medalları elde elemiş hem. Rafael has so many medals, he doesn't even know what to do with them all. Ve hele de ben verdiğim neticeni böyle böyle danışman, ben verdiğim neticeni hele dünyada karate yaranmam hiç kim vermiyor. Agayev will blitz forward with enormous power and then is going to be a takedown and some ground and pound. There's nothing that he's going to present to me that I've never seen. If you watch the movie The Matrix, well, that's Raymond Daniels. My knockouts will cover the next two centuries. He manipulates time and space. You're going to see things that you see in video games. Nobody's been able to do what I do. He likes to pick his opponents apart from the outside. I'm actually having fun, and it's just a party to me. I appreciate the love. We're about to take karate combat to a whole new level. A guy who hasn't been tested like this before. I don't think he's ever fought somebody of a caliber like me. Daniels is bigger than him and has way more full contact experience. But a guy has always faced bigger guys than him. Eşitliğime göre Raymond Amerika Karatesi'nin legendasıdır. Daha uzun mesafeden ve ayaklarla işlemeye üstünlüğü veri. Rafael Agayev is a great competitor. I think he's a great fighter. But I am the greatest. Agayev, much smaller in stature than his opponent. But he faced people like that in his entire combat sports career. Agayev looks to level the field and stifle the towering Daniels. Avantajım olmağı düşünürüm ki, eğer vaxtından əvvəl birbirimizi nakaltı, nakaltı eləməsək, avantaj olacaq. I don't see it making it to the fifth round. Aynan, gitsin, görüşəcəyim. 
oh, I'm definitely gonna put every lesson you've ever learned your entire life and make you rethink some things. Özüm ben çok razı da. I'm the top of the food chain. Ben çok danışanları susturacak bir adamım. There can only be one goat. This fight isn't necessarily for another win. It's for legacy. And now the moment and the fight for legacy we've all been waiting for. This is the main event. Bas, what, what's going on here? I, I look like very much like the Matrix or something. Look at this. <laughs> look at the screen. Okay. I'm gonna grab my knife. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Yeah, baby, Raymond Daniels. This bout is for the interim welterweight championship. It also could go five rounds in the blue corner. Welcome from the United States, Raymond, the real deal, Daniel! So this is Raymond, the real deal, Daniels. One of the most accomplished karatekas and kickboxers, as you can see here. Yes. An extreme showman. And, and look at the definition of his body. He's an incredible ch shape, you know? an eight-pack. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, re he, he, he really, you know, considering the way he moved in his, his opening bout last time we saw him against uh, Franklin Mina back at KC35, and that was him out of shape. I, I can't wait to see. I mean, you heard it in some of the video trailers earlier. We were running out of things to say because we were just spellbound watching the guy move. <laughs> Yeah, these punches, these kicks, they come from anywhere. He changes tact at an instant's notice. Could be a kick, could be a punch, could be on the other side of the pit. You never know. Of course, he did have that slight uh, issue where he, he tried a rolling thunder kick and managed to nearly knock himself out on the pit, which, interestingly, he said was the hardest he's ever been hit in a bout. <laughs> so even Raymond Daniels can't beat himself. <laughs> oh, yeah. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, representing Azerbaijan, he is Rafael the Panther Agaya! Well, this is Rafael the Panther Agaev. He is undefeated at Karate Combat 3 and 0 record. We've seen him twice this year already in unanimous decision victories over Davy Donna and Salt Habda. Uh, you know, a little bit of a rocky start for him coming back to Karate Combat. Didn't necessarily look his best, but Bas, he turned it up last time out. That's the thing, you know, and, and, and you know, the, the way he blitzes forward, the way he lands that big punch, and then once he has the clinch, there's the throw. And his ground and pound is very effective as well. Yeah, yeah it, very, very powerful, very explosive, very dangerous with this throw, especially when he's in close range. You know, that's another of, another weapon that he has that we don't talk about, is his ability to throw his opponent down in a way that he can hurt his opponent, you know, on, on the fall, you know? So yeah, we, that's another thing to, that he has in his arsenal. We've actually already seen a, an injury TKO from a takedown already <laughs> once tonight. Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> I love it. Woo. Tale of the tape for this one. Raymond Daniels, the real deal, 42 years old, still moving very much like he's in his 20s. Now, I want you to look at the reach and the height. Six foot two, 74 inch arm reach. Rafael Agaev, the Panzer. Uh, he is 10 inches shorter at five foot four, and he's got an eight inch reach disadvantage uh, in the arms, 37 as well. This guy's been and done everything there is to do in sport karate, and of course now in karate combat. They are challenging for the interim welterweight title. All right. Fires, yes. it is now time to enter the pit. Guys, I am nervous because uh, <laughs> Raymond is a friend of mine, and uh, I'm having goosebumps now. Like, 
I'm, I'm nervous as a fan because I want to I want to watch this fight now. It's been a long time uh, since it has been now? announced, but wow yeah, <laughs> It's finally it. happening right now. Don't <laughs> blink <laughs> ladies and gentlemen Karate fight. combat 37 is powered by Hedera it Five three-minute rounds if they need them And immediately a guy have on his bike around the outside a guy who said he had a game plan, he was not going to share it with us. <laughs> he never does, to be fair. Yeah. But there was something different about the demeanor of him this time out. You know, he was uh, a lot more jokey, a lot more friendly. Wait, wait, seemed wait, to wait, really wait, be wait. in the zone wait, for this wait, one. Wait. Of course, uh, you know, both these guys' southpaw stance as well. Yeah, that's like... Agayev, that's where he's dangerous. That's where Agayev is very dangerous and close range punches. Yeah, I'm very surprised Raymond Daniels uh, locked up that readily in that kind of clinch and short range with him. Oh, there we go. He has to stay out far. Stop! Look at me, look at me, look at me. Fight. Uh, we, we said, you know, or I asked you, Bass, what does Rafael Agayev really have to do? And you said crowd him. Stop! And that's what he's doing. Yes. Grabbing the kick, taking him down. Yeah, Ray Raymond need, I believe, to, to fight from the outside. Faint and moves. And uses his, his, uh, his, his spinning attack. He's got very, very powerful uh, spinning attack. Like his back kick, his, his, his run spin kick are, are very lethal. Oh! Big left hand from okay. the Azerbaijani. His gum shield's fallen out. And he was asking for a, a moment just to replace it. You all right? No, no, we're good. We're good, we're good, we're good. We're good. Let's go. Ready? Oh, that big left hand found the mark. Raymond Daniels getting his chin tested early here. You know, and like we said, he can hit. Yeah, and Raymond is, is a gentleman. You can, you can see that he. he, he if he would have been a, a very dirty fighter, he, he was, he, he could have uh, hit uh, Agayev, you know, because he, it was kind of, you know, that the fight was tough, but not in a, not by the rules, you know. A fighter cannot decide to stop the fight. It's That's the it. referee that that that that, that, that, that, that right. power. Now, interestingly, we saw Raymond Daniels deploy that technique we talked about before, framing on the shoulders and, and then, then throwing, throwing the knee strike. Yep. Very smart. So Gaev is constantly waiting, and when Raymond moves forward, he moves in. It's very smart. Yes. So spinning attacks can't find a target. <laughs> well, Gaev oh, running on that. Oh, look, at, oh. look at the movement of Rafael Gaev. Oh! oh, oh okay. And ground and pound, Raymond, Raymond Daniels having to defend. Closing seconds. Matrix, we said it. I think we got to say this first round probably going the way of Rafael Gaev. I believe so. How are your butterflies holding up, George? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'm nervous. Let's take a look at some of the replays here. Boom, big yeah. left one. Ra Ra Ra Raymond used more flamboyant technique, but it didn't hit the target. Uh, Agayev hit the target a little bit with, you know, with, with more simple, basic technique. Uh, <laughs> but so you see how, how dangerous Raymond is. He's, he's so dangerous. At any moment, he can throw a, a, a, a, a strike that ends the fight. Let's listen into the corner of Raymond Daniels up, here. Up the center. Front kicks up the center. Front kicks up the center. Stop up the center. Up the center. Yeah. Yeah. He did that with the hiccup. That is a knockdown. No, skip. no that didn't count. That's good. Fires up. Well, front his, kicks. Uh, coach Tyler Wombles there giving him some advice, saying front kicks up the center. Well, that was one round. They've got four more to go if they need them. That's one thing I believe Agayev need to do too, is to move. He can't stay in front of Brennan Daniel. Left and right, left and right, yes. can't find a target. Because if he only goes to the right, he will find a target. But he's constantly left and right. Very smart. Keep those tweets coming in, hashtag KC37.
Find us at Karate Combat on all Wait, social media up. platforms. Back up, back up, back up. The guy have already had his belt right for the throw. Did you see that? <laughs> Oh, that was a kick. that was a knee. Yeah, good timing on that. Yes, good misdirection as well. That's one thing that uh, I believe Raymond could a uh, weapon that Ra Raymond can use a, a flying knee. He's so much taller. But when you do uh, go with a flying knee, you have to be aware that the, the, your opponent can throw a, a, a right uh, overhand at the same time. So that could be a, a very dangerous thing to do. Uh, oh. Well, like he changed his mind mid take That's what you were talking about, Bass. Catch of the kick into the takedown. Right up, and he's right doing up. it all the time. He's allowed to just take the leg. He's allowed to catch the leg. And he's allowed to take one step, one technique. Here we go. Fight. Throw right knee to the body, left knee to the body in that case. If that would happen. Yeah, Raymond tried to corner. Corner his opponent. Uses uh, his reach advantage. Agaev is so hard to touch, though. He's, he's, he's always in movement. He's, he's got a great head movement as well. His movement's been excellent so far. Wick. He's got a great defense. Great yeah. defense. He's very well prepared. It's going to be cardio intensive, though, that's for sure. So if this goes the full five. Again, I catch of the kick and a sweep into ground and pound, possibly here. Oh, wow, well, that was a lovely tempo change. Persistence from Agaev, not giving that reset time to Daniels. Oh. And the left hand coming in. Yes. Raymond throws some nice fakes down. Maybe he's going to try to go up now when he fakes down. Sometimes you want to change elevation and go, go with a high attack. Oh, again, the kick gets caught. Ooh, oh, nice. Nice. Oh, nice. nice counter. Yeah, you got, you got, you got clip. Stop, back up. Ten seconds. Well, Here ten second second clacker coming in here. Oh, that about does it. I mean, again, another good round for, for Rafael Agaia. I think so, yeah. Yep. Right, yeah. Unfortunately for my friend, he's, he's having a hard time to touch the target because Agaia is very mobile. He doesn't he doesn't uh, stay immobile, you know what I mean? He, he, he's constantly moving. Even though he's got a, a much shorter reach, he's always in movement, which yeah, makes he, him he's, so hard to, to hit. He's he not does getting... like, yeah, he does like an anti-karate game, right. which is smart because he touched Raymond, he scored with a, a throw, a takedown, but, but once he knows he's ahead in terms of uh, striking, he, he does an anti-karate, which is like, you know, the, the thing to do. And then when o Roman, Raymond overcome it, he, he, he sees an opportunity to, to attack. Yeah, he's certainly not, uh, as you said, George, he's using a lot of movement. He's not getting mesmerized by what Daniels is intending to do. He's just implementing his game plan, keeping moving and counter-striking. Yes. He's doing a phenomenal job. But uh, Raymond has a lot of tricks in, in his bag. We'll, we'll, I, I believe we will see something. Uh, we'll, we'll see him ch try to ch change uh, strategy right now. So underway in our third round here. Championship rounds coming up next. Oh, oh, good good catch the kick and a counter. Daniels is hurt. Yes. Oh. Good ground and pound from Agaev. Wow, big power. And it's Daniels having to circle away here from the stalking Rafael Agaev. Yeah, it, it, it. Ra Raymond need to fake, fake, fake and fake and create angles in a way that he creates an op op op opening. It's Guy's very hard. Still, though. He's I got, standing I... still, though. He's not moving. Mm -hmm. That's not a good thing. Yeah, we did wonder if the cardio would uh, come into play. Still eight and a half minutes left. Quick, quick jab. Wow. He's more uh, standing still now, I got him. I don't know if that's a smart thing. That's really good again, catching the kick, coming yeah. again. Yeah, if, he's, if, he, if, he's, if he stands still, it would be a good thing for Raymond. Oh, no, that's a good. 
Raymond can't get involved into the, these like uh, slugfest, slugfest and exchange in close range. It's not to his ad advantage. You need to stick and move, stick and move. Yeah, I mean, when you think about, you know, game plans we've seen before, this is what a guy does. He just throws himself into his opponent, closes that range, gets the takedown, gets the big shot. He's so used to doing it. He hasn't had to, other than a bit more lateral movement, he hasn't had to change his game plan up all that much. Man, it's timing the whole time on the kicks, right? That's yes. perfect. He's so fast. Yeah, but so far his timing was very good. He timed the, the circular kick. One thing that he can't do is timing, try to time his way in on a, a kick that comes from a, a straight line, like a, spin, a spinning back kick, a yokogiri or, or a, a, a maigiri. That would be very dangerous. But so far he's doing very well. Every time Raymond throw a, a mawashigiri, a, a, a kick that a run out kick, you can blitz in and catch him. Well, I mean, yep. think back to the end of the first round. We heard the corner of Raymond Daniels say, straight kicks up the middle, and he hasn't thrown them. Yes. I believe that that, that would be the best. His best weapon would be the, the, the trust kick. Yep. Like Yoko Giri, uh, Mike, Mike Giri, Uchiro Giri, the, the, the run out, uh, the, the, the, the spin kick. And he's, get, he's almost getting drawn into a more of a traditional kickboxing bout now. But it's, it is very hard too because it, it style Raymond is very explosive, so it, it's not as economical as, uh, for example, a fighter that doesn't move as much. Because he, he uses a lot of movement and, and feint and fakes, he's, he, he, he put a lot of movement and he, he wastes a lot of energy. Actually, it's not wasting energy, but it's energy that creates opportunity, but it empty the gas tank much faster than a, a fighter that doesn't put a, a, as much uh, movement. Three rounds in the books. We're going to go to championship rounds here in our last bout of 2022. Bass, talk us through some of these replays. Uh, so, let the rinse repeat. I always say, you know, does it again. Catching the kick, big left hand. Boom. Coming in there. Raymond had a really cool jab here somewhere, but it was a jab. It was not powerful enough. Just listen to the corner again. All right. All right. Hey. Touching that keep leg. Keep touching the like jab, it. keep touching the leg. He don't like it at all. He don't like it at all. Follow up. After you touch the leg, nice and long, don't overcommit so we huck something, but touch that leg and then a nice straight cross or something. Yes, sir. You look good, dude. You look good. I'm First round was up. Yeah. Let's yeah. yeah. just keep touching. Right, keep touching. Nice and long, straight down the center. Again, the corner of Raymond Daniels calling for nice and long shots straight down the center. They're saying he's looking good. How do you guys feel? Has he got, he got to go to work a bit here? He needs to go to work. I wouldn't have said that. I would have said, okay, you need to be very economical in everything but the strikes and go with front kicks. You know, keep him away. Yeah. It, because he's behind right now. Yes, that, that's why you need, you need a speed. He, he needs to to, make, to create an opportunity where he has Agaev at his mercy for a spinning spinning attack. Because now he, I believe he might, he might be losing. You know who knows? You know. So he needs to to do something that brings fear to Agaev. Because yep. now Agaev got, comes in and out as he as he wants now. And it doesn't even matter if you uh, if you connect or not with those kicks. He just needs to get inside the head of a guy that's going to be dangerous. I'm not entirely sure what... Uh, you catch the leg, one step, one technique. Do you understand me? You understand me? Look at me. You understand me? Okay, don't do that again. You can't plow. Okay? Ready? Ready? Fight! Surprise the referee uh, stopped that one. And a guy have, it's hard to fight him because he's always made, he's creating a dilemma in a way that you don't know if he's going to go for a, a, a takedown or an over an over an overhand. So it's very hard for, for Raymond. Right, he's bobbing and changing the level. Yes, there we go. Now he's doing. Now he's. Now he's doing very well. Yes, nice. very nice. Na very, very nice back, back kick. Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Back up! Back up! Back up! Back up! Back up well, back we're still up, a minute up. forty left in this fourth back. round. George Palmer, Bass Root, and George Saint Pierre calling all the action for you here tonight from the back lot of Universal Studios, Orlando, Florida. Oh, oh. a big shot from a guy. Stop! Come on! Up! Up! Up! Up! That almost uh, hit the solar plexus. Oosh. Yeah. You alright? Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. All right. Here we go. All right. These guys are, are in a war right now. Yeah. A guy have said it. If nobody's going to get knocked out in the first round, I'm going to win this fight. Well, I mean, you look at his record, right? Three wins, three unanimous decisions. He's used to going the distance, wearing guys out, landing over over the time. You know. Yes. 
He's built like a tank, you know, when he, when he, he, he, he has almost an unpenetrable, unpenetrable uh, shield that so far Raymond has a hard, hard time to find uh, an, uh, an opening and he's getting in. Oh, that, that's what Raymond, I believe, needs to do. Going with different attack from different angles. That's it because I guy is standing still now. He's not moving to the sides anymore like he was doing before in round one and two. 30 seconds left here. Nice leg kick, nice leg kick, nice punch. Nice attack by, by Daniel. Uh, guy is still marching forward, getting a few licks in of his own. Again, forcing Daniels to his back. Well, he's not a downed opponent, so Raymond Daniels was complaining, but uh, a guy was perfectly within his rights to throw those strikes. Final five seconds here. Wow. Again, a good flurry. And you see size that makes difference. As soon as Rakaev is close by, the striking from Raymond is not working. Yeah, you, close. you said, you know, I think this, this is such a disparity in height. It could be awkward for Daniels as well. Yes. Yeah. Never fought a guy like that. I guarantee you that. Let's listen to the corner one more time. World title time, understand? I need the best of you right now. I need the best of you right now. I need feints. I need you committing the long shots. I need you believing in your strikes. This is the last round. All or nothing right now, Raymond. You understand? You need to put this boy away right now. He's right. Well, there we go. We've got some shots in the corner of the guys there. And Bass, you said corners have got to be honest. They've got to be up front. That's Tyler Womble selling Raymond Daniels. You've got to put him away. All of nothing, he said. And, he, and that's true. He needs to win this round by a finish. Otherwise, he's, he might lose this fight. I think so, yeah. But he's, he's very, very capable of doing it. You know, he's, uh, he's got some very, very little uh, nasty kicks that, that he can use to put a guy away. You also heard uh, his corner say you've got to believe in your strikes. Oh, that was hard knee. Now he's, he's, I think he's starting Ooh, to find that was it. a nice right hand. Nice knee, nice punch by, by Daniel. We sort of said this in the, the Chelmier fight, you know, every clinch that knocks five seconds off is a big chunk of time. And it could well be time that Raymond Daniels needs here. Yeah, Ra Raymond needs to create space a little bit more to, to have that, that those those, uh, th those power combos that he throws so well. Nice jab. These guys are really in a war right now. They're pushing themselves to the limit. Yeah, single kick stay away from that. His reflexes uh, counters are too bad, too good. From, uh, okay, yeah. yeah, the crowd at home noticing that uh, that height difference is playing out a little differently than people might have anticipated. You are, of course, talking about, you know, the greatest sport Karateka that's ever lived, so... 100%, and again landing. Yeah, that, that overhand left is, is doing a lot of damage. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Back up. Back up. Right. So we're into the final minute of this main event here. Karate combat, 30 seconds, oh, only spinning back in. This one, this one. A guy, a guy have just been they, very dangerous. Oh yeah, my God. Marches through it though. That's what Daniel need to do. It's one minute left, less than a minute. They need to throw those crazy kicks that he's known for. Those kicks that comes from different angles that, that, that can end the fight at any moment. Again here, he's got to break away, at least dictate the break and throw. Final 30 seconds. Oh, what? A little bit of misdirection, jumping knee. It's attempted Harai from Agaev. This is going to eat up yet more time. Mm. 
Again, good catch of the kick. 15 seconds. 15 seconds. One last chance to finish this. Agaya closes, throws, lands. Raymond Daniels backed up again. Oh, he days them. Oh, the time is going to expire here. Wow. You what said it, one. George. What a war. Raymond Three. Daniels and Rafael Agaya go round. the full five. What a, a show, what a, what a fight, what a display of skill. I don't think we're going to get it, but could you imagine if there's a sixth round now? Oh, <laughs> well, that's good. Well, it looked like he's going to favor the, uh, uh, Daniels, but uh, he's tired as well. He had also trouble walking up. A guy was also tired. He was a little bit oh. dazed at the very end. No, they've immediately said they've got a decision, so we're going to get somebody crowned here. As yeah. we look at some of the replays, this was that pause jumping knee, and that landed flush oh, to the midsection. To the perfect on the solar plexus, but a guy yeah, just like you said, he's a tank. <laughs> there, there, there's a lot of attack that um, Raymond, Raymond Daniel throws that it missed by a, a few inches, but if he would have land, it would have been <laughs> probably a knockout, you know what I mean? Yep. But a, a guy is so compact, is so, his defense is so good, he's built like a tank. Wow. What a fight. Very impressive. Very guy. Now we're going to head down into the pit here. We have got an official decision for you as Adam Kovac makes his way in with that interim title belt. Let's find out who's going to get it strapped on. Karate. Karate combat fans, what an epic battle that was. Let's hear it for these incredible warriors here tonight. We have a unanimous decision. The winner out of the red corner and yep. new interim welterweight karate combat champion, Rafael the Panther Agaya! Very impressive. Oh, yeah. Crazy reflexes. Wow. Just went in before he strike every single time. Wow. Well, we, we can say that he was very, very well prepared. Uh, Absolutely. He did his own work and he had a perfect game plan. Pushing. But Don't I, be a target. Moving around. Moving target is always hard it, to hit. It's it, with everything. It's it's not to give any excuse for Raymond, but Raymond, it's it's his only his, his second fight in the pit. And fighting in the pit is a total different experience. I'm sure he's going to learn from that and come back even stronger. Because it's a different environment, you know, than you, you fight in a point karate, in a kickboxing, in a mixed martial art. You know, the pit is very unique. It's a, you need to, to master your environment, and uh, I'm sure he's going to learn from it and come back. And it's, I, I, I believe we're going to see him back very soon, perhaps for a title fight. And, you know, I, I, I don't count him out. I think he's going he's to no. improve from that, uh, from that uh, fight. Rafael Agaev representing Azerbaijan. Showing off the pride in his flag. He is in the center of the pit here. Going to get a few words with our broadcast colleague, Leila. Come on, guys, stay here. Ve özel kimmet Diamond'a, Diamond'a çok sağ ol dilem, respect. I want to greet everybody and I want to uh, tell my respect to Raymond. Ee, bunun için ben çok çalışmışam, üreğimde diyen sözler çoktur. Bu Azerbaycan halkındı. I did work for this belt for so long, and this belt belongs to Azeri nation. My mother has passed away not long ago, and this belt is for her, in, in the memory of her. 
Bura benim evimdir. Ahir ki, arzuma çatdım ve dünya çempion oldum. Thank you everybody. This is my home now. And finally I'm the world champion. Now I need to ask you about closing the distance because your game plan there was perfect. I assume that was what the strategy was. Did it go as easily as you had expected? Because it looked like the formula was spot on. Raymond doğrudan da gördüğüm rəqiblərdən ən güclü rəqibdir kombat karatədə. Mən hər rəqibimi hörmət edirəm və mən bura gəlməkdə Ruslan müəllimə, mənim öz məhş yoldaşlarıma və mənlə gələn mehmana çox sağ ol deyirəm. Bu bizim hamımızın qələbəsidir. Sağ olun. Raymond is one of my strongest opponents that I have ever met. But I would, not, uh, I would like to thank everybody, my trainer, Mr. Ruslan, also Mehman. It's uh, the win for us all. Congratulations, Rafael Agaev. You know, every artist at this level is completely different. Even the finest artists are different. Raymond is like a math rock musician or a... a jazz musician he's doing so much and Rafael Agaev is like a three chord blues player but you hear the life experience in the notes the great Bruce Lee said in the 70s and I'm paraphrasing I fear not the man who trained 10,000 techniques once but I fear the man who trained one technique 10,000 times that is the great Rafael Agaev he has mastered the tools he has reduced the menu down to the things he is perfect at and expressed it beautifully. I want to thank both those two martial artists for one of the great fights in karate combat history and in martial arts history. Thank you, gentlemen. Us. Thank you for that wrap-up, Robin Black. Uh, guys, we... <laughs> Santa's having a good evening, clearly, we can tell. <laughs> He's out! <laughs> oh, we have had a cracking evening here. Uh, let's touch on that main event. Um, what a game plan from Rafael Agaev and executed perfectly. Amazing timing, that was everything. I mean, he didn't give him a, a target, he was constantly moving, and even when he was standing still at the very end, Raymond didn't know what to do anymore, because everything that he threw, he was in there already, and immediately countering with big punches, and he rocked him in the very first round, and that was, you know, that was the warning. Okay, you gotta watch out now. Yeah, let's have a look at some of the stats here. You look at those punches, 59 to 28, and a lot of them were very significant, whereas the kicks landed by Daniels, a little bit less so. You, you know what he did, uh, Agaev, to beat Daniel? He used very basic, even at the most elite level, he used very basic technique. But that those techniques are not so basic in its application, are very, very complicated, and he applied them very, very well in a perfect way. You know what I mean? So it was a, a very beautiful display of skills. And, and how uh, a man who's maybe has a shorter reach can overcome uh, a problem when he's fighting a guy with a longer reach. Yeah. I, I think he did it beautiful, beautiful. I, I think there's going to be a lot of people reassessing their thoughts on, on how to deal with something like that in the future. <laughs> yeah, because what do you do? You know, his timing is impeccable. But, you know, if you go, it's the greatest karate guy ever. Right. I mean, we're talking about it. He's the GOAT. He fought hundreds of matches yeah. all the time. They go to a tournament and they may fight five or six matches, you know, and then you do that every month or every two weeks, three weeks. I mean, you saw his medals. Yeah. He's been fighting a lot. So the reflexes, they're there. The only thing that he had to change is now pushing through with the punches. He is, of course, our new interim welterweight title. I want to touch on a couple of other things that happened this evening. Uh, let's have a quick chat about Jesus Lopez again. Um, a guy who just peaked at the right time. Again, fantastic game plan. Man, did he, did he, yeah, it's the same as a guy. He came in and he knew exactly what to expect and he beat him to the punch the whole time. It was just insanity. It was yeah, perfect. He was on. It, it was a night that favors sort of the, the underdogs, so to speak. Yeah, what because it's a betting. I saw it. They were all the underdogs. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was taken by surprise, you know, like, and th that's what is, that's w what is beautiful about karate combat and, and fighting. You never, never know. Even, even the so-called expert never know. I wanted to touch on this one as well. Gabriel Varga, ice cold, getting the job done there. You saw that cut opened up his head and he just 
took the took the, the, the braces off. We we spoke about Jesus Lopez and Owen Chelmier. You're going to get some replays here. The other guy I want to touch on quickly, Sasha Politnikov against Rob Buxton. That was uh, that's fantastic in the lightweight division. Uh, he was just super relaxed, man. The way he deflected the punches and his head movement and the counters, and then you know he sped it up because of the eye poke, and he just stopped him. Oh yeah, he turned it on and uh, finished the fight. Uh, beautiful uh, elegance in yeah. his movement. Amusingly, Varga and Politnikov obviously both in the same division, so just throwing that one out there for a little bit. Ooh, that's a good one. Here's some last replays of that main event. Rafael Agayev getting his hand raised there and proudly displaying the Azerbaijani flag. Um, it has been quite an event and quite a year, guys. How are you feeling about it all? Wow. I, I thought it was an amazing event. I mean, all the underdogs, I saw the betting at the yards tonight, this morning, and, well, all these guys won't expect Varga. He was, uh, he was <laughs> dominating, and he was just all over the place and just did what he had to do. Wow, what a great year. Uh, I mean, uh, it was incredible. The sport keep growing up and, uh, we, we, you know, I don't know what to expect next year. You know, it's uh, the sky is the limit. Absolutely. I mean, George, have you, in, you know, this is the second time you've been with us here in the commentary booth looking at these fights. You enjoyed yourself again? I love it. You know, I love the format. This is really like a, a fight club, you know, and, and for the, the people who wonder, like, if you come here as a spectator, it's really a, a total different experience as well. You know, they can watch the fight online, but if you come here, it's a different different game. You yeah, know? we're having drinks, we're having parties, there's lots DJs, of stuff going on. There's Santa DJs, Claus. Yeah. Santa getting very, Every, very wasted. Everybody uh, spit side, they can literally talk to the fighters. Right. That's how close they are. Yeah, yeah they can put their drink on the, on the pit and oh, there is punch and kick flying over their head. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it has been a fantastic year for Karate Combat. Of course, don't forget, start of next year, we've got a, a cracking schedule coming your way in 2023. We are, of course, also uh, launching our DAO, so head to karate.com forward slash airdrop. Get your tokens, double the tokens, if you do that before 11.59 p.m. Eastern tomorrow night. But that about does it from our friends Pitside, Robin Black, Alex Wendling, and Leila Machado. Gary, alongside GSP, Bassarut, and myself, Josh Palmer. We will see you next year.